I'm not a regressor. Description. One day, in front of my eyes appeared a silver-haired goddess, heaven-defying star, the existence that goes against destiny, the one and only savior of a world that was destined to meet its end. What kind of bullsh asterisk t is this woman spouting? You must be a regressor. What? No, I'm not. Chapter 1, Return, 1, A Black Sky. In the darkness of a faded sun and moon, there was a hill covered with numerous corpses. Step, step. A youth's footsteps headed towards the mountain of corpses. Wobble. Each step shook dangerously, one after another. Death. The scene was filled with pulverized and crushed corpses no matter where you looked. Gore filled the area, internal organs and cerebrospinal fluid. At that moment. Awa. A pouring ray of starlight that brightened the darkness headed towards him. Good job, awaken early Shinhyek. A woman in a fluttering dress made of starlight with silver hair that came down to her waist slowly floated in midair. Vega. In front of the eyes of the blood-soaked youth was a woman, no, a goddess. Vega. Star of the Weaver Girl. Goddess of Lyra. The most radiantly shining celestial amongst the constellations that lit up the night sky looked down at him with a cold stare. You have killed the heavenly demon and saved this world. Emotionless, an inanimate way of speaking, as if reading a phrase off of a piece of paper. Saved? Shinhyek's mouth began to twist. Kakik. His shoulders shook, and his laughter exploded. Saved? Did you say that I saved this world? A cracked voice leaked out between his dry lips. Stop. Boom. Violently stomping his foot, he cried out loud. Spouting bullshit. Tears flowed down his face. What kind of saving is this? What kind of fucking saving is this when everyone died to the hands of that monster? Thud. Collapsing on the spot, he screamed. The apostles of the twelve zodiacs. The seven stars. Even those damn celestial bastards. Numerous. Thousands, tens of thousands of awakeners had combined their strength. The celestials that competed and fought between each other every day had held hands all to kill the one heavenly demon. To stop the one called the sky's devil, that unparalleled monster. But eventually. Of everyone, they all. Died. They went and died. All, of them got eaten up. He helplessly dropped his head. He recalled the vivid image of that lone monster ripping to shreds their combined might while devouring an entire celestial. But, the sky's devil died in the end. That's right. Though the sacrifice of achieving that goal had been in the thousands, if not the tens of thousands. The apostles that hunted, the brave warriors, the noble celestials. Most of them ended up dying. However, eventually, the heavenly demon had died. Awaken Oli Shinhyek, you have killed him. He ended up killing him. Shinhyek, with his hollow eyes, raised his head. He could see the collapsed heavenly demon with a spear impaled through his heart. A face covered with a blank white mask. Azure eyes deprived of life, could be seen beyond the mask. Gulp. Swallowing his dry saliva, he spat out the monster's name in a low pitch. Heavenly demon, Guan Ojin. The sky's devil, the owner of the black heaven, the stigma devourer. Although many titles referred to him, there existed only one emotion towards him. Fear. Overwhelming, absolute. Fear. The name Heavenly Demon terrified the entire world. Of course, it wasn't like that from the start. The Ojin from the past was someone who used to be a normal awakener. But. The power Black Heaven Ojin gained from awakening could absorb stigmas that Celestials granted to awakeners. With that power, he had devoured the stigmas of countless awakeners and even ended up devouring the owners of the stigmas, the Celestials. That resulted in. This hill covered in corpses. It was the end of the star called Earth. Awaken Oli Shinhyek, for you who has saved the world by killing the heavenly demon, a wish that comes true will be granted according to the Pledge of Stars. The low-pitched voice of the goddess rang in his ears. Li Shinhyek's cold pupils flared up. Send me. Ringing it out. He opened his mouth that had dry lips. Send, me back to the past. What did you say? Vega's eyebrow lifted up. Are you perhaps hoping to regress? That's right. Do you wish to repeat that horrendous past once more? It'll be different. Grind. Li Shinhyek roughly clenched down on his teeth. This time, it'll be different. Not because of anyone else. But he himself wanted to make it different. Hmm. The goddess's eyes slanted. So you wish to be the heaven-defying star. The possibility of going against the world's destiny. The only existence that could write another page into a story's ending that had already finished. A regressor. The human in front of her, just wished to become that regressor. A world's destiny that has already been decided once will not change easily. I am aware. A future more painful and hopeless than the first time may occur. I will change it. There will be no second chances. One is enough. Li Shinhyek's eyes burned with determination. The goddess gently closed her eyes, lost in thought. A small period of time passed. Golden pupils that looked full of starlight focused on Li Shinhyek. Fine. 
According to the Pledge of Stars, I will let you return to the past. Clench. Li Xinhiek roughly clenched his fist. One more thing. According to the Pledge of Stars, there is only one wish. This isn't a wish, Vega. This is a proposal to you. He continued with his crackling voice. Grant me the stigma of Lyra. The goddess's golden eyes wavered. Are you not aware? This lady's stigma, it's something humans cannot bear. As she said. To that day, there had not been a single human that had survived after being granted the stigma of Lyra. Since that power was simply too overwhelming, nobody was capable of using her stigma. Even the heavenly demon, until the end, he had been unable to receive the stigma of Lyra. Even if you are the hero that has slain the heavenly demon, the chances of being granted the stigma of Lyra and surviving is one in a thousand, no, it's not even one in ten thousand. If I cannot be that one, then there would be no reason for me to regress in the first place, Li Xinhiek replied with his determined voice. Vega again closed her eyes in deep thought and slowly approached him. All right, heaven-defying star, this lady will grant you the stigma of Lyra. She placed her hands on top of Li Xinhiek's shoulder. According to the pledge, the stigma of Lyra will settle in the moment you return to the past. In addition, this lady will come to find you personally. Come to find me? With what methods? Did that mean her memories wouldn't change even if you return to the past? That's right. Even though you'll be the only one to maintain the memories of this world, if you are with this lady's stigma, my past self will be able to at least recognize the fact that you are a regressor. In other words, she, who would lose all memories of this world, would be able to recognize the stigma as a sign of him being a regressor. If you are able to endure this lady's stigma, my past self should make you my apostle. That's, a little reassuring. Li Xinhiek's stiff face started to relax. He expressed it as a little reassuring, but his heart was beating as if it were going to explode. As Vega was one of the North Stars, becoming Vega's apostle was something that countless awakened people had longed for. Then, I will start the fulfillment of the pledge right away. Wait. With Vega behind him, Li Xinhiek turned the body. He faced towards the place where the heavenly demon had collapsed. Ha! Huh. He grasped the blank white mask that covered the heavenly demon's face with his trembling hands. And then? He removed the mask. Ah! In the mask's absence, the face of a youth with slightly droopy eyes was revealed. This is... Ojin's face. For someone who had made the entire world shiver in fear, he had the appearance of someone very gentle and mild. Hmm? Li Xinhiek's eyebrows slightly scrunched as he observed the face of the dead heavenly demon. Have I seen him before? He diligently searched through his hazy memories, but nothing came to mind. Whatever. The important thing was the fact that he had confirmed the heavenly demon's face. Ojin wasn't that strong when he first showed up. He had only started to get stronger at an alarming rate by using the power of the Black Heaven to devour stigmas, when he first showed himself to the world, he was nothing but one of the common awakeners. I will return to the past, and kill Ojin. If only he could kill him before he became the monster known as the Sky's Devil. I can save them. The things he had lost and wasn't able to protect. The uncountable amount of regrets he had. This time. There isn't much time remaining, awaken early Shinhiek. The hurrying voice of the goddess. Raising his body, Li Xinhiek nodded his head. I don't have any information besides his face, but. It didn't matter. He knew the location of where he had first registered himself as an awakener. If he knew his face, he could simply wait in that place and kill him. All right. Return me to the past. Li Xinhiek stood and started to approach Vega. An enormous array of lights started to wrap around Li Xinhiek's body. Heavenly demon. For him. The bastard who took his everything. I will definitely kill you. And with that. He lost consciousness. Ah, the feeling of floating through a vast sky. Amidst that feeling, a memory from the past flitted through his head. That day. The memory of him losing everything. The sky is too dark. Looking up to the sky with a smug smile was the heavenly demon. The blue sky on that day was blindingly bright, the sun's light shone down without a single sign of clouds. Isn't that so? The heavenly demon asked him, ignoring the sun's blinding light. In the hands of the heavenly demon that was excitedly shaking his shoulders. No. He heard the voice of his younger brother's decapitated head. Wuhiak, Wuhiak, Li Wuhiak. His younger brother that was powerful enough to be selected as an apostle of one of the twelve zodiacs. An intelligent and wise younger brother, different from his foolish self. That younger brother died. In front of his eyes. Why, why are you doing this? He screamed. He wailed. He begged with tears flowing down. Just why are you doing this to me? Grin. With a wide smile, the heavenly demon threw the younger brother's head towards him. Don't you know? Inside the blank white mask, the azure eyes gazed at him. On that day, wouldn't none of this have happened if you hadn't thrown me away at that place? Kya! The feeling of floating in midair ended, and an intense pain started to violently shake his body. Ding! 
The stigma of Lyra is being granted to the body of awakenerly Shinhiak. As the stigma of Lyra is being granted, the existing stigma of Pyxis will disappear. Warning! As the stigma is too powerful, awakenerly Shinhiak's body is collapsing, entering an unstable state. A blue message appeared before his eyes amidst the sound of clear bells. However, he was in no state of being capable of reading the message. Kaihuk. Kayak. CR Crackle. Crackle. A blue lightning bolt started to burn his body. A torrent of pain shook him. Ah. A very familiar voice. A voice that he could never forget. WH what? With trembling eyes, Li Shinhiak raised his head. There was no doubt. The face behind the mask he had taken off moments ago. The face he couldn't and shouldn't forget. In that place. In front of his eyes. Was the heavenly demon. Ah. Ugh. The moment he saw him breathing just fine, a torrent of emotions that could drive him crazy shook him. The disturbance of emotions is intensifying your unstable state. Why is the heavenly demon? Just why is Guan Ojin in front of my eyes? The first face he saw after regressing was, the face of the nemesis that took everything away from him. Kaihak. Kaihak. Kaiawa. On that spot, Li Shinhiak's limbs shook as if having a seizure. CR crackle. Every time a blue spark flashed, his body roughly bounced around. Due to your unstable state, the stigma of Lyra is becoming erratic. Your body is completely destroyed. Kadam. Kadududuk. The body of Li Shinhiak that looked like it was having a seizure began to twist. Kra. Krrg. Krrgg. Blood erupted from his throat, flowing down his chin. Ah. Inside his dying mind, he recalled the voice of the goddess that had warned him. The chances of being granted the stigma of Lyra and surviving is one in a thousand, no, it isn't even one in ten thousand. It was for a very elementary reason. The cause was surprisingly simple. I, couldn't be that one. A hollow sensation weighed down on him. His entire consciousness started to flicker. He could no longer feel the intense pain that shook his body. Why, couldn't I? And, with that final regret, Li Shinhiak took his last breath. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. No. Why is this bastard like this all of a sudden? Guan Ojin roughly grabbed the collar of the collapsed Li Shinhiak that had spontaneously had a seizure. Hey. Breathe, I said, breathe, god damn it. Of course, he wasn't sad about Li Shinhiak's death. It had only been a couple of hours since meeting him in the first place, it was nothing but a short meeting that didn't even have the time to develop any affection. The problem wasn't Li Shinhiak's death, but, if you're going to die, at least kill those bastards first, you fucking dumbass. Surrounding them were a group of two star monsters. Grrrr, the low pitched growl of a beast. The ferocious gazes of the monsters surrounding him steered towards him. I wouldn't say anything if you had died desperately fighting a heroic battle. What do you expect me to do if you die suddenly at the critical moment when the monsters surround us? On top of that. Fuck. 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 Ojin wasn't even an awakener that could fight monsters. With what method? Jack's hit to methods. A powerless ordinary person surrounded by monsters really had no need to think. Still. He couldn't go down without a fight. Guan Ojin searched Li Shinhiak's body to try and find something useful for this situation. This is. At that moment, the stigma on Li Shinhiak's left chest caught his eyes. A stigma he had never seen before. He instinctively touched the engraved stigma with the tip of his fingers. It was at that moment. Ring. The Black Heaven's first transformation will start. The Black Heaven is absorbing the stigma of Lyra. What? Black Heaven? What's that? Rumble. Without allowing him the opportunity for any more doubts, from the tip of his fingers, a black cloud started to cover the engraved stigma on Li Shinhiak's chest. And then. Cook. Kaihak. Crackle. CR Crackly. A blue lightning riding a black cloud started to permeate his body. Fuck. It fucking hurts. Tss. To add a little exaggeration, the pain was as if his balls were exploding. Kragak. Ojin let out an unsightly scream while his body twisted. Just how much time had passed. Ring. You have completely absorbed the stigma of Lyra. The power of the stigma is too strong. The power will be adjusted according to the stage of the black heaven. With the blue message window appearing in front of his eyes, the pain settled down. Ha, ha. Ojin let out a rough breath and got up. He reached out his hand towards the message window he couldn't believe he was seeing. This is. Isn't this the system window that only awakeners can see? Why can I? Is it possible that I've just become an awakener? While he was caught in shock, he could feel the stigma on his left chest, which could be said to be the symbol of awakeners. This was definitely on that bastard a moment ago. A stigma that he had never seen. While he was touching the stigma with a frown, a wung, a radiant starlight poured from a rip in the air before him. The figure that appeared out of the starlight was, hmm, I could definitely feel the energy of my stigma in this place. 
a silver-haired goddess that was as beautiful as the Milky Way. Turning her head around, her shining golden pupils started to head towards him. The fact that you have my stigma, which I haven't given to anyone before. I understand. Just what does she understand? The goddess that had suddenly appeared out of the ripped space looked at him and nodded her chin. Heaven-defying star. The existence that goes against destiny. The one and only savior of a world that is destined to meet its end. What kind of bullshit is this woman spouting? You must be a regressor. What? No, I'm not. Underscore 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 underscore. T slash N, Vega was the North Star several thousand years ago, and will replace Polaris as the North Star in approximately 10,000 years. Looking up the stories and meanings behind constellations while reading will make the trip more enjoyable, smiley face. Celestials are the stars that represent the constellation they belong to. Chapter 2, Scamming Bastard, 1. Heaven-defying star? Regressor? What kind of bullshit is that? By regressor. Is she referring to someone who has returned from the future? If that were the case, she was seriously mistaken. Since, rather than returning from the future, he was in the immediate situation of not knowing if he was going to be alive tomorrow. No, was there even a reason to think about lasting until tomorrow? If this situation continued, the monsters surrounding him would rip him to shreds. Stay calm. Let's not panic. A person that wasn't even an awakener would need to think, comprehend, and decide faster than anyone else in order to stay alive in this fucked up world. Gulp. He racked his brains while swallowing his dry spit. The thing he needed to do first of all. I need to comprehend the damn situation at hand. Ojin glanced at the corpse of Li Shinhyuk that had been completely burned to death. A couple of hours ago. The first time he met Li Shinhyuk came to mind. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Alright let's see if I can find just the right pushover for today. An afternoon like any other. Ojin stretched his stiff body and started to move his feet. He headed towards the gate novice awakeners frequently visited while looking around. Oh. There were awakeners hanging around in front of the gate, looking to find a party. Among those people, one person stood right out in his eyes. Just right. Thigh protectors with leather armor that had useless accessories hanging. In his hand was a two-meter-long spear that seemed to be quite an expensive product, judging from the fact that it had a subtle blue light glowing from its blade. Ojin slowly moved his feet towards the one that seemed to be stating that he was different from the other novices hanging around. Has it already been eight years since I started doing this? Eight years ago. Just after I had left that hell-like orphanage, I had searched for a job in order to continue living. As if the heavens were pulling a mischievous prank, the entire world had become hell. This world really has gone to shit. After the first fissure was observed in the North Pole, gates that connect to a distant space appeared worldwide as if a dam had broken down. Humanity was helplessly swept away by the monsters that poured out of the gates. And around the time when over half of the earth had been taken over by monsters, transcendental beings called celestials appeared. They granted stigmas that gave humans the strength to fight against the monsters. Those humans became the supernatural beings commonly known as awakeners. Although I couldn't become an awakener. A world of upheaval. Inside the world of never-ending chaos and confusion, there weren't many ways for an orphan child that couldn't become an awakener to survive. However, he lived. Oh my you, it's obvious you're not someone who should be in a place like this. I will continue to struggle. I will leech off the blood of others. And survive. You are. I'm Guan Jino, a one-star apostle of Aquarius. Did you say A Aquarius? The youth's pupils enlarged. Well, that was an understandable reaction. Among the hundreds of constellations, Aquarius was regarded as one of the top-grade constellations known as the Twelve Zodiacs. An apostle affiliated with the Twelve Zodiacs. It's my first time seeing one. You speak too highly of me. I'm only a one-star apostle, even if it's from the Twelve Zodiacs. Ojin rambled on with a friendly chuckle. May I have your name by any chance? Ah. I'm Li Shinhyuk, a two-star apostle of Pixis. An apostle of Pixis. Ojin exclaimed loudly while clapping without reason. Kaya. That's so cool. The stigma that has complete freedom over direction and orientation. I've heard that awakeners of Pixis can handle any weapon, no matter how difficult, as if it were a part of their limbs. Haha. Ha. It's not to that point. Compared to a stigma of the twelve zodiacs, mine is nothing. Even though he tried to hide it, Li Shinhyuk's rising grin could be seen. That's right, my one ability to analyze people is extraordinary. Looking at Li Shinhyuk reacting just the way he expected, Ojin couldn't help but grin. All right. Now that I've decided my prey, should I start the operation in earnest? Ha ha. Meetings like these can also be called having a connection, should we perhaps party up? You want to, form a party? Li Shinhyuk had a flustered expression that said that he couldn't believe an awakener affiliated with the Twelve Zodiacs would even think of proposing a party with him. Of course, I'll welcome it, but for you, Jino. 
Gino, an alias created by simply reversing his real name. You could say it was a sloppy disguise, but there was a saying, the sloppier the disguise, the harder it was to notice. Right under one's nose. Who would think of using such a sloppy alias to scam? And, above all, most of the awakeners that got scammed didn't even realize it. I'm only going to leech until right before I get caught. He opened his mouth towards Li Shinhiek, who looked towards him with a puzzled expression. Hmm, this is something that's hard to say directly, but I don't have the talent to become proficient with my stigma. Ojin said this while scratching his head as if he felt embarrassed. To be honest, I'm in a situation where it's hard to join other parties. Ah, Li Shinhiek spat out while nodding his head. The strength of the celestial that granted the stigma was important, but how proficient you were in the stigma was just as important to awakeners. That is why even though it has been a year since I have awakened, I still remain as a one star. Ojin let out a deep sigh. The rank of stars was what divided awakeners. It was a similar concept to levels. An important factor of evaluation existed, a rank from one star to twelve star that determined how adept you were with the stigma. If it's one year, that is definitely a long period of time. Li Shinhiek said while nodding his head. On average, it took about six months to advance from one star to a two star. It's all my fault for being incapable. That isn't so, Jinho. Hasn't it only been one year? There are cases of people having a rough start and having a large promotion in one go after all, Li Shinhiek said consolingly. Ha ha. Thank you. Ojin bent his head down while brightly laughing. His concealed eyes shone sharply. Well, if it's this much of an excuse. Now that I've said this much, even if I'm not much help, I'll be able to gloss over it easily. Let's see. I should continue the operation a little more. When I first saw you, Shin Hyuk, I could feel it immediately. KHMM, W what feeling are you referring to? From you? I could feel that you have a special talent that is different from other awakeners. A uh, special talent. Yes. Even though I'm in this state, I'm confident I have talent for judging other people. Ha, ha ha. Well, I did promote to two-star a bit just a bit faster compared to other awakeners. Indeed, I knew it would be like that. While Ojin clapped his hands every time he made a compliment, the corner of Li Shinhiek's mouth going up could be seen. Even if they were supernatural beings that had been granted stigmas from celestials, they were essentially still humans. If they heard compliments, of course they would feel happy and get excited. Then how is it? Will you form a party together with me? Hmm. Before that. With an embarrassed expression, Li Shinhiek turned his head. Usually, the first time awakeners partied up with each other, they performed a sort of ritual action. A bit of an embarrassing ritual to do between adult males. Should we confirm each other's stigmas? Ojin took off the armor around his chest. It was an implicit rule between awakeners to check the stigma on top of each other's chest before joining a party. Yes, let's do so. Li Shinhiek took off his leather armor and pulled down on his clothes. The stigma of Pyxis could be seen under his left collarbone. I've confirmed it. Now, it was his turn. Ojin also pulled down his shirt towards his shoulders. Under his left chest, the stigma of Aquarius could be seen clearly. Wow, so this is a stigma of the twelve zodiacs, Li Shinhiek's heavy exclamation flowed out of his mouth. Watching Shinhiek exclaim, Ojin couldn't help but grin. That's right, considering how hard of a time I had inscribing it, there's no way you would be able to notice. It was a fake stigma he had cut into the skin of his chest with a knife when he first decided to get into this field of work. At least, there was no way you could tell by looking at the surface. Haha, ha, it's kind of funny how we're checking each other's stigmas just to enter this low-level dungeon, Li Shinhiek said after fixing his clothes back to their original position. Even if it's just a low-level dungeon, it's better to be careful since we are awakeners after all. This much is a given, Ojin answered while shrugging his shoulders. The dungeon they were heading to was filled with mostly one-star and very occasionally two-star monsters fitting that of a low-grade dungeon. However, if you were taking fatality rates into account, it would be considered a very dangerous dungeon, since the new awakeners who frequented the dungeon often ended up dying after running around. Still, Li Shinhiek wasn't an awakener that was that inexperienced. Then, let's enter. Yes. Ojin, who had just created a party with Li Shinhiek, went through the gate. The scenery suddenly changed into a very dark forest. A forest with a gloomy atmosphere and thick otherworldly trees could be seen. Grr. Russell, Russell. Ojin could hear the sound of the bushes shaking. Glowing eyes watched them from the foliage. Li Shinhiek lowered his stance while holding onto his spear. Please wait a moment. Ojin held onto Li Shinhiek's shoulders who seemed to want to pounce right into the monsters. Li Shinhiek looked at him with doubt in his eyes. I'll cast a buff before you enter combat. Awakeners that have received the stigma of Aquarius rarely entered direct combat and instead were specialized into either healing or buffing supporters. Li Shinhiek nodded his head with an expression fitting of oh, that's right. 
Yes, then I'll leave it to you. Celestial of Aquarius, heed my call. Closing his eyes with the most serious expression in the world, Ojin started to recite his chant. Yum! A bright light started to shine out of the stigma on his left chest. Though it's only a micro-LED I've hidden inside my clothes. Well, it should look like mana is flowing out of the stigma for the spectators. Please shine a starlight that brightens up the dark road for this humble apostle. After sending the prayer, he spread his arms out wide. He sent the sparkling star powder towards Li Shinhiek's direction. The daylight of the lake. A spectacle appeared as if shining glass powder was scattered into the air. No. It really is just glass powder mixed with luminescent powder. The glass powder mixed with the glowing blue powder appeared brighter than normal against the forest's darkness. This is. Phew. This is the most basic buff. How is it? Hmm. You might not be able to feel a big difference right now, but. No. Li Shinhiek looked towards him with a serious expression. He repeatedly gripped and released his grasp on the spear and continued with a low voice. The change. I can feel it. Huh? Really? My throat stung a bit at the start, but now my body feels like it's starting to burn up. Oh, he swallowed the glass powder, that can't be good for your health. As if each one of my cells is coming to life, this mysterious feeling. Is he sick somewhere? This must be, the power of the stigma of Aquarius that I've only ever heard about. No, it isn't. Thank you for the buff, Gino. Now it's my turn to show my strength. Good luck. Chapter 3, Scamming Bastard, 2. Hyatt. Was it called the placebo effect? Li Shinhiek charged into the monsters with nimble movements as if he had actually received a buff. Growling. What emerged from the bushes were monsters that looked like a hybrid between ants and wolves. Although their figures were closer to those of wolves, they were covered not in soft fur, but a hard shell, like that of a crustacean. One star monster ant horn. It was the monster that appeared the most frequently in this dungeon. Ch hat. Bam. As if it were water, the spear flowed and dug into the crevices of the ant horn's hard shell. Grrk. Although the ant horn aimed its sharp, sawblade-like chin towards Li Shinhiek, he dodged the attack as if he had already foreseen it. Haha. <laughs> My body definitely feels a lot lighter. Li Shinhiek exclaimed while facing the ant horns. Hey, it's a relief the imaginary buff worked that well for you. Ojin couldn't help but naturally let out a laugh. Although he had thought Li Shinhiek would be a good pushover to take advantage of, this was beyond his expectations. Kaya. Sweet, how sweet. Just thinking about how he caught himself a pushover caused sweetness to flood his mouth. Thump. Gra. With the horrible shrieks of its last breath, the ant horn's head was decapitated. Phew. Nice work. Haha, ha, it's all thanks to your buff. No. Even without my buff, you would have taken them down without much difficulty. Technically he wasn't lying, since he had never given him a buff in the first place. His skills aren't that bad. Although it was too early to determine his strength with just one one-star monster, the movements that Li Shinhiek showed during the short battle were exceptional among most of the awakeners he had met. Li Shinhiek was skilled. To be more accurate, he was a skilled pushover. Very nice. Finding a talent like this is a rare occurrence. Then, the harvesting of the star stones. Ah, I'll do the harvesting of the star stones. But, I'll do it since my ability to directly affect combat falls behind. You should rest in the meantime. Thank you. Li Shinhiek sat down on the spot after bowing his head. Ojin started to rummage through the corpse of the ant horn with a smirk. Soon, he was able to find a fingernail-sized fragment that had a radiating bluish light. Starstone. A stone fragment imbued with a star's power. Since starstones could contain a portion of a stigma's power, they were traded at a very high price. They were the main source of income for awakeners. Well, even if that's the case, you couldn't expect much from a starstone out of a one-star monster, as the size and quality were lacking. Will this fetch us around $20? If they split the earnings, it would be $10. Considering that it was a reward from a battle that didn't last even a minute, it wasn't all that bad. If everything works out, I'll be able to bring in around $300 today. It couldn't be thought of as high earnings, considering the fact that it required him to scam with his life on the line, but that couldn't be helped. It was already incredible for a powerless commoner without support to earn this much a day in this fucked up world. Incredible, huh? With hollow eyes, Ojin looked down onto the starstone grasped within his hand. Something incredible. That's right, just being able to earn this much with nothing but words was something incredible. However, in order to buy what I want, in order to reach the goal I set, a lot more money is. Gino? Ah. Shinhiek's voice broke him out of his thoughts, Ojin quickly turned his head. He could see Lee Shinhiek looking towards him with eyes full of doubt. Is there perhaps a problem? No, it's nothing. Ojin headed towards him while slightly nodding his head. Then, let's proceed. Because he had already confirmed Li Shinhiek's skill, he had no problem with heading a bit deeper into the dungeon. 
Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Gur. Grok. Gur. Gyrak. Three ant horns surrounded Li Shinhiak. Between them, a two star monster, an elder ant horn, was mixed in. Hot. Li Shinhiak moved as if he were gliding across the ground and went around the ant horn herd without hesitation. Soon after two of the ant horns were decapitated, he confronted the elder ant horn, which had a huge body, one step larger than that of the other ant horns. Blessing of the Lake. Behind the fiercely fighting Li Shinhiak, Ojin was diligently sprinkling glass powder into thin air. The bluish glass powder rode the wind and reached Li Shinhiak. Hayat. Stomping the ground, Li Shinhiak explosively shouted out with energy. Crack. Gra. Gahak. The Li Shinhyuk that had jumped high up with his spear grasped in both of his hands descended like a meteor. The elder ant horn that had its head pierced by the spear's blade screeched out with its final breath. Ha, ha. Li Shinhyuk, who had defeated the elder ant horn, sat down on the ground and gasped for breath. For hours of fierce hunting later. No matter how much monster-like stamina awakeners had, it was more than enough time for him to get tired. Hugh, are you alright? With an expression full of fatigue, Ojin also let out a heavy breath. Of course, he wasn't actually tired, since all he did was watch from behind it was simply an act to avoid needless suspicion. Ah, uh, yes. I'm okay. Li Shinhyuk nodded his head while catching his breath. Should I start to wrap this up? Ojin, who was looking for the right timing, slowly started to head towards him. Should we end things here? He asked as he raised the starstone pouch that had become quite heavy before they knew it. We should be able to fetch around five or six hundred dollars. After splitting it with Li Shinhyuk, that would leave him with $300, which was his goal for today. We should start to head back since we'll need to divide the star stones as well. Yes, I understand. Li Shinhyuk stood up while nodding. Do you have time tomorrow? Of course. Ha <laughs> ha. Then let's meet up tomorrow. Yes. If it's with you, there is nothing to be afraid of. Looking at Li Shinhyuk exclaiming energetically, Ojin couldn't help but laugh. Wow, I've caught a real pushover this time. Thinking of taking advantage of Li Shinhyuk, his bright smile wouldn't go down. Russell. At that time, the sound of the bushes shaking tickled his ears. Hmm? Ojin turned his neck towards the sound. It seems that ant horns have appeared again. Li Shinhyuk grasped his spear and lowered his stance. Ojin nodded his head and proceeded to take position behind Li Shinhyuk. Russell, Russell, Russell. The sound of bodies moving in the bushes. Not just from one place, but spread simultaneously from various places. It isn't just one of them, Li Shinhyuk said with a bit of a nervous expression. Ant horns weren't ones to act in herds but occasionally there would be cases where three to four of them would act together. You would need to be cautious in these cases since there would always be an elder in the mix. Russell, 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 Russell. Huh? Ojin's expression stiffened. The sounds in the bushes started to become louder and louder. Starting from his spine, an ominous feeling began to spread across his entire body. Something. Something's wrong. Russell, 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 Russell. Russell, 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 Russell. The sound of rustling resonated in every direction. It wasn't just three or four of them. A minimum of twenty, no, the sound was that of over thirty monsters moving. Fuck, a light swear flowed out of Ojin's lips. Something wrong had happened. Very wrong, at that. J. Jino, T. This is. Li Shinhyuk looked towards him with his trembling body. Tuck. Ojin roughly smacked the head of the trembling and pale-faced Li Shinhyuk. What are you spacing out for, dumbass? Naturally, a violent voice came out of the emerging situation. Run! Li Shinhyuk, who had been smacked in the head, looked at him with an expression that screamed surprise. An expression surprised by the sudden words. I said run, you fucking dumbass. He pulled on Li Shinhyuk's shoulder, shouting out swear words. Looking at the appearance of Li Shinhyuk, who couldn't discern the situation at hand, anger started to rise within him. Ah, I understand. Li Shinhyuk, who looked around the surroundings in a rush, nodded his head. It seemed that he had finally understood the situation. This way, Jino. Deserving of one with the stigma of Pyxis, he accurately shouted out the direction of where the ant horn herd couldn't entirely surround them. Ha, ha. Ojin desperately chased Li Shinhyuk's back. He wasn't sure if it was because of the thorough stamina training, but he was able to narrowly keep up with Li Shinhyuk. However, fuck. Spouting out a swear in his mind, he turned his head. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
he could taste the salt in his mouth. The feeling as if his heart would explode out of his mouth. Grr. Before they knew it, the ant horns started to surround them. Fuck. He twisted his body to reach for the pistol on his hips. Colt 1911. A weapon he carried around to provide himself with the minimal amount of self-defense. Bang. 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 Gur. Fyok. The bullets bounced off of the thick leather of the approaching ant horns, as he had expected. A weapon without the power of a stigma imbued couldn't deal much damage to monsters in the first place. It could only slightly slow their pace. God damn it. After throwing the useless gun away, he started to run frantically once again. Li Shinhiek, what's that bastard doing without helping me? He stared at the back of Li Shinhiek, who had gone ahead. Ugh. A at this rate. With a grimace, Li Shinhiek turned his body around. His eyes, full of fear, headed towards Ojin. Could this bastard actually be? An ominous feeling passed through his head. I I am sorry, Jino. Why were his ominous feelings always spot on? Li Shinhiek, who had turned his body around, pushed him towards the ant horns. Ah. Ojin, who had been separated from Li Shinhiek, rolled on the ground. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Repeating his words like a broken record, Li Shinhiek started to gain distance. This son of a bitch. Ojin's gentle face distorted coarsely. Don't. Fuck with me, J. Jino? Gathering all of his strength, he dived towards Li Shinhiek and narrowly held onto his legs. You're doing this to me after I saved you from spacing out? Are you fucking crazy? I if this continues, we'll both die. Then let's die together, you fucker. He couldn't die a meaningless death here. Arg! Damn it, let go. Li Shinhiek kicked his feet with a pale expression. Shit. Ojin, who was holding onto the ends of Shinhiek's legs, violently bounced off. Quack! He tried to endure it with all he had, but there was simply no way for him to endure the strength of an awakener. F fuck. Russell, Russell, Russell. He could see the ant horns approaching. Ojin's expression went pale. At this rate. Death. Crayackle. Blue sparks fiercely sparked out. Li Shinhiek, who was running away, suddenly flopped around as if having a seizure. And then. The situation became like this. Ojin, who had finished getting burned, narrowly opened his eyes and looked at the lady in front of him. No. He could instinctively realize. That the expression of lady wasn't correct. The ones who grant stigmas, the existences that create the supernatural beings known as awakeners. Celestial. He was certain the identity of the lady who had suddenly appeared was a god born from the constellations. Why, is a celestial here? Complicated thoughts entangled inside his head. Wait. At that moment, a sudden thought came to him. Ojin touched the stigma on his left chest with the tip of his fingers. She definitely said you have my stigma, which I haven't given to anyone before. Dot. He thought about the words that the silver-haired goddess had said. The shape of a stigma that he had never seen before on his left chest. This is. Li Shinhiek's stigma. He wasn't sure of the reason, but using the power called Black Heaven, he had absorbed the stigma of the dead Li Shinhiek. Not the stigma of Pyxis, but the stigma of Lyra. Wait, wait, wait a second here. Starting from his spine, an electrifying feeling spread across his body. The back of his neck started to heat up. Then, could it be? Ojin's eyes widened. Li Shinhiek was a regressor? No, that's impossible. There is no way that dumb halfwit could be a reg res. Ah. Just then. The appearance of Li Shinhiek suddenly spazzing out while burning to death came to mind. The blue lightning that shot out across his entire body. A corpse which looked to be burned from the inside as if a stigma's power overloaded. Holy. Shit. If that was the moment the Li Shinhiek from the future had been implanted. If the sudden change was the cause of his death. That would also explain why he carried not the stigma of Pyxis, but the stigma of Lyra. It was overwritten. At that moment, that time, that starting point. Li Shinhiek's stigma was reverted. And, from the aftermath of the stigmas reverting, Li Shinhiek died. The disoriented puzzle pieces began to assemble in his mind. Lightly shrugging his shoulders, Ojin raised his head. Hmm? Are you not a regressor? The appearance of the goddess's cold golden eyes, which seemed to be void of any emotion, shone looking down upon him. I definitely felt the presence of the heaven-defying star in this PLA. That's correct. He nodded while cutting off the goddess's words. There was no way to know what the situation at hand was. There was no way of guessing what the cause and effect were. What the black heaven, heaven-defying star, even the name of the goddess in front of his eyes was. He didn't know anything. There was simply no way of knowing. However, he was certain of one thing. I'm, a regressor. In order to make it out alive from this spot, he needed to become a regressor. Chapter 4, Stigma of Pyxis, 1. As expected, so you were the heaven-defying star. The silver-haired goddess slightly nodded her head, as if she had predicted it. Yes, that is correct. Ojin replied with a composed voice. But of course. 
holy shit. Opposite of his calm expression, his heart was pulsating vigorously. She really believed it. They were gods born from constellations. Albeit they weren't the one and only almighty god that Christians referred to, they were transcendent beings with power and authority way beyond the reach of mere humans. Just now, he ended up deceiving a god. Although I would like to have a detailed conversation about the experiences you've had. The goddess observed the surroundings. Grrrr. Ferocious growls. The ant horns were staring at her with eyes full of wariness. These insignificant beings are in the way. The goddess let out a short sigh and glanced at Ojin. Is she telling me to eliminate them? Her look said, I want to confirm the level of skills a regressor has. Fuck, it's too late to back out now. I'll eliminate them. Hmm, I'm looking forward to just how powerful the strength of the heaven-defying star will be. I'm currently. Ah, I'm already aware. Even though you've returned from the future, your body should still be the one from this world. Don't feel pressured, fight as you normally would. Damn it. Those are the words that make me feel pressured the most. Huh. While letting a large breath out, he raised his body. Even without turning on the micro-LED hidden inside his clothes, a subtle light started to flow out of his left chest. An overflowing power. His body felt light as if he had put down all the baggage he was carrying over his shoulder. This is, the body of an awakener. Although it was just one star, the difference was clear. A domain one could never reach with ordinary training. A body of one that was beyond the scope of human beings, the body of a supernatural being. However, even with a body like that, Li Xinhiek had unseemingly run away from the monsters. That thought didn't serve to criticize him. It just meant that the monsters were that powerful. Could he, who had awakened just a few minutes ago, be the opponent of dozens of ant horns? This isn't the time to think about things like that. Even if he held on to the hem of her dress, begging her to save him, it would be impossible for her to personally eliminate the monsters. The Celestials called it something along the lines of commandments it restricted them from directly intervening in this world. The reason why they granted stigmas to awakeners and made them fight with monsters was the same. If that's the case, there were no methods other than fighting by himself. Grip. He grabbed and raised the spear that had fallen on the ground. The spear Li Shinhiak had used. The spear's blade glowed with a blue hue and started to head towards the monsters. Jigger. As he aimed his spear towards the ant horns, they fiercely held out. Two ant horns approached him at a fast speed. HMPT. Lowering his stance, he jabbed his spear out like a spring. Crack. The shell of the ant horn that had remained unfazed by the bullet was easily destroyed, splattering out green blood. KRR. The ant horn from the opposite side tried to aim for the gap that was created. Ojin moved his body back naturally, as if he were water, and used the spear's shaft to uppercut its chin. Spin. Easily rotating the spear that reached two meters, he pierced through the ant horn's belly. Oh ho, not bad. The goddess spoke out shortly after seeing him move with no unnecessary movements. Huh? Rather, the one who was surprised was Ojin himself. There's no way it's this easy. His body moved naturally, as though he had been handling the spear for years. No matter how easy the spear was to use, to feel familiarity from a weapon he had used for the first time in his life was definitely weird. Ring. The Black Heaven is reading through the records contained in the stigma of Pixis. The Black Heaven's awakening stage is too low. The amount of records that can be read are restricted. Part of Awakener Li Shinhiak was successfully inherited. Skill spearmanship of Pixis LV4 has been acquired. As if in answer to his questions, the message window appeared. And then. Ack. Hot. The pain of scorching hot iron skewers pierced his skull. Alongside this dizzy and intense pain, the scenery changed. Pant, pant. Inside his head spread an unfamiliar scene. In an empty space with no one around, the appearance of Li Xinyuk endlessly jabbing out his spear could be seen. Arg! Even though he was shaking like he would collapse at any moment, he didn't stop jabbing his spear. If I stop here, I'll never be able to catch up to Wuhiak. Roughly chewing his dry lips, Li Xinyuk continued to jab his spear. Over and over again. He pushed himself to the limit. This is? His vision gradually returned to normal. Li Xinhiek's memories? Even if they were memories, they weren't memories of the past. There are scars I haven't seen before. On the face of the frantically training Li Xinhiek, a distinct scar that ran across from cheek to jaw could be seen. A scar that couldn't be seen on the Li Xinhiek who he had met a few hours ago. If that's the case. Memories from the future. To be more accurate, not from the Li Xinhiek who had died in vain, but the memories of the Li Xinhiek from the first round started to flow into him. No. What flowed into him were not simply memories. Gggrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
It was an elder that was one step larger compared to the other ant horns. In the past, even his eyes wouldn't have been able to follow its movements, but. Too slow, you bastard. It was different now. Boom. He launched his body by slamming his spear against the ground. Like a pole vaulter, his body explosively soared through the air. Spin. He rotated his body in midair as he grabbed onto the spear. While the elder ant horn that had lost its target was in a panic, he accurately pierced through its head. Krayak. That's right. An electrifying thrill ran from his spine through his body. I can do it. The power all over his body was boiling up. Every single detail of the ant horns rushing towards him was engraved onto his retina. Slow down. Let's not get too excited. Collecting his breath, he kicked off the ground widening the distance between him and the ant horns. Even if I inherited Li Shin Hiek's skills, it doesn't change the fact I'm just a one-star awakener, I could die the moment I let my guard down. Crack. Crunch. He calmly swung his spear around and continued to reduce the number of ant horns. Were one-star awakeners originally this strong? Even while simultaneously facing off against dozens of ant horns, he didn't feel tired at all. It was hard to take in, considering the fact that Li Shin Hiek was exhausted after taking on three to four ant horns. The dumbass I saw weren't like this. Your average one-star awakener ran around like a baboon that had his house lit on fire when even two ant horns charged them. But why? Just how? Did it feel this easy? Hmm. The silver-haired goddess narrowed her eyes and looked towards Ojin, who was fiercely fighting in the midst of the ant horns. Are you putting on a show for this lady's entertainment? Show? This is a show? What kind of bullshit is she spouting this time? If that's not the case, why aren't you using your stigma? What? Ojin's eyes naturally headed towards the left side of his chest. Not towards the fake stigma he had engraved with his knife, but towards the stigma of Lyra that was giving off a subtle glow. That's right. Until then, it had only given off a subtle light. Real stigmas would give off a much more brilliant light when used. Huh, then until now. He had been facing off against dozens of ant horns without even using his stigma. Ah, I see. Even if you're a regressor, you wouldn't be able to use the newly established stigma freely. After thinking and coming up with her own conclusion, the goddess nodded her head like she had understood. For you, it must be the same as entering the body of a baby that's taking its first steps. Although it was nothing but the goddess's own misunderstanding, the reason seemed to make some sense. He couldn't miss this chance, especially when the opposing side presented the opportunity. He immediately nodded his head and answered. Yes, that's right. For me, this body is, exactly the same as a baby's body. Wah, me baby Ojin. I see, then my role will be to help that baby finish its baby steps. Mama? I'll help you so that you can use this lady's stigma easily. Ring. Vega bestows upon you the star's blessing. The stigma of Lyra's proficiency temporarily increases. Vega. Was that her name? Huh? Isn't that a name I've heard Bifo? B-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-T. Arg. Without room to continue doubting, blue lightning crackled across his entire body. A blinding blue light explosively scattered out of the stigma on his left chest. Ah. Grack. Gra. The ant horns that were momentarily hesitant started to rush in again. This time, they were in a formation with three elders positioned in the middle. Hugh. Inhaling, he lowered his stance. BZZ, BZZZZT. The blue lightning that coiled around his body gathered around the spear's tip. Swiftly straightening his crouched hips, he threw out his spear with blazing blue lightning. Now, let's see. How incredible the strength of the stigma of Lyra is. Blue lightning LV1 is activated. C-R-A-C-K-L-E. The lightning storm spread from the spear's tip, swept the surroundings away and turned the surrounding ant horns into ashes. W what was that? One strike. With just one attack, the ant horns that numbered in the dozens were turned into ashes. Jigur. Kra. Within the lightning storm, the only survivors were the elder ant horns. One of the elders that took the lightning head-on had died immediately. Grrrr. Gra. Kra. Step 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 step. The ant horns that had intuitively realized they were no match simultaneously turned their bodies and started to run away. Ha. Huh. With an overwhelmed expression, Ojin absent-mindedly watched the backs of the fleeing ant horns. Holy shit, what was that? That was not something a mere one-star awakener could do. Two-star, no, at minimum, you would need to be at least a three-star awakener to even attempt to mimic it. Just, what is the stigma of Lyra? It was a constellation he had never heard of before. Hmm. Indeed, you're quick to learn as expected of a regressor. Vega looked down upon the earth that was scorched by lightning with a satisfied smile. Ojin's eyes headed towards her. Silver hair that came down to her waist, a goddess with blinding beauty. Vega. The goddess's name he had confirmed through the system window popped up in his head once again. Hmm. Wait, Vega. At that moment, the faded memory of her name suddenly came to mind. V. G. A. Vega? It's Vega? No way. 
Ojin's mouth opened wide. Star of the Weaver Girl. Hmm? Did you call this lady? Golden eyes that shined like gems headed towards him. Shiver. An electrifying sensation spread across his body. No fucking way. The celestials that numbered hundreds. Even amongst those transcendental beings were leagues of weaker and stronger authority. Furthermore, after the League of the Celestial, the Awakeners that followed could be divided accordingly. The Celestials of the Twelve Zodiacs were a staple. Just being granted the stigma of one of the Twelve Zodiacs would make one in a different league compared to other Awakeners. But even amongst them, existences that even the Celestials of the Twelve Zodiacs wouldn't dare to challenge. The three stars known as the North Stars. Polaris, Deneb, Vega. One of the top-ranked Celestials with a different league other Celestials wouldn't dare raise their heads to, was the identity of the goddess in front of his eyes. Huh? What, then am I currently? He could now understand why he, a mere one-star awakener, was able to easily wipe out the ant horns that numbered dozens. Additionally, one more thing. Scamming a top-ranked Celestial? He came to the realization that he was in the middle of an outrageous act. Fuck. He was screwed. Chapter 5, Stigma of Pixis, 2. What's wrong? Looking at Ojin's face that had suddenly stiffened, Vega tilted her head. The mysterious voice echoed throughout his head. He did his best to recover from his mental turmoil. Shit. Gulp. Desperately suppressing the shaking at the tips of his fingers, he nervously swallowed his saliva. Think. Just how, with what method would he be able to solve this mind-boggling situation? Should I tell her that I lied because I thought I would die? He thought for a moment about letting everything go and telling her the truth. He didn't have to contemplate for a long time. Nibbling on his lips, Ojin clenched his fist. No. It was already too late. Whatever the reason was, the fact that he had lied against a celestial wouldn't change. A mere human, had dared to make a fool of a god. I need to deceive her. He couldn't go back on what he had already done since it wasn't like he was a regressor like Li Shinhiek. I'll need to see what I started through to the end. Ojin's eyes lit up. That was often how lies worked. Though you could decide to not lie at all, you couldn't lie just once. Once you decided to deceive someone, you would have to go through with it perfectly. Just like he had done with the Awakeners that had never even realized he had deceived them. If that's the case, he organized his thoughts. Devise a method, make a plan. It wasn't hard. It was something he had done as if breathing, for the past eight, no, for his entire life. Hmm. Ojin looked up towards the goddess that had been watching him with questioning eyes. I've missed you, Vega. He said with a trembling voice. Drip. Transparent tears flowed down his cheeks. What? He could see the goddess's eyes widen. One step at a time. He headed towards her. I thought. I would never be able to see you again. Whoosh. He pulled down on Vega's wrist. Naturally, her wrist didn't actually get pulled down, since there was no way a newborn awakener would be able to pull down transcendent beings such as celestials. It doesn't matter. His goal wasn't to pull her down anyway. Hick, yuck. Kneeling down in front of her, he cried like an animal. It's a relief. I it really is, a relief, hick. W what are you doing? The cold goddess that had seemed to be devoid of any emotions took a step back, flustered. He could clearly see the unrest in her golden eyes that shined like starlights. Good. He somehow succeeded in making her flustered. This is just the beginning. Making the opponent flushed was incredibly important when deceiving. Although people weren't easy to deceive, when placed in a situation of sudden confusion, they would collapse easily beyond one's imagination. It was the same reason why phone scammers started off with phrases such as I've kidnapped your children. I'm not sure if celestials are like people, but there wasn't any time to make confirmations. Vega. I it's me. Ojin. Ah, he spat out in a short breath, dropping his head with hollow eyes. That's right, you forgot everything about me. With a bitter expression, he slurred the end of his sentence. Just what kind of relationship did you have with this lady in the future? Vega asked with embarrassment left in her voice. Ojin's lips tightly closed as he slowly nodded his head. No, I apologize. It's, yes. I it's nothing. Please forget about what just happened. He backed off with an expression that screamed out that it wasn't fucking nothing. It doesn't seem to be nothing. Hurry up and tell me. Just what kind of relation? Later. Cutting off the goddess's words, he bitterly smiled. I will tell you, later. He shook his head with a grieved smile. The important thing here was making an expression that seemed to have a story behind it scrupulous glances with a bit of trembling in the eyebrows, even gently biting his lower lips, with his fingernails digging into his palms. There's no way one wouldn't get tricked by this. He wasn't so sure about other things, but he had the confidence to create a mood and make detailed expressions. I understand. It seems that you have a story. Moreover, to say that you thought you wouldn't see me again, huh? I see. This lady must have eventually ended up perishing. Vega nodded with quite a composed expression. 
Eventually, her reaction that was so composed that it felt candid made Ojin raise his eyes. In order to make her completely believe that he was a regressor for the time being, he had roughly thrown out plausible words that seemed to make sense, but, looking at her reaction, it seemed that there was something she knew. Does an existence that can make a top-rank celestial perish even exist? Even when he thought of the powerful monsters that were notorious amongst Awakeners, he couldn't imagine it. You could say it was obvious. In the first place, the reason why Celestials couldn't kill the monsters that took over one-third of the Earth was not because they were weak, but because of the commandments that restricted them. Well, whatever. It was only good for him if the opponent was willing to play along. Were you already aware? With a surprised expression, Ojin widened his eyes. The goddess nodded with a dark expression. Yes, I'm already aware. The fact that this lady, no, that all of the Celestials will eventually get devoured by the darkness of the Black Heaven. That's right. By the Black Heaven. Huh? Black Heaven? Isn't the Black Heaven the thing from earlier? In that moment of desperation, the power he had awakened. The dark cloud that absorbed Li Xinhiek's stigma. Why do I have that? A chill ran up his spine. An ominous feeling passed by his head. A few moments ago, she mentioned something about the end. When Vega first appeared, she had titled him the one and only savior of a world that was destined to meet its end. End. That's right, the earth was a world destined to end. Though there was no way to tell if it was a prophecy or a prediction, Vega already knew the fact that the earth would be in peril from the beginning. And Li Xinhiek regressed in order to stop that. Up to that point, it didn't really matter. The problem was, the existence that brings about the end of the world is me? Ha! Huh. It was such a ridiculous story that he couldn't even joke about it. What kind of bullshit is that? Aside from having the ability to end the world, there wasn't a reason to do so in the first place. Fuck. His mind went blank white. In his heart, he just wanted to shove his fist up his mouth and cry. You're spacing out again. Vega spoke out as if she was worried. Like a splash of cold water, his confused mind was woken up. Not good. If he continued to show weird appearances, she would start to have some doubts. I need to stop doing that. It's just that I was thinking about, the memories from back then, Ojin said with a sinking voice. The memories from back then? I'm talking about the memories from when this earth had met its end. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Reaper scans. Translator, Metcass. Proofreader, Illify. Join our Discord for updates on releases. https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash mare gmfhrb. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Vega closed her lips in silence. The sky was colored by a thick darkness. A lot of people, an uncountable amount of people, died. Is that so? I don't know, I'm just spitting bullshit as it comes. However, I returned. One step forward. I gained the opportunity to change the world. He approached Vega and carefully held her hands. Her hands in his grasp were soft to the point that it was hard to believe she was a godlike existence. I'll let go. I won't let go. Firmly nodding his head, he increased the strength of his grip. I won't lose you again. I'll protect you this time. Regressor. It's Ojin. Guan Ojin. This lady has no memories of you. I know. Because the truth is, I don't either. We'll just have to make new memories, we can recover the things we've lost. Gently releasing the strength in his hands, he smiled faintly. So that we can do that. Once he decided to trick her, he couldn't be satisfied by simply deceiving her. No, he couldn't be satisfied. I need power. In order to become a regressor, to at least prove that he was the one and only savior, it was necessary to have power. And in order to achieve that, could you lend me some strength? He would use anything at his disposal. Even if it was an existence that could make celestials bow down with their presence. Vega slowly closed her eyes and shortly after started to slowly nod her head. Regressor. No, Awakener Guan Ojin. She continued with a solemn expression. The existence who goes against destiny, the heaven-defying star. The goddess slowly reached out her hands. For you with a dark and perilous road ahead, may this lady's starlight illuminate up the path. The tips of her paper-white fingers touched his forehead. Ring. Star of the Weaver Girl, Vega, wishes to appoint you as an apostle. Will you accept? Feeling the cold sensations on the tip of his forehead, he slowly nodded his head. Oh wung. Radiant starlight bloomed. He could feel the silver light that shot out from her hands pushing into his body like a tsunami. And then, the Black Heaven is absorbing the stigma's mana. You have achieved part of the conditions required for the Black Heaven's second awakening. A blue message appeared in front of his eyes. A power one step higher than when he first awakened spread throughout his body. Thank you, Vega. Putting aside the message box, he once again gently grabbed the fingers touching his forehead. I will vow on this spot. He continued in a low voice. In order for you to not get devoured by the darkness of the Black Heaven, I will protect you. A vow that contained a firm resolution. 
his two eyes that burned with willingness stared into the gaze of the goddess. What a truly dependable vow. Nodding her head, Vega silently giggled. By the way, who is that person? The place her eyes headed to was the corpse of Li Shinhiak, whose entire body had been burnt to a crisp. In the past, no, it's in the present now. He's a scammer that tricked me into this gate. Ojin answered immediately, like he had been waiting for this question all along. It'd be weird to not ask this question when there's a corpse burnt to death right next to me. Since it was something he had predicted beforehand, there was no need to hesitate. A scammer? Yes, haha. I went through some tough times because of this bastard. I got robbed of all my money and equipment. Is that why you took revenge right after regressing? It's not just because of that. He shook his head with a serious expression. In a couple of years, that person will become a member of a crime organization made up of awakeners and become a malicious being that plunders from the innocent. Aha. Vega nodded her head. Eliminating the evil of the future, ha, huh, it truly is the actions of a regressor. With no intentions of inquiring any longer, her gaze left the corpse of Li Shinhiak. BZZ. UHT. At that moment, a blue spark jumped out of the goddess's body that was observing the surroundings. Although I wish to share a longer conversation, it seems that the commandment's restriction has started. Commandment's restriction. Didn't I grant you a blessing a few moments ago? Even though it wasn't direct, it was still an action that clearly violated the commandments. Ah, I see. Celestials were fundamentally restricted by the commandments which prevented them from directly intervening with the world. Still, I can't let my guard down. Just like she had done when granting him a blessing, Celestials could endure the restriction and slightly intervene in the world. In fact, the appearance of monsters no different from calamities that no Awakener could possibly face had caused the Celestials to personally step in a couple of times. Which meant, if they put their mind to it, they can easily kill a mere scammer that dared to make a fool out of a god. The commandments couldn't protect him. The moment that he was caught not being a regressor, the commandments restriction wouldn't mean shit, and he would end up crushed within the hands of the furious celestial. It'll be better if I die alone. But possibly. By any chance. If the aftermath reaches my surroundings. No. I need to prevent that from happening, no matter what. As a matter of fact, because materializing this form is already an act that violates the commandments, this lady will now return to her sanctum. Sanctum a dimension that celestials would usually stay in, they were able to use them like gates to enter and exit through select areas around the earth. Although, as only awakeners were able to enter, he had never been to one before. In one week's time, come find this lady at her sanctuary. Let's talk about future plans when that time comes. Yes, I understand. He respectfully bowed down his body. Oh whoa. Soon after the sound of low-pitched echoes, the goddess's body became silver stardust and dispersed into the air. H. Ojin, who was left alone, took a deep sigh and sat down on the spot. God damn it, just how did this happen? First, should I start by returning home? He had a splitting headache with so many thoughts swimming through his head all at once. Still, he pulled his shirt and looked down at the left side of his chest. On that place, not the fake stigma that he had inscribed with a knife, but a real stigma could be seen. Smirk. Looking at the stigma, the sides of his mouth went up on their own. I guess not only bad things happened. Actually, this was a rather good opportunity. If he could take advantage of this opportunity, he could possess strength other Awakeners couldn't dare to imagine. Although there are still many mountains left to cross. Thinking about the regression and Black Heaven once more, he started to have a splitting headache again. Let's think about it at home. It wasn't a problem that could be solved by sitting around and contemplating. Well then, before exiting through the gate, there was one final thing left to do. Should we take a look at how much Mr. Regressor had been carrying around? He started to rummage through the coal-black corpse of Li Shinhiak. Even though the leather armor was ruined by burns, fortunately, the wallet was unharmed. Holy shit, why does this bastard carry $2,000 in cash around? Once Ojin saw the wallet stacked with cash, he started to lick his lips while cackling out loud. After the gates turned the earth into chaos, even though cases of people carrying around cash had increased, it was still abnormal to carry thousands of dollars around. I'll also use your weapon well, bugger. While smirking, Ojin stood up after looting all the things that looked to be worth money off of Li Shinhiak's corpse. Huh? At that moment, something strange stood out in his eyes. He took a closer look at the face of the burnt Li Shinhiak. The fuck? Is this guy smiling? Maybe he's having a good dream? Chapter 6, Stigma of Pixis, 3. Two Whopper sets the total comes out to $15.80. Do you want it to go? Yes. I'll have it to go. He ordered dinner from a nearby burger store on his way back home. Fucking hell, why are burgers this expensive? The hands that took out the dollar bills from his wallet started to shake like an alcoholic patient. Buying something that cost three times the price of two dollars frozen burgers made him want to throw up his intestines. 
Here are the two Whopper sets you ordered. Leaving behind the clerk, who had a bright smile, he started to move his feet. He moved towards a narrow alley filled with old and crumbling homes. The sharp smell of mold and damp humidity entered his nose. Ha! Huh. Looking up to the dark sky, he threw up a short sigh. Ultimately, is it back to lying? Suddenly, old memories started to surface in his head. Memories from when he was young, over fifteen years ago. Fragments of memories that now felt unfamiliar started to float around his head. Lies? Did you say you were lying? Was it when he was around eight or nine years old? There was a time when he pranked the director by lying about the kitchen being on fire. He could see the bald director's beet red face. Throwing up the middle finger towards the director, Ojin let out cackling laughter. You goddamn little bastard. The director's steaming face distorted as he headed towards Ojin with clenched fists. He was an average male in his forties, possessing the ultimate trinity force known as high blood pressure, diabetes, and balding. He had a surprising talent of holding back just enough to not leave any scars, even professionals would have been shocked to see it. Fists rained down on top of Ojin's crouched body. Don't hit our Ojin, you bald bitch. With red hair that waved like fire, a young girl took off. In contrast to her sweet, doll-like face, the girl's movements were nimble and ferocious like that of a savage beast. However, even if that was the case, a mere 10-year-old girl couldn't stop the force of an adult. You too. The bald director violently swung his fists around. Ojin and the girl embraced each other, enduring the assault of the director. Nothing's changed from when we were young. Laughing bitterly, he walked through a path so desolate that it looked as if it had been assaulted by monsters and arrived at his home. Creek. After opening the worn-out door, he could see the insides of his cramped house, it didn't even total 355 square feet. Arg. Did they awaken from the sound of the door opening? Together with the sound of light groan, the shabby bed wailed out creaking noises. I'm home. He roughly placed the burgers on the ground and took off his shoes. Folding back the blankets, a woman sat up. Red hair, reminiscent of fire. Akin to a ruby in mud, inside of the rundown house that reeked of mold, was a woman that shone out beautifully. She, who had just woken from sleep, slowly focused her eyes on Ojin. No. The expression focused her eyes wasn't appropriate. Because. You're here? On the surface of her faded white pupils, no reflection could be seen. Fold. She clumsily folded the blankets back. Inside of the folded blankets, her pure white legs were exposed. Where there should have been two, only her left leg remained. Yes, I'm here. He smirked while nodding his head. The red-haired woman gazed upward towards Ojin. If you're here, hurry up and give me a sig. She stuck out two fingers with a grin. The appearance of her nonchalantly sticking out her hand like he was a servant made Ojin chuckle. Back with the bullshit as soon as I'm here? Oh bullshit? Is that something you would say to this sister that's akin to the sky? Fuck off with the sister. I heard that was a trend nowadays. Is it? Sister Haun. Erg. Stop. My insides are curling. But you're the one who told me to. Kayahaha. It sounds weird after hearing it. Looking at her acting like normal, Ojin's lips secretly curled into a smile. It looks like nothing bad happened. Song Haun. A woman two years older than him. She had become Ojin's one and only crutch throughout the hell-like orphanage. The tenacious relation from the orphanage days continued even after they came out of the orphanage. Although, it was shaky and slobby. Clearly. Here. He rolled up the receipt he received after buying the burgers and placed them in between her fingers. Click. He lit up his lighter. SSSPTT. Keck. Cough. W what is this? Cigarette. No it isn't, you bastard. Haun shouted out while violently throwing the burning receipt onto the ground. He picked up the receipt and extinguished the fire with his fingers. Smoke in moderation. What if you get sick on top of your situation? Heh. Even if I look like this, I'm still way healthier than you. Shrugging her shoulders, Haun smirked. She wasn't bluffing. In reality, she possessed a body several times healthier than him. Because she was an awakener. Though she's only a half-awakener that can't use her stigma's mana but it didn't change the fact that she possessed body specs miles superior to him. No, to be more accurate, was miles apart. It's different now. Since I have also become an awakener, I've bought some food for us to eat. Oh, thanks. What's on the menu? Burgers. Hee <laughs> hee. Nice. You have some good tastes. Haun snickered in satisfaction. She liked burgers. Not because she thought the taste was special, but because they were easy to hold and eat. For her who couldn't see, using cutlery was no easy task. Russell. He removed the wrapping and handed the burger over to her. Nom. She chewed on the hamburger with her small mouth. Huh? Her eyes opened wide. She ripped more bites off of the burger like she couldn't believe it. W what is this? Why is it so tasty? It's because it isn't frozen, I bought it from the restaurant. What? Haun's mouth opened wide. A are you sick somewhere? 
Did you get hit on the head by a monster? Her voice faintly trembled, she couldn't possibly believe what she was hearing. Ojin. He wondered for a moment about why she was making such a big deal out of a burger set that wasn't even ten dollars, but looking back at his past actions, he could understand her reaction. I got some money. It's not like you weren't buying them because you didn't have the money to. As she said, even if it was a little extreme, the reason why he saved living expenses wasn't because he didn't have money. Though it was true that he wasn't earning a lot considering that it was a job risking his life, he had still earned over 10000 in a month before. He could have bought a burger set that wasn't even a mere $10 any time they wanted. Though we've never eaten it until now. Even so. The reason why he was so persistent in saving money was to save up a little faster. Since there's something I need to buy at all costs. Ojin staringly gazed at Haun, who had been stuffing down the burger. There's sauce on your lips. Ah, really? Haun turned her head and stuck out her chin. Here, I'll give you the honor of being able to touch my lips. You're driving me nuts. He wiped off her lips with tissues. Hee <laughs> hee. Hey, what's this called? Whopper set. Kia. As expected of the king of burgers. Haun smirked in satisfaction. Then I'll buy this instead of frozen burgers from now on. Ojin took a bite of his burger as well. How disgustingly delicious. It was in a different realm from the frozen burgers he usually ate. The taste was so good it made him want to shove his fist up his mouth and cry out. There was an awkward silence. Haun's blank white sight headed towards Ojin. You, something happened today, didn't it? Yeah. Ojin calmly nodded his head. I became an awakener. Splash. Haun spilled the cola she was holding all over the floor. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Late at night. A delicate moonlight seeped through the window frame. Phew. I finally have some time. After explaining this and that to the freaked out Haun, it became night before he knew it. Well, it was only natural to be that surprised. Since he had suddenly become an awakener and an apostle of one of the North Stars at that, it would be rather strange to not be astonished by that fact. Naturally, he couldn't immediately tell her all of the complicated story. How do I explain that I scammed a celestial into thinking I'm a regressor? After the situation was a bit organized, his splitting headache started once again. Ojin, who had gone to the nearby playground, closed his eyes while sitting on the squeaking swing. First of all, this black heaven. An unknown power that ate up the stigma of Lyra that was engraved on the left chest of Li Shinhiak. This is something that I've always had with me. He couldn't understand why on earth that unknown power was with him, but he was certain of one thing, whatever this black heaven was, it was something that he had originally possessed and was unrelated to Li Shinhiak's regression. There was no way Vega would have mistaken him as a regressor if it wasn't for the Black Heaven absorbing the stigma of Lyra in the first place. And Vega believes that the existence that carries the Black Heaven will destroy the world in the future. If that was true, it would mean that he was the one that would destroy the world in the future. Every time he thought about it, it just didn't make any sense to him. Just what happened to me during the first round. He always thought it was a fucked up world, but he had never thought that it would be nice to destroy the entire world. This is, something I can't figure out, so let's move on. The problem was the fact that he was carrying the black heaven. I need to hide this at all costs. Whatever happened, he couldn't let it be discovered. The moment the black heaven's existence was discovered, the truth that he was not a regressor but a third party that had absorbed the stigma of a regressor would be exposed. Wait, but what is this black heaven thing anyway? The power to absorb stigmas and make them his own. Although he had participated in a lot of parties with diverse awakeners until now, he had never heard of a power like this before. Ojin confirmed the system window that only awakeners could see and clicked where the black heaven was displayed. Ring. The blue message box appeared in front of his eyes. Innate ability list. Black heaven. 1. State. First awakening. 2. Trait. Stigma absorption. Absorbs the mana of stigmas and stores them within the black heaven. Black curtain. Completely shrouds the black heaven's presence. This trait can also be used on possessed stigmas. Transmission, reads the records contained in stigmas. This trait is influenced according to the awakening stage. 3. Possessed stigma. Stigma of Lyra, currently designated as the main stigma. Ah, uh, Ojin, who had confirmed the message box, let out a low-pitched mumble. There's nothing I can figure out with this. It was just a summary of what features the Black Heaven had. It didn't explain what it was and why it was with him. Then, let's also move over this. Eventually, he temporarily put aside thinking why is this happening to me, since it wasn't like he would find new information by sitting there contemplating. If that's the case, what I need to start thinking about is what should I do from now on? A regressor. The most important thing right now is how to look a little more regressful in the meeting with Vega in a week's time. There's a limit with just words. No matter how much he used his words, if he didn't get recognition for his ability and skills, Vega would start to have some doubts. To receive Vega's recognition, 
there was a need to raise the stigma of Lyra's star as fast as possible. At the minimum, I need to reach two star by next week. Awakeners needed to achieve two requirements in order to promote. The amount of mana stored in the stigma and the proficiency of the stigma. There was no need to think about the former. I have overwhelming amounts of mana. He was in a situation where he had been granted stigmas by both the Vega of the first round and the second round. Rather, he was in a situation where he had so much mana that it could become a problem. If that's the case, it meant that if he could increase his proficiency in handling his stigma, he could promote much faster compared to other awakeners. Looks like I'll have to visit the dungeon tomorrow. Was it two or three years ago? One awakener that he had partied with said that there was nothing better at raising a stigma's proficiency in a short time than fighting in real combat. In reality, all high-ranked awakeners that had explosive growth went looking for dungeons. Should I go to sleep? Creek. He got up from the swing and started to exit the gloomy playground. Hmm? Taking a look at his smartphone on the way home, a news article caught his attention. Inside a one-star dungeon located in Incheon, Sinhingdong, a phenomenon where ant horns traveled in herds of over 20 occurred, victims one after another. It was the dungeon he went to earlier that day. As the association believes that this phenomenon could mean the appearance of a mutant, they request that you refrain from entering for the time being. A mutant. Ojin narrowed his eyes. I didn't see a mutant back then, but. It could be that he missed it since he wasn't in a situation where he could care about if there was a mutant or not. Can I take it on? A monster's mutation emerged extremely rarely. According to the situation, there were times when mutants were weaker than normal, but they normally possessed more power compared to the original species. It was a monster that no newborn one-star awakeners could possibly overcome. However, he wasn't your average one-star awakener. Just being a one-star apostle of the twelve zodiacs would give you several times more prestige than other apostles, but he was an apostle of one of the north stars that even the twelve zodiacs wouldn't dare compare to. Truthfully, he had also slaughtered herds of ant horns that numbered dozens earlier that day. Of course, he did receive the help of Vega in the middle, but it was manageable even before receiving the blessing. He actually thought it was rather too easy. And that was when he only possessed Li Xinhiek's stigma of Lyra from the first round. He didn't even have to think of how much easier it would be with the added stigma of Lyra from the second round. All right. Ojin finished his thoughts and calmly nodded his head. His destination for the next day was set. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The next day, Ojin headed to the location he had first met Li Xinhiek. I'm a two-star awakener of Fornax. Does anyone want to party? Two-star awakener of the greater dog here. Looking to hunt for the mutant. Arriving in front of the gate, the rowdy shouts entered his ears. There's quite a lot of people. Even though the association had requested them to refrain from entering, there were more awakeners gathered in front of the gate. I think I heard that the starstones of mutants were much more expensive? It appeared that they gathered for the same reason of hunting the mutant that he had. Hmm. Ojin stopped his feet and was temporarily lost in thought. Should I join a party? He no longer had the need to perform a shit show now that he had become a real awakener. No. Ojin, who had been temporarily in thought, slowly shook his head. He had the confidence to face the mutant alone anyway. In addition to having to divide the profits, it would also make it harder for him to experience proper real combat. Well then, should I go? He headed inside the dungeon, towards the location of where he had met the ant horn herd. The sticky humidity made the dark forest road even more unpleasant. Russell. The sound of bushes shaking. They're coming. He grasped the spear slung on his back and lowered his posture. Chapter 7. Hyenas. 1. Gra. Six ant horns simultaneously jumped out of the bush. Judging by the two that were much larger than the others, it seemed that there were elders amongst them. HMPF. He took a quick breath in and added strength to the spear within his grasp, focusing his mind towards his left chest. Awung. The blue light of the stigma blazed up. A powerful strength spread across his body. Growling. One elder ant horn sharply raced across from the left. His body moved naturally according to the spearmanship inherited by Li Shinhiek. Crack. Grieg. After he shoved the spear's shaft inside the ant horn's face, the ant horn tried to use its sharp chin to break the shaft. You dare. Crunch. He bent the shaft while simultaneously using the heel of his foot to stomp down on the ant horn's head. The ant horn's shell that had been unscathed after taking a hit by a bullet was completely crushed with a simple kick. Good. His body felt as light as a feather. The muscles all over his body wriggled like they were breathing. Grok. He easily dodged the ant horn that tried to strike from behind by lowering his body and then grabbed onto the ant horn's back legs that were flying past his head. Grk? The ant horn struggled as if he was shocked. HMPF. He threw the ant horn he was holding towards the herd. Grak. The ant horn that flew away like a cannon hit the other ant horns and tumbled across the floor. 
As expected, my body specs alone put me in a different realm compared to normal one-star awakeners. An anthorn's average weight was approximately 80 kilograms. It wasn't an easy task to one-handedly throw something that was the weight of two rice sacks like a cannon without being an awakener of Taurus especially if you were nothing but a one-star awakener. My body specs aren't the only monstrous thing. The real strength of the stigma of Lyra revealed itself when he activated it with his mana. BZZ, BZZZZT. Powerful rays of light scattered out of his left chest while blue lightning arced across his body. Is it too early for me to replicate what I did back then? When Vega had granted him her blessing. Different from back then when it looked like a blue lightning storm that would sweep the surroundings away, the current lightning around his body was but a tiny spark, like a three-day starved Pikachu using Thunderbolt. TCH. You couldn't expect much from the first attempt. He didn't come to this place to see if he could amplify his lightning like he had when he received the blessing in the first place. GRRRR. Gra! The tangled ant horns let out an eerie shriek full of fury while charging towards him. Let's leave the miscellaneous thoughts for later. Now was the time to focus on combat. He fiercely jabbed out his spear, following Li Shinhiek's movements that were engraved onto his brain. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Inside the forest filled with sticky humidity. On the vacant lot created by burnt woodlands where anthorn corpses had been burnt to a crisp. A reeking stench pricked his nose. Kia, just how much is all of this? Ojin rummaged through the corpses and put the starstones he harvested into his sack. The palm-sized sack was hefty. It was the kind of hefty that made the side of his lips go up. Will this rack me around $800? Around three hours of hunting for $800. Without a party, there wasn't even a need to split up the money. It made him feel hollow about how he had been risking his life while performing a shit show to earn $200 to $300 a day. This is why everyone's going crazy about becoming an awakener. He had heard on the news that in order to be selected by a celestial, people would gather up and head to the gate that leads to the sanctum to say their prayers every day. He could now slightly understand their feelings. Although if you look at the fatality rate of awakeners, it isn't purely good. Well, whatever. There was a saying that money was more important than the price of life. Anyways. The saying that real combat is the best in raising proficiency was definitely true. BZZ, BZZZZT. Ojin's eyes shined as he made lightning easily at the tip of his fingers. In just three hours, controlling lightning with his stigma became quite natural to him. I'm not sure if I'm fast or if everyone else is capable of doing this much. Since there were no other awakeners that possessed the stigma of Lyra, he couldn't make any accurate comparisons. He changed the form of the lightning on the tip of his fingers into a ball and rolled it around his body. Well, I'll figure it out sooner or later. Ojin himself was not aware of this, but if he had joined another party, their eyes would probably have popped out in astonishment. Usually, the higher the league of a stigma, the more difficult it would be to raise the proficiency in compensation for their mighty power. Even an apostle of the Twelve Zodiac would take years to develop their stigmas, but for him, who was an apostle of one of the North Stars, to use his stigma naturally in mere hours completely defied common sense. However, he defied that common sense without even realizing that he was a unique existence. Well then, narrowing his eyes, Ojin took a look at his surroundings. He refrained from placing the spear back in its sheath and decided to keep his grasp on it. The ant horn's movements are definitely strange. Unlike the usual herds with one elder in charge, the herds of ant horns he had bumped into today had two or more elders moving together. In other words, it meant that there was an upper species that presided over the elder ant horns. The problem is that I don't know where that guy is. He tried to find it directly, but it seemed like another method was necessary. It's a relief I brought this just in case. Ojin opened the zipper on his sling bag and took out a square blood pack. It was one of his business tools, a very useful item that he used to act injured. Although it isn't human blood, but pig blood. It probably won't be a problem since ant horns aren't picky between humans and animals. Splash! After tearing open the blood pack and spraying it over the floor, he hid his presence above a nearby tree. Russell, Russell, Russell. Nice. A short moment after spraying the blood, together with the sound of bushes shaking, he could see the herd of ant horns flock in. They numbered around twenty. And in the middle. Found him. There was a black-shelled ant horn with the build of a tiger. You could tell with one glance that it was distinctively different from the other red-shelled ant horns. As the association had predicted, a mutant appeared. Let's finish this quickly. No matter how powerful the stigma of Lyra was, facing over twenty monsters in a prolonged battle was difficult. Blitzkrieg. He needed to eliminate the mutant in at least three minutes. Foo. Standing up above the tree, he took in a sharp breath. Thump. An electrifying thrill spread from his spine as his heart pulsated. The stigma engraved on his left chest started to spew out light. BZZT. Blazing blue lightning. And then. Huh? As if dark clouds had covered up the sky, his sight was suddenly drowned in darkness. 
The only thing he could see through the deep dark was the figure of the mutant ant horn. Was this place always this dark? He didn't know. His body moved before he could continue his thoughts. Crunch. Kicking off the tree, he soared upwards. With the weight of his entire body, he pointed the spear's blade towards the ground. Crackle. The lightning intertwined with the spear's blade. Unlike before, the blue lightning that fluttered like flames had a jet black darkness mixed within it. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. R. U. M. B. L. E. The thunder spear fell down like a comet. Piercing through the back of the mutant ant horn, the spear dug into the ground. The stench of flesh burning wafted. Huh? What? One blow? It really died in one blow? Even if it was a sudden ambush, Ojin, who hadn't imagined that the mutant ant horn would die immediately, was very shocked. Green. Grag. After the mutant had died, the surrounding ant horns fell into confusion and spun round and round on the spot until they turned their bodies to flee. Oh, hey, wait. Ojin, who hadn't thought that the ant horn herd would dissolve this easily, shouted out in a rush without having the time to chase after the fleeing ant horns. If you're going to run, spit out your star stones first, you fucks. One star stone out of an ant horn was approximately $20. It was precious money that could be used to buy as many as three whopper sets. Fuck. Grab. He tried to pluck the spear out of the ground to give chase, but it wasn't easy to pull out, as the spear was stuck so deep into the ground. Eventually. Ha. Huh. Ojin let out a deep sigh and gave up on the chase. It's unfortunate, but whatever, I've got the mutant anyway. As mutants weren't a common appearance, the starstone of a mutant was worth a minimum of $1,000. He he he. Just thinking about it made his laughter come out. As he turned his body to harvest the starstone. Zap. Arg. An electrifying feeling could be felt from his left chest. After hurriedly lowering his head, he could see the stigma of Lyra scattering out powerful lights. Huh? Is this possibly? Gleam. Next to the stigma that was scattering out lights, one flick was drawn. Ring. A blue message box appeared in front of his eyes together with the sound of clear bells. Ha. Huh. A short chuckle of absurdity flowed out of Ojin's mouth. To think that he would reach two star in not a week, but a single day. Does this make sense? He predicted that he would promote quickly, as his stigma was overwhelming with mana, but he didn't imagine that he would be able to reach two star in a single day. There's no way I'll reach three star by the end of the week, right? If that were the case, there would be no need to deceive or rack up his brain anymore. Because reaching three star within a week was something that was seriously impossible without being an actual regressor. In reality, reaching two star in and of itself was an unbelievable speed. Since achieving two star is something that usually takes six months. Even though the majority of the reasons it took so long was because they had insufficient mana, it was still an astonishing speed, even taking that into account. Two star, huh? He lightly swung his spear. Fush. Fwish. Although he was only slightly swinging his spear around, the sound of air tearing apart echoed. He could feel that his body was unquestionably one step more powerful and agile compared to when he was a one star. Good. The results are more than enough for today. I should hurry up my harvest and return back. He headed towards the corpse of the mutant while humming, thinking if he should order a Guinness Whopper instead of a regular Whopper later that day. Russell. The bushes nearby shook. Huh? There's no way those bastards that fled are insane enough to come back with their own feet. Grasping his spear, he narrowed his eyes. Oh, whoa. Isn't that shell black? Two intimidating looking men walked out of the bushes. He could see the swollen muscles gaping through the gaps of their worn out armor. Wow, even if it's an ant horn, to be able to hunt a mutant by yourself. You're not the average awakener, are you? We're three star apostles of the hunting dogs, nice to meet you. The two of them approached Ojin with friendly laughter, opposite of what their appearances portrayed. Ojin's eyes narrowed. These fuckers. It was clear that they weren't approaching him with good intentions. Honestly, you could call it prejudice, but if you weren't a robber and possessed a face that looked like it had been ground on asphalt like them, that was a crime in its own way. There's no way three star awakeners would come to this low ranked dungeon, unless they came here looking for the mutant. If that was the case, there was no way they would sit still and let Ojin, who was harvesting the mutant's corpse, go. Awakeners turning into robbers with a simple flip of a hand was quite common. Hmm. One of the men that had approached bent his torso down to take a sniff. His appearance looked like that of a hunting dog chasing down its prey. Phew, he must have used enormous amounts of mana to hunt this mutant. Hee <laughs> hee. Shouldn't he be quite exhausted? Right? It's not like a four or five star awakener would come here. The two of them murmured to each other in a low voice. I know what you're talking about, even without hearing it, you dumbass. TCH. Now that I think about it, it's a bit strange. You know we swept through an ant horn herd from all the way ov or there? Are you sure you didn't pick off the one that ran away? Aha, uh -huh, is that what happened? This, this can't be left alone, can it? The both of them smirked while taking out their swords. As expected. They were robbing fucks. 
This can't be helped. Ojin let out a sigh and quickly got on his knees. I I apologize. I didn't even know that happened. Huh? What? Looking at the appearance of Ojin, who had knelt down without a second of hesitation, left the two men surprised. Whatever the case, Ojin rubbed both of his hands together while prostrating on the ground. I I'll hand it over. Kaya ha ha ha. Well, aren't you a youth that's quick to understand? One of the men exploded out in laughter and started moving his feet. Just when he started to approach the collapsed corpse of the mutant behind Ojin. Ah, I'm not saying that I'll hand that over. He grasped his spear and violently stabbed the back of the man. Destroying his armor, the sharp spear pierced his body. Kayuk. Kyuk. I'm saying that I'll hand you over next to your dead mother's side. Fuck. The other man charged while hastily swinging his sword. He spun the spear that had pierced the man and blocked the sword. The man who had become a human kebab shield let out a scream. Ah, uh, ah, uh, slice. Was it because he couldn't stop the inertia from the swing? He ended up slicing the head of his partner into two. W what are you doing? Ojin, who watched the unbelievable scene with his wide open eyes, let out a scream. You killed your partner. H holy shit. What would your dead mother think if she saw your appearance right now? Shut the fuck up. My mom's living completely fine, stop talking bullshit. Don't lie. He roared out fiercely. I saw your mother pass away with my very own eyes, why do you keep insisting on lying? No, what the fuck are you talking about? She's alive. Take in the reality. Take what in, you crazy son of a bitch. Your mother has passed away. She's no longer in this world. Chapter 8, Hyenas, 2. Son of a bitch. Violent profanity emerged from the red-faced man that was steaming from rage. Even though he was a shameless robber that aimed for the game of others, it appeared that he was still affectionate for his parents. It was to the point that it was quite unfortunate that his mother had passed away without being able to see his current appearance. Dai. Oh Wang. The light of the stigma shone through the gaps in the man's armor. The stigma of the hunting dog's power spread throughout his body, amplifying his senses. Swish. Although the sword swung with great speed, its direction was too predictable. He's out of his mind. Ojin easily dodged the attack by moving his body back. Accidentally splitting his partner's head in two on top of Ojin's constant ridicule caused the robber's agitation to build up to the extreme. The robber who had lost his rationality drew a simple line with his sword that hit nothing but thin air. This'll be easy. No matter how strong three-star awakeners were, they would be easy to face in a state like that. No. Even if he was in a normal state, it was most likely that Ojin would still dominate since the one-star gap over the stigma of one of the North Stars by a minor stigma like that of the hunting dogs was negligent. Whoosh. Ojin easily dodged the sword that aimed for his head and jabbed out his spear towards the man's right side. The sharp counterattack flashed through a blind spot. Chying. Arg. Proving he had the skills of a three-star, the man narrowly blocked the spear strike that aimed for his right with his sword. However, the attack didn't end there. Wasn't the stigma of the hunting dogs supposed to amplify the body's senses? The side of his lips went up into a smirk. If the senses of one's body were amplified, it would also mean that one's sense of pain would be magnified as well. If that was the case, bzzzzzzz. Eh, blue lightning flowed through to the spear's tip. The man who was holding onto his sword let out a scream in pain. HMPF. Ojin couldn't miss this prime opportunity. The spear's blade rode along the man's arm and pierced through his neck. Kook. Koo. Dark red blood poured out of the man, whose eyes had rolled to the back of his head. That was the end. Taking down two three-star awakeners didn't even take five minutes. It would have been much harder if we fought properly. There wasn't really a need to think of that. It wasn't like it was a sport, was there really a reason to fight fair and square? Well then, is it time for some human farming? Rummage rummage. While humming to himself, he took off the armor of the two men and started to rummage through their pockets. Ha, huh? they're damn broke. What the hell were these guys doing after reaching three star? Ojin, who had confirmed the wallet's insides, scrunched his eyebrows. Combined, they totaled up to $275. If you put them being three star awakeners into consideration, they were poorer than poor. TCH. Of course, he could earn more money if he used their cards, but recklessly using cards that were easy to track down was ill advised. Although they leaned towards implicitly ignoring the things that happened between awakeners in dungeons, an investigator from the association would be sent if it were outright obvious. The armor. It will be hard to sell in this destroyed state. Should I only take their weapons? Rummage. He tied their swords together and proceeded to hang them on his belt. Taking the cards of these bastards would be dangerous, but nobody cared if you took simple stolen goods to sell. It was a world where people died as easily as bugs on the street. And. Ojin narrowed his eyes. He looked down towards the left side of the unarmored man's chest. Although the shirt was covering it up, the stigma of the hunting dogs was seated on that spot. No matter how low the league was, as long as it was the same stigma, 
the Black Heaven should be able to absorb it. In reality, it was quite a dangerous act. He would be fucked if Vega took notice of the fact that he absorbed the stigma of the hunting dogs. However, there was something called Black Curtain amongst the Black Heaven's traits. The trait that completely shrouded the Black Heaven's presence. The reason why Vega couldn't sense the Black Heaven should be because of that trait. In addition, a line on the description explained that the trait applied the same way to possessed stigmas. If that's the case, it means that Vega won't be able to sense the stigma of the hunting dogs, even if I absorb it. As it was already confirmed that she was unable to sense the Black Heaven, there was no need to doubt its capabilities. All right. He put his hands on top of the collapsed man's chest. Rum, rumble. The black clouds that flowed out of the tip of his fingers moved quickly towards the stigma like it had been starving. Ring. The Black Heaven is absorbing the stigma of the hunting dogs. The Black Heaven's conditions for the Second Awakening have all been accomplished. The Black Heaven's Second Awakening is starting. Rum, rumbly. The black cloud shook. Arg. Darkness shot up around his body. The black cloud started to wrap him. Sizzle. His head was assaulted with pain as if burning iron skewers were piercing it. Along with that. The Black Heaven is reading through the records contained in the stigma of Pyxis. The Black Heaven's awakening stage is too low. The amount of records that can be read are restricted. Once more, the memories of Li Shinhiak surged into his head. Are you awake? The first thing he saw was the appearance of a tall and attractive youth through a cloudy haze. The youth looked down at Li Shinhiak with a cold gaze. The disoriented Li Shinhiak slowly moved his head to observe the surroundings. His cloudy sight started to become clear. Hospital room? In his memories, Li Shinhiak was lying down in a spacious private hospital room. He could see the date through the digital clock hung on the room's wall. November 21, 2020. Since it was currently the 7th of November, they were the memories of exactly two weeks in the future. Where am? This is the hospital. The hospital? You passed out for two weeks. F for two weeks? Li Shinhiak asked once again in shock. That's right. The youth that looked to be Li Shinhiak's younger brother bluntly nodded his head. A cold fury lurked behind the youth's chilly gaze. Why did you enter the dungeon on your own? T that is. Didn't I tell you to take one of our guild members with you? It's, because everyone looked busy. So you entered that place on your own? I'm sorry, Wuhiak. I thought it'd be okay since it was only a one star. Ha. Huh? The youth called Wuhiak let out a deep sigh. Li Shinhiak lowered his head with a daunted expression. At that moment. Knock knock. Li Wuhiak stood up from the spot and opened the door. The appearance of a woman with glasses could be seen through the gap of the door. Guild leader, do you have time to spare? What's the matter? You are aware of the new dungeon that appeared in Mok Dong on the 15th, correct? Chang Hyun said that he discovered a star relic inside the dungeon. Chang Hyun did? Yes. But hearing the story, there were some strange. BZZ. Along with the static noise, his sight started to go blank. The voice of the two started to fade. And then. Hua. The pain piercing his head disappeared. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Ring. Part of Awakener Li Shinhiak was successfully inherited. Spearmanship of Pixis LV4 has increased to Spearmanship of Pixis LV5. You have acquired lame excuse LV2. A blue message box appeared in front of his eyes as his pain resided. Will I gain more of Li Shinhiak's memories as the Black Heaven's awakening stage increases? Ojin slowly ruminated through the memories that had just passed through his head. Li Wuhiak. New dungeon on the 15th in Mok Dong. Also. Star Relic. An artifact agglomerated with a star's power. The ability of star relics varied widely but amongst them existed ones that had the power to increase power by 1-2 stars. In summary, it's saying that a star relic will appear in a dungeon that appears in 8 days in Mok Dong? It was an unexpected piece of high-class information. I think. Ojin's eyes shined sharply. It was the golden opportunity to get his hands on a star relic. No, even more than that. I'll be able to use this. It was a great buffer to continue his scam. By the way, can I read the records on these two as well? Looking down on the corpses of the two men, Ojin tilted his head. Although he had absorbed the stigma of the hunting dogs, he did not receive memories as he had with Li Shinhiak. The stigma of the hunting dogs you have absorbed is too faint. Reading the stigma's record has ended in failure. Ah, is it because of that? Indeed, there's no way these obviously dim-witted bastards could possibly have a thick stigma. No matter how low the league the celestial of the hunting dogs is, they probably aren't stupid to the point of granting bastards like these a thick stigma. Well, anyways. It was an incredible harvest. He was not only able to promote to two-star, but he had also awakened the Black Heaven once more. Though I'm not entirely sure if the Black Heaven awakening is a good thing. He couldn't be certain if continuing to develop the Black Heaven was the right thing or not since the mysterious Black Heaven was an unknown power. However, I have no choice in the matter. 
If the fact that he could earn Li Xinhiek's memories as the Black Heaven awakened was true, he couldn't stop there. For him who had worn the mask of a regressor, nothing was more important to him than the memories of a real regressor. Well then, Ojin gently closed his eyes and concentrated his mind. A blue light scattered out of the stigma on his chest. Let's take a look at what the stigma of the hunting dogs is like. As soon as he activated the stigma, the senses of his body multiplied. His sense of smell was especially sensitive. Erg! Numerous smells that entered through his nose made him bend down and gag. It felt like the smell of every single surrounding leaf was digging into his nose. This'll be useful once I get used to it. He shook his head and activated the stigma of Lyra once more like a switch. It seemed that he couldn't use two stigmas simultaneously, as once the stigma of Lyra was activated, his body sense returned back to normal. Bzz, bzz, zzz, zzz, t. The blue lightning blazed around his body. Hmm. Ojin's eyes widened as he took a look at the fiercely blazing blue lightning. The lightning became thicker. He didn't understand the reason why, but the blazing blue lightning was one step thicker. Bzz, zzz, t. Bang. A loud explosion burned the ground after he shot lightning out as an experiment. The stigma's power has increased for sure. The feeling was different from when he was promoted from one star to two star. Back then, he could feel that the amount of the stigma he could use at once had increased, but currently, it felt as if the stigma's quality itself had thickened. Ojin narrowed his eyes and was momentarily lost in thought. Ah, finding the answer didn't take long. It said that the stigma's strength would be adjusted according to the awakening stage of the Black Heaven. With all the chaos that was going on back then, he had completely forgotten about it. Wait, then does that mean the stigma's power I've been using until now was reduced? He chuckled out of absurdity. Then just how strong does that make Vega, the owner of the stigma? A dizzy sensation spread from his spine. He once again resolved to never be caught by Vega at all costs. I should start preparing to head back. He left the sprawled out corpses behind and headed towards the mutant ant horn's corpse. Rummaging through the corpse, he found a starstone the size of a 50 cents coin. It's black? Starstones were normally tinged in blue. Hmm, how much will this sell for? His eyes shone while putting the black starstone inside his pocket. With the two swords on his belt and a hefty pocket, his lips automatically turned into a smile. I'll receive around $500 for the swords. The normal starstones added up to around $800, including the mutant starstone would mean he earned a minimum of $3,000 in a single day. Holy shit. Hooray awakeners. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Creak. The familiar smell of mold tickled his nose as soon as he opened the rusty door. You're home? Haun, who was hanging around the entrance with her crutches on, quickly approached him. That's unusual. Why aren't you lying down on the bed? Ojin asked with his round eyes. Shut up. Why do you assume that I'll be lying down every day? While she was saying that, she slowly stretched out her hands. Her pure white hands touched his cheek. Fumble fumble. Her hands searched over his cheeks, hair, neck, and shoulders. It was quite ticklish. What are you doing? Without answering the question, she continued to fumble all around his body for a while until she let out a short sigh. At least you came home without getting hurt like a dumbass. Ah, so it was like that. Smirk. A smile spread across his face. Why? Were you worried that I might have been hurt? It'll be a big problem for me if my errand boy breaks down. What errand boy are you talking about? He he he. Weren't you my errand boy starting from the orphanage? Haun chuckled while tapping on his head. Now now what did my errand boy buy for dinner today? Ah, I forgot. Um, just kidding. I brought burgers. Whopper set. Guinness Whopper set. Do you want to get married? What is this woman saying? All right. Then should we set up a date, honey? Huh? Ah uh, really? No. Just kidding. Why you rascal? Let's stop talking nonsense and head inside. Ojin carried her into his arms and moved her to the bed. He handed over the burger set that was in the paper bag to her. Haun, unusually, didn't even lay her hands on the burger. What's wrong? You're not eating? A sudden silence came down. Haun hesitantly opened her mouth. You, you really became a North Star's apostle? Yup. She continued clenching her fist. Just because you're a North Star's apostle doesn't mean you can just enter high-ranked dungeons and stuff, alright? Join parties, even if you think it's a waste. Don't worry, I extensively take care of my own safety. H.M. You don't mean that. Haun stretched out her hand and slightly pinched his cheek. You're celestial. Did you say it was Vega? Yeah. How is she? What do you mean? As he tilted his neck and looked at her, Haun's cheeks slightly blushed. I mean, well, it's just that, she's the famous star of the Weaver Girl. God damn it. I'm asking if Vega or whatever looks pretty. Ah, so she was talking about that. She's pretty. With a little added exaggeration, she was a beauty that could make one's eyes spin around. Streech. Ow wow wow. An electrifying pain rushed in as his cheek pulled out. Why? 
Just because I'm a bit pissed. I'm innocent. Whoosh. Ha Eun rolled over as she covered herself tip to toe with the blanket. Ah, right. I'm planning to go there tomorrow. Where? Peek. Ha Eun slightly lowered the blanket and peeked out. Oh Jin continued while slightly opening up the burger's wrapping and placing it close to her mouth. The Awakener's Association. Nom. She took a bite out of the burger with her small mouth. Chapter 9, Registration Test, 1. Special Disaster and Security Management Association. While it was a plausible name, in reality, nobody called it by that name. It was the organization commonly known as the Awakeners Association. Only the ones that had been granted stigmas by Celestials, Awakeners, could apply to the association to receive a license. Naturally, this license didn't signify much in itself. After the gates opened across the world, due to the government's authority weakening, the practicality of the license was pretty much non-existent. Damn it, it's so crowded. Just so, in front of the headquarters located in Yuido were numerous Awakeners waiting to take the license issuance test. The reason why Awakeners across the country had gathered for a license that held little significance was quite simple. Getting a license would increase the chance of getting scouted by guilds. A simple analogy would be registering a product at an auction. One two-star Awakeners with good results would be scouted with exceptional conditions from major guilds. There was nothing much to mention about the opposite cases. I don't have any thoughts on entering a guild, but he had a separate plan for coming all the way there. There's still some time left in the waiting queue. I should sell the Starstones in advance. Ojin started to head towards the Starstone purchasing office stuck next to the headquarters building. He handed over the two pouches of Starstones to the employee that had a business smile. One was from when he had partied with Lee shin Hyuk, and the other was from the dungeon the previous day. According to the market price of November 8, 2020, the total comes out to $1,444. Would you like that in cash? Please send it to my account. Although taking it in cash would feel better, he didn't want to risk the chance of losing it. No shot. He would never risk the chance of losing an enormous amount of money that passed $1,000. Accounting for taxes, your final total is $1,152. Fuck. Huh? No, it's nothing. What kind of tax takes 20%, you fucking robbers? Sigh. Although his head heated up from his bottomless anger, he settled it down with his superhuman endurance. He had wanted to sell them using the illegal route that didn't take off taxes, but the risks that came with that method were too high, since they supervise starstones even more meticulously than they do drugs. No matter how much their authority had dropped, the association was still the nation's largest institution. If he got caught, it wouldn't end with simple tax problems. TCH. Ojin clicked his tongue while taking the receipt. The only thing left now is the starstone harvested from the mutant. I'll need to gather more information before I sell it. Whereas normal starstones had an international market price set, a mutant starstone was different. It would garner more profit if you gathered information beforehand. Let's see, it's about time. Checking the time, he could see that it was almost time to take the registration test. Ojin moved his feet towards the headquarters building. Wait number 57. Here. Thud thud. Ojin, who had been momentarily waiting in the waiting room, got up after hearing his number being called. Which constellation are you associated with? The employee asked with a business-like vibe while filing in documents as if he was a machine. It's Lyra. Lyra. Tilting his head, the employee looked through the chart at his side. W wait. Could you repeat that for me? Which constellation? He asked with a pressing tone. Crash. The employee shot to his feet. It's Lyra. L-Y-R-A. Ojin replied with a nonchalant expression, like he had predicted that reaction from the start. By LL Lyra, are you P perhaps? Yes. Ojin smirked while nodding his head. Star of the Weaver Girl. I'm the Apostle of Vega. The mouth of the employee fell open. P please wait for a moment. He turned his body in a hurry and ran out somewhere. Murmur. Everyone nearby shot a glance. Ha. Huh. Ojin clicked his tongue with a short chuckle. Although it was the expected reaction, he couldn't help but chuckle when he saw it. Is this the prestige that comes with a North Star? The truth was, he had contemplated a lot about whether he should reveal the fact that he was an Awakener of Lyra. If he revealed that he was an apostle of a North Star in a world where everyone would go crazy over being affiliated with the Twelve Zodiacs, he couldn't predict what kind of chaos would come. If you thought about the countless nuisances that would follow, you might be tempted to live like a loser while hiding strength like the main characters in mass-produced Sky fantasies. That's just dumb. Prestige was authority. The foundation he had possessed was too lacking to give up the enormous authority that came with being a North Star's apostle. Aside from the simple problem of money, he could gain connections, information, and a host of other small things. Thinking about the things he had to do in the future, they weren't just one or two things he needed. And, to solve that. Authority. 
he needed the title of being a North Star's apostle that nobody could dare disregard. It, it'll take a bit of time, so could you please wait over here? The employee who had run off came back and asked respectfully. The machine and business-like appearance that the man had displayed at the start could not be seen. That's right. This is the power of authority. Smirk. Ojin nodded his head while smirking. Please follow me. The employee led the way. Huh? What's going on? Although he felt the gazes from the murmuring onlookers, he lightly brushed them off. Click. You can wait inside here. The place the employee had guided him to was a waiting room that had the words VIP written on the door. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Got it. Ojin slightly nodded his head and headed inside. Hmm? Sitting down inside was a blonde youth with short hair that gave the impression of a good-for-nothing. Who's he? The blonde youth asked towards the employee like he was a servant. Ah, I see Awakener Park Yung Woo has already arrived. The thing is, I've brought him here due to some circumstances. What circumstances? That is, the employee studied Ojin's expression. Ring ring. At that moment, the sound of bells spread across the room. E excuse me, I have something urgent to attend to. My explanation. Bang. Running away, the employee closed the door behind him. An awkward silence came down with only the two of them remaining. Who's that bastard? Ojin looked at the blonde youth called Park Yung Woo with narrow eyes. Sitting comfortably on the sofa, the youth was staring in his direction. He momentarily thought about starting up a conversation, but he decided to ignore him. Well, he's probably some rookie affiliated with a major guild. He had heard that awakeners who had already joined a guild would occasionally take the registration evaluation to make their names known. Looking at the fact that he was situated in the VIP room, it was probably within that category. Moreover, Ojin's eyes headed towards the table in the corner of the waiting room. Spread out on top of the table was a buffet-like array of desserts such as biscuits, cakes, and simple snacks. Not only that, inside the mini-fridge located next to the table, in addition to drinks of every kind, was a wide selection of alcohol. This is, all free, right? They were probably left there for people to eat while waiting. Buffet. Holy shit. A buffet. He had only ever seen buffets in pictures before, it was the first time in his life he had seen one in person. Tremble. Starting from his spine, a thrilling sensation spread across his body. Just how much is all this? A glance was enough to tell that the snacks and cakes displayed on the fancy plates were really fucking expensive. This. He couldn't restrain himself. No. It was something that shouldn't be restrained. An opportunity to fill up for free couldn't be passed up. Grab, grab. He filled up his plate with snacks and cakes. Munch, munch. Since he didn't know when the employee would return, he gobbled up the snacks and cakes in a rush. Ho ho ho. This is so nice. Although he didn't like sweet things, that matter became obsolete with the fact that everything was free. Ha. Huh. Park Yung Woo, who was looking at him emptying plates like a beggar, let out a sigh. Oh Jin ignored him. Does this place have a plastic bag? Ojin, who had emptied three plates in an instant, looked around for a plastic bag. Let's pack up the rest and take it home. Weren't they left there to be eaten in the first place? There probably wouldn't be a problem if he took them. Kaiho, Haun will jump in joy again. She would be overjoyed even more since she had utterly no opportunities to eat desserts. While he was imagining Haun's smile in his head. What are you, a fucking beggar? Bang! Park Yung Woo, who had been observing with a frown, violently dropped his foot on top of the table. Ojin momentarily put down the cake and raised his head. Looking at Park Yung Woo staring at him with sharp eyes, he smiled. Hmm. Comfortably leaning on the sofa, Ojin crossed his legs. What a quite daring young man. Changing his manner of speech, he continued with a solemn voice. It's nice to see the energetic youth these days. It wasn't only his voice. As if a switch had turned on, Ojin's expression, gesture, and even the atmosphere he gave off changed in an instant. The display of him emptying the plates like a beggar vanished like it had been a mirage and a mysterious vigor similar to that of an old master seeped out. What nonsense are? Do you know who I am? Flinch. Park Jung was shoulders shook. So who are you? Ho ho. I guess matters like these occur since I haven't been active all that often these days. Kakik. He relaxedly crossed his arms while laughing like an old man. Though I feel like people on the level of getting guided to the VIP room should be able to recognize me. Park Yung Woo clenched his fist while shutting his mouth tightly with an uneasy expression. Who is he? Judging from his confidence, he seemed to be someone famous that had his face known to the world, but no one came to mind in the moment. He sounds like some kind of old man. Come to think of it, he had heard of it before. That there were instances of high-ranked awakeners of at least nine star recovering their body in youth. S shit. Gulp. Park Yung Woo, who had felt something amiss, started to sweat with a nervous expression. Come to think of it, Ojin was someone like himself who had been guided to the VIP room. It meant that he wasn't your average awakener. Which guild are you in? Panned. 
Manners. Huh? Your manners are quite lacking. Kiki. Ojin let spill a good laugh while narrowing his eyes. Goosebumps spread across from Jung Woo's spine. The frightening gaze in between the narrowly opened eyes made Park Jung Woo's body unconsciously swoop down. W what the hell? He felt lost, like he had been staring into a never-ending black sky. He couldn't understand just how a person could change this drastically with one glance. It was impossible to tell if he was the same person that was eating cakes like a beggar a few moments ago. I I am, affiliated with the Pandinus Guild. Pandinus. A guild made up of Scorpio's Awakeners. It was a guild famous enough to be picked as one of Korea's top 10 guilds. Was the guild leader's name Kong Chan Hyuk? Thousand Poison Stab, Kong Chan Hyuk. To call him one of the representative Awakeners of Korea was a bit of a long shot, but he was still quite famous. If you wanted to specify rankings, he was narrowly within the top 30. Taking into account that there were tens of thousands of Awakeners in Korea, there was no doubt he was incredibly skilled. Aha, so you're in Chan Hyuk's guild. Ojin nodded his head while staring into the void with a reminiscing expression. A are you perhaps familiar with our guild leader? Nope. I don't know a thing. We used to eat together a lowing time ago and go to the sauna and whatnot. S sauna. Kiki, that young boy became a full-fledged guild leader before I knew it. The more Ojin talked, the paler Park Jung was expression became. I should have a drink with him soon. Ah, that's right. Could you send my regards to Chan Hyuk? Just say it was from Gwen Ojin and he'll recognize who it's from. T that is. The. I. Jung was body shook with a deathly pale expression. I I apologize for being discourteous and unrecognizing of such a paramount individual. Kiki. Don't worry about it. A young man can make some mistakes. With an expression of a kind man, Ojin lightly tapped on the shoulders of Park Yung Woo. Not at all. I I made too big of a mistake. Hmm. If that's the case, could you do me one favor? Give the word and I'll do anything. Park Yung Woo courteously bowed down his neck and loudly shouted out. Then. Ojin slid out his hand and pointed towards the table that still had tons of snacks and cakes remaining. Could you bring a plastic bag and pack those for me? Chapter 10, Registration Test, 2. I packed them all here. Boxes were stacked on top of the table. Instead of plastic bags that would make the cakes crumple, Park Yung Woo put them in several boxes and sincerely packaged them one by one like a professional patissier. Thank you for the hard work. Looking straight down the long line of boxes, Ojin put up a satisfied expression. By the way, have you come here for the registration exam? Why yes, that's correct. I have come to get good results to make Pandinus's name known. Park Yung Woo replied in an instant, like a private first class that had just finished boot camp. Hmm. I see. Ojin smirked while nodding his head. Since it was about time the association employees returned, it was time to wrap things up. I'll need to confirm the skills possessed by a rising star of the Pandinus Guild myself. Yes? Park Jung Woo's eyes enlarged from the words like a bolt from the blue. Although he didn't know who, an awakener that appeared to be in a higher position than his guild leader wanted to observe his evaluation test. Those words were no different from a commander that had visited the unit wanting to confirm the results of training. T that's a bit. Kiki. Since you kids are the ones that Chang Hyuk picked, of course you'll be incredible. A new star. That's right. You'll be the new star that's responsible for the future of Korea. Shudder. The legs of the pale-faced Park Yung Woo quivered. I'm fucked. He nervously nibbled on his lips. The truth was that he had already pre-planned this evaluation test to be taken by a bribed association employee. A situation where he would get high marks even if he half-assed the test. However, W what do I do? Using that kind of trickery was impossible if another person observed the test. HM? Why do you have such a lifeless expression? The thing is. And no. I it's nothing. Clench. Park Yung Woo clenched his shaking hands. His mind burned white. Just when he thought he could live a strong and steady life by entering a large guild, he felt that he had suddenly come to an enormous cliff. Is your body perhaps not feeling well? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ojin continued speaking with a concerned expression. Then shouldn't you avoid taking the evaluation test today? You may end up unnecessarily disgracing the guild's name by taking the test in your current state, he said in a subtle voice. There was no way any guild member would want to take a test while an awakener who seemed to be in a much higher position than their own guild leader was observing personally. Maybe if it was someone with skill. The truth was that with the good-for-nothing attitude and the atmosphere he gave off, he looked quite lacking in saying he was an awakener of Scorpio, belonging to the Twelve Zodiacs. In the first place, it was doubtful if he had even planned on taking the test properly. Since they say that there are cases of bribes in order to get high marks. Although he wasn't sure if Park Yung Woo was planning on using those kinds of trickery, whichever side it was, it didn't matter. Looking at the expression he wore like that of a constipated lil puppy the moment he heard that Ojin was going to observe the evaluation test, it was clear that he didn't welcome anyone observing the test. As if he had discovered an oasis in a dry desert, Park Jung was eyes glistened. 
Why yes, I understand. The truth is, I was feeling under the weather today. I see. So that was indeed the case. Look at this fucker's expression brightening up. Does it feel that good? Come here for a second. Huh? Why all of a sudden? Park Yung Woo, who was startled, stumbled over the ends of his words. Didn't you say that your body is feeling unwell? I'll take a look at it. And no. T there's no need for you to. It's not like having an unwell body is a crime, there's no need to act this way. He pulled on Park Jung Woo's wrist. You uh. Yung Woo shut his eyes tightly with a stiffened expression, like a high schooler that had been caught smoking. Cute bastard. Cackling on the inside, Ojin started to look here and there around Park Jung Woo's body and then continued to feel the pulse on his wrist. Hmm. Mana is definitely unstable. Respiration is also in disorder. He nodded his head while spitting out pretentious words. It seems that your body is simply fatigued. It isn't an illness, so rest assured. T thank you. However, fatigue is the source of all illnesses, postpone the evaluation test for another day and rest for today. Haha. <laughs> yes. I understand. I shouldn't unnecessarily overdo myself and disgrace the guild's name. Yes, yes, that's right. Shouldn't health be above all? Park Yung Woo, who had instantly got up from his spot, bowed deeply. Thank you for your kind words. I once again apologize for the disrespect I gave before. Kiki. Don't worry about it. You should head back now. Yes. Don't forget to send my regards to Cheng Hyuk. Understood. Park Yung Woo, who had been continuously bowing, opened the waiting room's door and ran out as if fleeing. Oh Jin relaxingly sat on the sofa while waving. Now the annoying menace that had gotten on his nerves disappeared. Naturally, there was the danger of annoying matters occurring in the future, but there's a higher chance of him not reporting. There weren't many cases of mere guild members being able to meet the guild leader of large guilds in the first place. It wasn't like it was a matter that was of importance, there was no way he would have a private meeting with the guild leader just to send his regards. Well, even if he did, it would probably end with him scolded for all the nonsense. Even if he came searching for him after that, it wouldn't matter. I'll just need to crush him when that time comes. Rising star of a large guild or not, he was a North Star's apostle. Thinking about back when he easily pulled down on Jung Woo's wrist, he didn't think he would lose in a fight. Neat. He got rid of the menace and got beautifully packaged cakes to bring to Haun. And, above all, now, should we take a look at how much there is inside? Exploding out in laughter, he took out a luxurious wallet. Moments ago, when he said he would take a look at Park Jung Woo's condition, he had secretly swindled his pockets. Oh, wow. This bastard carries a lot of cash around. He took the bills stuffed inside the wallet with a smirk. The rumors of salaries of large guilds being no joke seem to be true. HM? What's this? While he was rummaging through the wallet, a black gem the size of a 50 cents coin caught his attention. This is, a mutant starstone? The size was similar to that of the anthorn starstone he had harvested. Why does that bastard have this? As the appearance of mutants was extremely rare, it wasn't easy to get a hold of a mutant starstone. But why did it come out of Park Jung Woo's wallet all of a sudden? I'll need to find out more about this. To simply take it as good news, something felt fishy. Swoosh. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. He started to hear footsteps from the hall ten minutes after roughly tossing the wallet into the waste bin. Thump, thump. Heavy footsteps could be felt from the hallway. Click. Opening the door, a man came in. I apologize for making you wait so long. He seemed to be in his late thirties. It was a tanned man with a tall height reaching around 190 centimeters with muscles that seemed to want to burst out. From the overwhelming feeling like that of facing a tank, Ojin momentarily lost his words. You are Awakener Ojin, correct? The one who possesses the stigma of Lyra. Ah, yes. That is correct. My introduction was late. I'm team leader Han Junman from the Disaster Countermeasures Headquarters of the Special Disaster and Security Management Association. The humongous man lent out his hand. Shaking the hand full of calluses, Ojin could feel the electrifying strength climbing up from his grip. Whoa. He was a powerful being incomparable with the likes of Park Yung Woo. Your constellation by any chance. I'm a six-star awakener of Taurus. Taurus was a constellation that belonged to the twelve zodiacs, just like Scorpio. Because he had reached six-star on top of that, Ojin couldn't help but feel the suffocating pressure. I heard that there was nothing to be seen amongst the association's awakeners, but I guess they were all nonsense. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, it isn't entirely nonsense. Team leader Han Junman laughed bitterly while nodding his head. Anyways, is the fact that you possess the stigma of Lyra really true? He asked with an expression full of disbelief. Well, awakeners that were granted a stigma from the celestials known as the North Stars. Even if you took into account the entire world, there were but twelve of them. In addition, all twelve of them were awakeners that were granted the stigmas by Deneb. They called the awakeners that were granted stigmas by Deneb North Stars Apostles. 
As every single one of them was incredibly skilled, they had their names known across the entire world. Although attention to the other apostles of the North Stars was gathered from the extraordinary powers they had shown, only the existence of Vega and Polaris was known, and they had never made an awakener to date. In other words, Ojin was the first awakener in the world who had been granted a stigma by Vega. I'll show you. Actions were faster than words. He unbuttoned his shirt and showed him the stigma engraved on his left chest. Hmm. Team leader Han Junman observed the stigma with a serious expression. He had an expression that spoke out that he wasn't sure yet. Did you say you came here in order to take the evaluation test? Yes. If it's okay with Awakener Guan Ojin, would it be okay if I conducted the test personally? Personally? What kind of six-star Awakener does an evaluation test? This will slightly mess up my plans. Just when he was about to open his mouth to refuse. H.M. Now that I think about it, it's not all that bad. He thought of the possibility that this method would be better than his original plan. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Then let's move to the testing grounds right away. Nodding his head, he followed the back of team leader Han. All right then. After walking through the complicated hallways for five minutes, he could see the spacious testing grounds located inside the association. Surrounding the testing grounds was tempered glass made specially with starstones for awakeners. They got rid of the spectators. Because it wasn't like spectating was against the rules, he had heard that a couple of people passing by would usually come to spectate, but it seemed like the team leader had directly restricted entry. He unexpectedly has good senses. Even though he looks like he could chew on iron ingots for breakfast. Since you said you're a warrior type, the examination method will be a simple spar. Team leader Han Junman, who had put on protective gloves, took his stance. Can I really use this instead of a sparring weapon? Ojin tapped on Li Xinhiek's spear that he had left at the depository when he first entered the association building. Haha. <laughs> of course. If that's the case. It didn't matter since the opposing side said it was okay. A six star awakener. No matter how overpowered the stigma of Lyra was, could it really close the gap of four stars? And an awakener affiliated with the twelve zodiacs at that? I'll have to try and find out. Is that the reason he decided to conduct this test? Fu. He breathed in while lowering his stance. Breathing in low and slow. His body moved according to the spearmanship of Pixis engraved in his brain. And. Wung. The stigma engraved on his left chest blazed out with blue lights. Crack. Crackle. The blue lightning sparked out fiercely. Ch hat. Boom. Violently kicking his feet, he sprinted. He jabbed out the blue lightning-infused spear with all his strength. Kang. The spear blade that hit team leader Han's forearms strongly bounced off. It didn't feel like a human's arm, but instead like some kind of hard cast iron. Huh? The expression of Han Junman, who had easily blocked the spear, stiffened. What the hell? Han Junman's mouth fell open. Chapter 11, Registration Test, 3. Twitch. The blue lightning moved to his right arm. His forearm that had deflected the spear's blade couldn't move properly. No way. The eyes of team leader Han Junman trembled slightly. He had certainly confirmed moments ago that the stigma had two stars. The blocked attack of an awakener that was only a mere two star was able to make his arms difficult to move. Just what? Before he had the time to grasp the situation accurately, a sharp spear strike stabbed out at him. HMPT. Bang. Taking a raging step forward, he compressed his shoulders. As the spear's blade bounced off, he saw a clear opening to strike at Ojin's chest. He roughly swung his gloved fists. Bam! Kook! Ojin, who had taken the blow right on his chest, flew back like a baseball that had been hit by a bat. Ragdolling on the ground, he crashed into the testing grounds wall. Cough! Cough! He couldn't breathe properly. Rather than a human fist, it felt more like he had been hit by a car racing at full speed. Holy shit! What kind of monstrous power is that? A sharp pain passed through his spine. A are you okay? Yes. Putting team leader Han Junman's panicked expression behind him, he stood up. Although the arm that was grasping the spear was slightly shivering in addition to his shaking legs. Still. He could still fight. He could still move. Oh wung. The stigma on his left chest started to pour out light. The heavy pressure that had been pushing down on his chest reduced slightly. Stabbing is not enough. He couldn't pierce through those solid arms with a direct attack. If that's the case. Wung. Lowering his body, he swung his spear in a clean motion. The ankles were his target. The blue lightning-infused spear blade flashed across the floor. Hyatt. Team leader Han Junman kicked towards the spear blade that was heading towards his ankle. A movement like that of kicking a soccer ball. That's right. Ojin's mouth perked up. Ojin knew that he wouldn't try to avoid it. Pang. Just before the low-swung spear was about to be hit by the foot, he let go of his grasp on the spear's shaft. The spear bounced on the ground and rotated in the air. Snatching the spear. Hiya. He struck down towards Junman's shoulder. Papak. Kook. 
Recoiling his body, team leader Han Junman took a step back. Chasing after him, Ojin gripped his spear. Ha, ha, an intense exaltation. The insides of his head were burning up. Smirking, a thrilling sensation spread throughout his body. A little more. He wanted to enjoy the sensation of his body burning up. He wanted to feel the thrill of scratching the surface. Oh wung. The stigma let out a blazing light. Cray ackle. Just like when he had received the blessing from Vega, the blue lightning fiercely blazed up. A blue message box appeared in front of his eyes. He ignored it. Fu. He took in a large breath. The smell of piercing thick sweat. The smell of air, dust, and steel. As if he was using the stigma of the hunting dogs, the senses in his body sharpened to its edge. Just a little, more. Swing the spear. Stab the spear. More tenaciously. More brutally. More viciously. Kong. Ka Kang. Ka Gong. Ku. Team leader Han Jun circulated both his arms to protect his face from the spear strikes that rained down. What's this? His doubt grew wider. Up to the point of him no longer being able to remember the surprise he had first felt, the stunning astonishment left him shaken. Just what's going on? Kang. Kong. What he was surprised by was not the fiercely blazing blue lightning nor the wildly swinging spear. Above that. Above something trivial like that. Just why, is he becoming stronger? Out of hand, out of control. Like a fallen drop of black ink spreading out in transparent water. A sticky and ominous feeling wrapped around him. Oh wung. The stigma engraved on team leader Han Junman started to burn brightly. Although a six-star awakener using his stigma against a two-star awakener was a ridiculous thing to do. Hiya app. This wasn't the time to argue about that. Bang. Kuhuk. As the glove exploded, the thick fist ferociously swung out. The wave of strength caused by the stigma of Taurus compressed the air, making it explode in a frightening fashion. Bang. Ba bang. Ojin, who was caught in the explosion, bounced on the floor like a skipping stone. Oh Ojin. The panic team leader Kong Junman urgently rushed towards him. Medics. Quick, come and bring the medics. As team leader Kong Junman urgently shouted out, an awakener that was on standby outside the entrance hurriedly came in. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I'll start by stopping the bleeding. The stigma engraved on the left chest of the awakener started to pour out light. The blue light pouring out of his two arms started to flow into Ojin's body. Ha, ha, Ojin's coarse breathing started to return to normal. Fortunately, it's not a big injury. Phew. As team leader Han Junman felt at ease, he exhaled a breath out of relief. Bring a potion if there's one available. The best one. Yes, team leader. The awakener who had rushed outside soon came back holding a potion. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. It was a potion made from finely grounded starstones created with the power of an awakener of Aquarius. Please, take it. Gulp, gulp. Ojin calmly drank the potion team leader Han Junman passed over. His body that felt stinging pain soon returned to a completely normal state. Damn, how much is this? Looking at the empty potion bottle, the first thought that came to mind was that it was regretful. A potion made from an awakener of Aquarius. One bottle would easily exceed $1,000. I apologize. Team leader Han Junman bowed down from his hips in a 90-degree angle. No, don't worry about it. He shook his head while smiling. Although he wasn't able to win, he was thoroughly satisfied with the fact that he had driven a six-star awakener to the point of using a stigma. Anyways, is the confirmation finished with this? Of course. Team leader Han Junman nodded his head with a heavy expression. Star of the Weaver Girl, the Apostle of Vega was a ludicrous existence far exceeding his imagination. This isn't something I should be saying after committing such a big mistake, but. Repeatedly slightly lifting and closing his mouth with a hesitant expression, he soon opened his mouth carefully. Could you please spare me some time? Time? Yes. There's a private proposal I would like to offer. A proposal. Should I hear him out first? Ojin nodded his head while lifting himself up. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Coffee or tea, which one would you like? Tap water. It slipped out of his mouth since it was the only thing he drank. Huh? Ah. Coffee, please. As he Ojin for a moment on the chair, team leader Han Junman brought two steaming coffees. What did you want to talk about? First of all, do you have a separate guild you want to join in mind? No, there is none. He shook his head firmly. Even though he took the evaluation test, his goal wasn't to join a guild. Then, I'm thinking of acting as a mercenary. Ah. A short exclamation flowed out of team leader Han Junman's mouth. Mercenary. In other words, awakeners that took requests for matters that were hard to solve with a guild's current members. It was a job with high risk, as you wouldn't be affiliated to any one place but if you had the capabilities, you could bring in high earnings that would find the earnings of most major guilds executives amusing. The simple difference between a freelancer and an office worker. 
It wasn't hard to raise his prices after receiving a good evaluation from the evaluation test together with the title North Star's Apostle. By any chance, do you have any thoughts on joining the association? As expected, a recruitment proposition. I think it'll be tough for me to be affiliated with any one place. The moment you were affiliated with a group, it was inevitable to have your actions be restricted. And currently, Ojin was in a situation where his actions mustn't ever be restricted. Since I don't know what deeds I'll have to commit in order to become a regressor. Putting the cup of coffee he had finished drinking on top of the table, he stood up. Then I'll take my. Your affiliation itself will be within the association, but there will be no need to commute to work as an official employee. Ah, of course, you'll receive a monthly salary even if you don't go to work. Though it is very lacking compared to major guilds. What? Getting paid a monthly salary without going to work? What do you mean by that? It's exactly as I said. Only keep the association's name as your affiliation, it'll be fine if you work freely as a mercenary. If it's okay with you, we could arrange moderate requests and forward them to you. It was a tempting proposal. If he could receive requests through the association, there would be no cases of his remuneration getting chipped off. The conditions are great, but a bait shouldn't be taken right away. Hmm. Frowning deeply, he pretended to be momentarily lost in contemplation. Is there perhaps a condition you want? Two months, no. Could you prevent my information from spreading for about one month? He didn't have any thoughts on living while hiding his strength. However, he couldn't use the title North Star's Apostle right away in a situation where he hadn't had any preparation set. Although the title North Star's Apostle was most definitely a powerful authority, with authority would follow responsibility. I need time. He needed the performance and skill to carry the weight that came with the name North Star. I understand. We'll try to prevent information from spreading on the media and internet with the best of our capabilities. Nice. He could prevent the information from spreading explosively just with that. To sum it up, if I just leave my affiliation with the association, I can prevent my information from spreading, and they'll forward me good requests on their own? And on top of that, he would receive a monthly salary without commuting to work. Holy shit. The conditions made his balls shiver. It was extremely one-sided if you only looked at the conditions, but you could somewhat understand the stance of the association. It's an opportunity to have the star of the Weaver Girls Apostle as a part of their association. There was no opportunity like this for the association that had been getting its authority pushed back by the major guilds. How is it? Gulp. Team leader Han Junman asked while swallowing nervously. His expression was full of unease. Ojin comfortably sat on the sofa and crossed his legs. Even though he had already decided to take up the association's offer in his mind. I want to come off really fucking charismatic. It'd be all for nothing if he came running to their doorstep like an excited puppy. He would eventually degenerate into the association's dog. I can't become a dog. He had lived like a dog for the past eight years. No. He had lived like a dog his entire life. Not anymore. He wouldn't live like a dog anymore. He wouldn't yield, he wouldn't obey anymore. From today onwards, I'm. The owner. Hmm, I think I'll need more time to thin. In addition, we'll grant you a full tax exemption. I'll become the association's dog starting from today. Huh? Growling. Woof. Woof. Chapter 12, Sanctum, 1. One week after officially joining the association. Even though he had constantly been going in and out of dungeons in order to promote to 3-star, he was unable to in the end. Well, trying to reach 3-star in a week in itself is having no conscience. Since it was something he had already predicted, it didn't feel all that unfortunate. Phew. A breath full of nervousness flowed out of his mouth. He confirmed the date on his phone. November 13th. It was the date he had promised to meet with Vega. Sanctum. Star Sanctuary. The world the Celestials resided in. He had heard a lot, but it was the first time he had personally visited it. Ugh, I'm getting butterflies. Although he was sure he had prepared quite thoroughly thinking about directly meeting and talking with Vega made his stomach start to fill with butterflies. Let's get ready Anne. Taking a deep breath in, he calmed his mind. The moment he made a mistake here, his plans would all go to waste. Take off. Slap. Lightly slapping both sides of his cheek, he moved his feet. Murmur murmur. Seoul, Hongdae. The street that used to be filled with youth's passion was now crawling with another type of passion. Oh God, please accept my wishes. Ah, oh great celestial. Bless this humble bug with the power of the constellation. The moment he took a step out of the station that had taken him an hour to arrive at, he was met with the ringing sound of prayers akin to madness. Is this what I saw on the news before? In front of the gate that led to the sanctum were crowds of people that had gathered to try and win over the hearts of the celestials so that they could become awakeners. Though if the celestials saw the state they're in, they'd probably lose any desire to select them. Worn-out clothes and dark grime covered their bodies, a dreadful stench pricked his nose. They hadn't bathed for days on end. 
It was a world where the value of life became an amusing joke. Life was nothing but an endless misery for those without power, wealth, and authority. It is unfortunate, but. That's all. He had neither the obligation nor willingness to care about others' lives. Owung. Passing by the people gathered in front of the gates, he headed towards the gate that led to the sanctum. A humongous gate that seemed to reach over 30 meters. Just by looking at the blazing blue fissures, he could feel the overwhelming pressure pouring out. Did they say that there are hundreds of worlds like these? Well then. He moved his feet towards the gate without hesitation. There wasn't anyone guarding or confirming identities at the entrance. There was no reason to. It would be no different from a rabbit protecting the entrance of a tiger's den. What kind of insane awakener would make a fuss at the sanctuary where hundreds of celestials were gathered? Furthermore, they say that the commandment's restrictions are much weaker inside the sanctum. If you carelessly caused a commotion, it would end in catastrophe. Owung. He passed through the fissure that blazed with blue light. Along with the feeling of floating. Ho. The scene of the cosmos unfolded. Uncountable stars sparkled in the black darkness. The Milky Way seemed to cut the cosmos in half. In a place where the rivers flowed with starlight. This is the sanctum. Ojin unconsciously looked around with his mouth open wide in awe of the overwhelming beauty. He slowly moved his feet along the road made of silver light. Following the humongous silver road, he was met with a crossroad that split into several other routes. Sanctuaries with various shapes and forms could be seen at the end of each road. It looks like a tree made of the galaxy. He himself felt like he was a fruit dangling at the end of a massive tree stem. But how do I find Vega here? How could he find Vega amongst the hundreds when he could see dozens of sanctuaries with just his eyes? As he stood still with narrowed eyes, a passing awakener struck up a conversation with him. Is this your first time in the sanctum? It was a youth with a friendly impression that seemed to be in his mid-late twenties. Ah, yes. That's right. I came here to find my celestial, but I don't know where to go. Ha ha. I wandered around a lot at first too. Come this way. I'll show you where the map is. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. As expected, there was a map. Well, it was a place that was impossible to navigate without one. Over here. Were there this many celestials? There were also many constellations he had never seen in his life. Let's see. Vega is. He searched for Lyra on the map. Even though there were hundreds of constellations, it wasn't hard to find Lyra. The highest place in the sanctum. Since if you considered it a tree, it would be located at the peak. I guess Vega really is an incredible celestial. There was nothing reaching her height except the other north stars, Polaris and Deneb. Have you found it? Yes. I'll need to go way up. Way up. The youth's eyes expanded. A are you perhaps an awakener of the twelve zodiacs? He looked towards Ojin with eyes full of envy. Slightly lowering his head, he could confirm that the constellation of the twelve zodiacs were located right under Lyra. Smirk. He nodded his head with a light smile. I was lucky. Wow, you were really an apostle of the twelve zodiacs. His voice was filled with envy. Twelve zodiacs? Where? Was it because the surroundings heard the youth? He could hear the nearby awakeners starting to murmur while looking towards their direction. Ugh. I'm so jealous. If only I had one of the twelve zodiacs. Steaming gazes mixed with clear jealousy were focused onto Ojin. The gazes from the novice awakeners that had entered the sanctum for the first time were especially focused on him. Observing the gazes focused on him, Ojin turned his body. Well then, I'll take my leave. Thank you for showing me the way. Ah, here is my business card. Please contact me if there's anything you want to ask about. As he was about to take his leave, the youth with the kind impression lent out his business card. The intention of wanting to make a connection with an apostle of the twelve zodiacs could be felt. Ojin took the business card and nodded. The prestige that comes with the constellation's name really is important. Without needing to say anything, the opposing side would bow down and do everything for him themselves. Ha ha. Then I'll contact you later. Yes, sir. The youth replied with a salute like a private that had just entered the army. At this point, it was hard to tell which person was the one who either received or gave help. Well, then. Should we go to meet our goddess? Ojin slowly climbed the road made of rays of silver light. Ugh. When will I be able to climb that road? Wake up. How would we ever be able to go up the road towards the twelve zodiacs? Ojin could slightly hear the murmuring sound of the awakeners. Constellation of the twelve zodiacs, huh? Smirk. Ojin moved his feet. Past the twelve zodiacs. Towards the star of the Weaver Girl's sanctuary. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. You've come. After entering the silver light sanctuary at the peak of the sanctum, the beautiful voice echoed out in his head. Religious symbols and glamorous murals were nowhere to be seen in the empty sanctuary. Inside, a brilliantly shining silver-haired goddess was floating. I wanted to see you, Vega. Smiling brightly, he headed towards her. Ah. Suddenly shaking his shoulders, he stopped his steps. 
I apologize. He dropped his head with a painful expression. Softly biting his lips, he clenched his fists. It seems that your mind is still in disorder. With a bitter expression, Vega slowly floated through the air towards him. The future memories that didn't exist for her. Looking at the appearance of the awakener suffering from the gap between that memory and reality, her heart became one step heavier. This lady isn't the same woman you remember. No. Ojin shook his head with a gentle smile. The Vega within my memories, was beautiful, no different from the present. MMH. You're saying such embarrassing words again. KHMM. Vega cleared her throat and looked away. Even if you flatter me, there's nothing this lady can do for you. He could see the golden eyes that shone like gems slightly waver. Nice start. It seemed to be working out, even though he felt sick enough to his stomach to throw up the calorie bar he had eaten that morning. That's that. She urgently changed the subject and put her hands on top of Ojin's stigma. To be promoted to two-star in only the week I didn't see you. Indeed, you are the heaven-defying star. Since it's something I've done once before, Ojin replied nonchalantly, shrugging his shoulders. Fufu. That makes sense. Vega nodded her head with a satisfied smile. First of all, I want to hear a detailed explanation about the future you know. Won't this lady need to know what happens in order to be of help? Fuck. At last, the time had come. Gulp. Swallowing nervously, he slowly started the story he had prepared. In the near future, an existence known as the Heavenly Demon will appear. Heavenly Demon? Yes. This was the title he had roughly come up with from Vega's words, the one possessing the Black Heaven will end the world. The demon who carries the Black Heaven, the Heavenly Demon. Although it couldn't be more simple, it was said that the simplest and easiest to understand lies would work the best. Not like there's any way I was actually called the Heavenly Demon. Heavenly Demon? It's not like this is a B-grade wuxia story, why would anyone use a title like that? Then are you saying that the Heavenly Demon is the one who possesses the Black Heaven? That's correct. However, fu, taking in one deep breath, as the Heavenly Demon had thoroughly hidden his identity, we were unable to identify his face, name, and not even if he was a human being or not. Are you saying that, even as the regressor, you don't know? Yes. Even though I've tried to find out up to the point of my regression, I failed in the end. Hmm. As if she couldn't understand, Vega tilted her head. If you used the Pledge of Stars to regress to the past, it would mean that you killed the Black Heaven's owner. Are you saying that you were unable to confirm his face even after his death? Huh? What the fuck is the Pledge of Stars? Chapter 13, Sanctum, 2. The fuck? Li Xinhiek succeeded in killing me? Then why did that bitch regress in the first place? No, that's not what's important right now. The longer he hesitated, the more her doubts would grow. I need to go over this as naturally as possible. The moment my spear pierced his heart, he disappeared into a handful of black dust. He replied with a composed voice. As long as there wasn't any way to confirm how the heavenly demon died, there was no choice but to believe his words. The words of a witness in a case without evidence would be no different from the truth. So that's what happened. Vega let out a regretful exclamation and nodded her head. Thankfully, not even the slightest sign of suspicion could be seen. Then, do you have a method of finding the owner of the Black Heaven? Method of finding? He's right in front of your eyes. There isn't one currently. The only method right now is to wait for him to make his move. Hmm. When does that heavenly demon emerge? In three years' time. He made sure he mentioned a time a long ways away so that he had time to come up with countermeasures. Three years was enough time to make a non-existent heavenly demon come to life. We need to grow our strength to the limit before then. Naturally, we'll also try finding traces of the heavenly demon during that time. That seems appropriate. Vega nodded while touching her chin. Should I seal the deal? He was met with a bit of danger in the middle, but the flow then was just as he had planned. Now was the time to activate the hidden card he had prepared. A new gate will appear at Mok Dong in two days. Information of the future he had acquired from Li Xinhiek's memories. With that information revealed, he would become free of any suspicion directed towards him. Since this is information unobtainable by ones that aren't regressors. The moment a prophet was called prophet was not when they first made the prediction but after the prediction was proven to be true. It was the same for regressors. The moment something that only regressors could know was proven to be true was when you would truly be recognized as a regressor. A new fissure. Is there an alternative reason you placed your attention on that place? A star relic lays dormant in that location. He didn't actually know how well the star relic would perform. No, there wasn't even the need to. That's not what's important. The fact that he knew a star relic existed inside a dungeon that would appear in two days. Proving that fact was the core of his plan. Indeed. So you plan on enjoying the privilege unique to regressors. With a satisfied smile, Vega nodded her head. My child. Flap. The beautiful dress consisting of starlight spread out. Slowly floating on thin air, she headed towards him. My child? Do all celestials usually call their apostles their child? 
then do I have to call Vega, Mama? No matter how he thought of it, the title made him lose his mind. Even though you have the fate of the world resting upon your shoulders, please, don't overdo yourself. She stretched out her hands and stroked his cheek. The soft touch tickled his cheek. The touch made his soul feel warm. The conscience that took place deep within his mind momentarily screamed out. Do you really have to deceive this kind-hearted celestial and use her to your advantage? Of course I do. I'll die if I don't. He lightly stamped over his screaming conscience. If he had to ignore his conscience for the price of living, he would do it any day. No, this is beyond simply staying alive. He would thoroughly take advantage of whatever he could, even if that was the celestial, called the North Star. I'm not overdoing myself. He shook his head with a bright smile. Should I sprinkle some MSG as the finisher? Lady Vega, if it's for you. He gently grasped the hands that had been stroking his cheek. I'll do anything. Gaze, looking down. Voice, deep and thick. It's okay if you don't remember. It doesn't matter if you don't reminisce. Not excited, but serene. Like reciting a poem, filled with peace. If you can smile like now, that's enough for me. Finishing with a bitter smile. Kia. Yes, this is it. Though my hands and feet feel like ringing up out of cringe, with the current mood and timing, this should be more than enough to work. Ah? Vega spat out a low exclamation. He could feel her hand slightly tremble in his hand. H how do you, say those words like it's nothing. The cheeks of the goddess flaring up could be seen. Good. It appeared that the finishing touch of MSG he sprinkled was effective. It seems that celestials have emotions no different from humans. That being the case, there's no way my plan wouldn't work. Then I'll take my leave. Bow. He bowed down and turned his body around. That wasn't bad. Even though you couldn't call it perfect, at least his actions wouldn't cause any suspicion. Li Shinhiek's memories played a big part. If he hadn't read Shinhiek's memories through the black heaven, there was no way it would develop this smoothly. If this plan goes well, the rest will be easy. It wasn't easy for celestials to move outside the sanctum while enduring the restrictions, and it wasn't like they could observe your actions in real time either. In other words, even if he accidentally caused a mistake unlike that of a regressor, it wouldn't matter as long as the word didn't get across. If I can't deceive her with this, I'll need to take down my title of scammer. In fact, once you had reached this point, deceiving would be easy even without the experience of a scammer. In a situation where you weren't even being doubted, how could you get caught when the opposing side couldn't even observe? It's like cheating in an exam without a supervisor. No different from selecting easy mode in video GA. Wait. HM? Is there a problem? This lady will go with you. What? Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Huh? What do you mean by with? It means exactly what it sounds like. Vega put her hands on her hips, her golden eyes shined with determination. This lady will personally materialize herself on earth and go with you. No, wait. What the fuck are you talking about? H however, the commandments restriction on earth for the celestials. Fufu, just who do you think this lady is? Pushing her chest out, she continued. Of course, there are several restrictions, and my materialization time is limited, but using this method will make it somewhat feasible. Awung. A radiant silver light poured out of Vega's body. Her body started to shrink together with the light, and soon her size was reduced to a small size of about 30 centimeters. The fuck? With his mouth wide open, he observed her turn into the size of a small doll. Fufu. Giggling, Vega floated through the air towards his shoulders. Here, take this. Vega, who had flown up to his shoulders, put a silver pendant around his neck. This is. If you're wearing this, I'll be able to materialize next to you in this state for a couple of hours per day. T there's no need for you to do this. Please. Don't do this to me, mama. This lady didn't have thoughts on doing this at the start. Even this method won't be able to make this lady entirely free from the commandments restriction. Then, however, didn't you say so? That you would do anything for this lady. Sitting on his shoulder, Vega lent out her hand and gently patted his head. She continued with a smile full of benevolence. How could this lady possibly stay still after hearing those words from her child? What the fuck? It's because of what I said earlier? Don't worry. This lady will carry your weight together with you. The dark and lonely ahead, I will walk it with you. Didn't they say that rumors of MSG being bad for your body were false? They said it was fine. Ah, I'm screwed. Fuck my life. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Hmm, it's been quite a while since I've looked around the earth scenery like this. The way back home. On top of his shoulders, Vega looked around with eyes full of amazement. The fluttering silver hair brushed past his cheek. It tickles. Why have you been so speechless? No, it's nothing. Shaking his head, he put strength into his lifeless legs. It's already spilt milk. Even if he dwelled on it with regret and frustration, nothing would change. Since what's done is done, he just needed to trick her more thoroughly. It wasn't like you couldn't cheat in an exam with a supervisor present. Fuh. 
Exhaling a large breath, he headed towards his house. Approaching the familiar neighborhood, a gloomy atmosphere took place. Is this where you live? Yes. You live in quite a shabby area. I don't have money, he replied nonchalantly. Poverty was a misfortune, and it wasn't something to be embarrassed about. Hmm. Although this lady wants to help out, this lady is in no possession of what is of value to humans. Ha ha. It's all right. He could make money since he was an awakener now anyways. And well, I could move at any time if I put my mind to it. Ojin had saved up for the past eight years. It was just that there was simply something more important than where he lived. Creek. Together with the sound of the rusty door. You returned. Did you have a good meeting with that Vega or whatever? Once again, Haun, who had been hovering around the door with crutches, greeted him. Why were you so late? Wait, I have something to tell you. Eh? What is it? That is. Before he explained his story, Vega glanced at Haun from head to toe and opened her mouth. Are you the youth that's living with this lady's child? Kaiya. Fuck. Bobang. He quickly caught Haun, who had fallen backwards in shock. W what? Whose voice was that? She looked around in a hurry. Hmm. Vega, who was looking at her, soon straightened her hips and continued speaking with her arms crossed. This lady's name is Vega. The Celestial of Lyra. See, Celestial? Haun reached out her hands and pulled down on the tip of Ojin's clothes. W what's going on? WWY is a Celestial here? I'll explain. Hurry. I think I'm going to lose my mind. Setting down Haun on the creaking bed, he opened his mouth. So, Ojin briefly explained the things that had occurred. Naturally, he had discussed the plan to hide his identity as a regressor with Vega in advance. I mean, where on earth do you find an awakener that's accompanied by their celestial? Just because it hasn't been seen doesn't mean it cannot be done, correct? Haun was left speechless in exasperation. By the way, Vega's eyes narrowed. Her sight headed towards Haun's eyes and right leg. So you were a disabled child. How did th? Lady Vega. Ojin cut her off in a low voice. Let's not talk about that, he said with a smile. As Vega looked back at Ojin, she slowly opened her mouth. So you, can also make an expression like that. Huh? This lady apologizes for her discourteous behavior. Bow. Vega slightly bowed her head towards Haun. And no. Moreover. V Veg, Lady Vega, weren't celestials unable to calm reside on earth due to the commandment thingy? Isn't that so, the case, Lady Vega? Your words are all over the place. If it's uncomfortable, it's okay to talk casually. Just why did you come to earth, you bitch? I think that's a little too comfortable. Chapter 14, Black Star's Relic, 1. Oh ho! An exclamation full of excitement. The beautiful golden eyes that looked like melted gold sparkled. Delicious. It truly is an astonishing flavor. Munch munch. The silver-haired goddess that had shrunk to around 30 centimeters let out an exclamation while nibbling on a hamburger the size of her torso. It looked as if a hamster was nibbling on a chestnut. Celestials were able to eat as well? Haun asked as a forced chuckle flowed out of her mouth. Although she could see it, the sound was more than enough for her to get a grasp on the situation. Though there are no problems even if we don't eat, that doesn't mean we're unable to eat. Wipe. Vega ripped off a piece of tissue and cleaned her mouth. Even though her simple motion of wiping the mouth was noble and elegant, thoughts of cute preceded over pretty when you looked at her size. Is this your first time eating a burger? This is this lady's first time trying human food. Dazzle. Sprinkling some strange silver dust while floating through the air, Vega sat on top of Ojin's shoulder. It is also this lady's first time taking in an apostle like this. She stretched out her tiny hands and pulled down on his earlobes. It tickles. There's one thing I just can't get my head around, Haun said while furrowing her brows. Why Ojin, out of all people? There's nothing unique about him. North Star's apostle. No matter how much you thought of it, it was a title that didn't suit him. What's unique? There is no existence more unique than this child in the entire world. Eh? What do you mean by that? Fufu. That is something you cannot know. With crossed arms, Vega straightened her back. There will come a time you will know. No, when the entire world will know. She continued with a voice full of confidence. That this child will become an existence greater than any other. What? Haun's mouth opened wide, she thought the statement was absurd. Just what did Ojin do for a North Star Celestial to say such things? Lady Vega. Fufu. It seems that this lady has chattered on for too long. I apologize. Vega shrugged while laughing gracefully. Also, the sparkling golden eyes headed towards Haun. Aren't you also a unique one? What are you talking about? Haun and Ojin both tilted their heads at what they thought was an outrageous statement. They gazed at Vega with eyes full of doubt. Hmm. Are you not already aware? What are you referring to? Never mind. It is, something that has no meaning right now. This lady seems to have misspoken. Gazing at Haun's eyes that had lost their light, Vega let out a short sigh. 
If only this lady's powers could be of help. Vega shook her head in regret. Ha, huh, help with what? I'm living just fine without it, so mind your own business. Fufu. At least that confident attitude of yours is to this lady's liking. Stretching her body, Vega turned around. Anyways, this lady should now take her rest. Even in this state, staying materialized this long will worsen the restriction. Then will you only be able to move for around 3 hours per day? Although it's possible to stay longer if I overdo myself, there's currently no reason to, is there? Well, that's true. There wasn't anything Vega could do even if she stayed awake anyways. Well then my child, let's see each other tomorrow. Vega floated up to him and gently patted his head. Oh wang. Vega's entire body turned into silver dust and got sucked into the pendant. Silence came down upon the room. Bleakness lingered in the room like a storm had swept past. Ha. Haun exhaled a deep breath. Just how did this happen? I didn't know it would become like this either. He had explained that Vega was personally following him around in a materialized state because he was her one and only apostle. As constellations following around their apostles in a materialized state was unheard of, Haun being confused was a given. Hey, Guan Ojin. Sup? Sit here. Tap tap. She spoke in a commanding tone, tapping the place next to her on the bed. Why all of a sudden? Shut up and take a seat. After he sat down and tilted his head in confusion, Haun immediately put her head on his thighs. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. What are you doing? Just sit still. What the? Oh ho. Won't you listen to my words? Haun, who had laid down on his thighs, curled up like a prawn and gently closed her eyes. Awkwardly stretching out her hands, she placed them on top of Ojin's thigh. Warmth spread to her hands. She smiled bashfully from the familiar warmth she had felt for her entire life. Hee <laughs> hee. Laying down on our little Ojin is indeed the best. You like it too, don't you, you bastard? It's really fucking heavy. What did you say? I'm just kidding. Your head feels real fucking light, like it's completely empty. Huh? I feel even more like shit now. Haun squinted and pinched his thigh. Ouch. H.M. That's right. This is the little Ojin I know. Haun exploded out in laughter for an unknown reason. I'm going to sleep now. Wait, how will I sleep if you sleep there? Age by two more years if you have any complaints. This is unfair. Ehe. <laughs> Jiggling her shoulders, Haun snuggled more towards his body. Not much later, only the soft sound of breathing resonated through the room. H. -E. I guess I won't be sleeping comfortably tonight. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Two days later, Ojin performed a final checkup before he headed to Mokdong. Two sets of flares and smoke screens, emergency rations, rope, and, lastly, three mid-grade potions. Not to mention everything else, he had invested quite a lot of money into buying the mid-grade potions, but it couldn't be helped. Because I don't know what rank the monsters that will appear from the new dungeon will be. Forcefully saving money here could end up in an unnecessary disaster. Fuck. But it really is disgustingly expensive. His body trembled while grasping the mid-grade potions which could go for a couple grand each. Even if you called it a future investment, just thinking about the ridiculous price made his gastric fluids reflux. Crazy pharmacist bastards. Roughly shoving in some of the stigma's mana on top of starstone powder is all it takes, so why is it so fucking expensive? I'll make sure to get the stigma of Aquarius someday. If I can get a hold of the stigma of Aquarius, just making potions and selling them will earn me big money. Are your preparations complete? Yes. After putting on the hefty backpack, Ojin opened the door. The fresh dawn wind tickled the tip of his nose. Star Relic. Although the ability and rank of Star Relics varied, they all shared one thing in common. That they're really fucking expensive. Just one one-star relic would go for over $10,000. A three-star relic would be over $100,000, and it would be over $1 million starting from five-star relics. If it's a six-star, minimum of millions, maximum, up to $10 million. The guilds didn't search for star relics with fire in their eyes for no reason. He 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 he. Excitedly shaking his shoulders, Ojin licked his lips. His footsteps towards the station were light. One hour later, Ojin, who had taken the first ride and arrived at Mok Dong, headed towards a tall building nearby. I'm awake in Erguan Ojin from the association. Sorry for the inconvenience in this early morning, but could you open the rooftop door for me? Ah, yes. But is there perhaps a problem? There is a matter that needs to be investigated in this building. H.M. I understand. The security guard that had first looked at him with vigilance opened the rooftop door for him with no special suspicion after hearing that he was from the association. Swoosh. Coming out onto the rooftop, the entire scene of Mok Dong could be seen as the cool breeze brushed past his cheek. Belonging to the association is indeed great on occasions like these. Leaning on the rooftop railing, Ojin took a bite out of the calorie bar he had brought. Are you waiting for the fissure to open from here? Yes. 
since even though I know it'll open today, I'm not entirely sure of the location it'll appear at. It wasn't like a regressor had to know everything about the future, being unaware of this much didn't matter. Hmm. Well then, this lady should release her materialization and head inside. I'll tell you when the gate opens. All right. Vega once again turned into silver dust and headed inside the necklace. Fu. Sighing deeply, he shook his head. As expected, sticking together makes a lot of things uncomfortable. Having to pay attention to every single word and sentence was very cumbersome. However, that didn't mean that it was purely negative. I can borrow her strength in emergency situations. It was one of the reasons he could challenge a newly formed dungeon where one couldn't predict how powerful of a monster would appear. Even if a variable appears, receiving her blessing and running away should be possible. Now, come out already. He muttered while looking down the railing. Around three hours later. A wung. Blue rays of light soaring up could be seen from far away. It's here. The sign of a new gate appeared. After confirming the location of the blue rays, Ojin went down the building in a rush. Kaiya. G gate. It's a gate ee -e -e. H hurry. Contact the association. The association's useless nowadays. Guilds. Contact the guilds. Civilians could be seen running away while screaming as he approached the location where the blue rays shot up. What a mess. Eight years ago. It felt like he had returned to when Gates first appeared on Earth. At that time, he was also one of those people running away with an expression of horror, but. Now it's different. Ojin continued his footsteps with a smirk. Owung. He threw his body into the newly formed gate. A feeling of nauseousness brushed past his body while his vision was distorted. F.U.A. As his distorted vision returned to normal, the dungeon unfolded in front of his eyes. A jaw-dropping spacious cave. Stalactites spiked up like the canines of wild beasts, gray streams of water flowed down their sides. Although the interior was dark, you could still somewhat distinguish the surroundings with the orange light that seeped out from an unknown place. Lady Vega, we have arrived. Tapping on the silver necklace, a silver-haired goddess appeared together with rays of silver light. Ho oh, oh. So this is the inside of the fissure you talked about. Vega floated around the surroundings in interest. Although she looked around with sparkling eyes, she didn't seem all that surprised by the fact that a gate really opened as he had said. Does that mean she believed me that much? It appeared that she believed a gate opening on that day was natural, as it was the words from who she believed to be a regressor. I'm not sure if I should be happy about this or not. Of course, it was good that she was already completely trusting of him, but simultaneously, it felt hollow, since his plans of getting rid of all suspicious became meaningless. Well, whatever. Good is good. You shouldn't complain that plan A worked when you had prepared plan B as well. That doesn't mean I can let my guard down. By nature, the thing called trust was hard to build but easy to lose. No matter how much she believed him to be a regressor, he was sure that the trust would break down if suspicion continued to stack up. Then let's head a little deeper inside. All right. Ojin moved deeper into the cave before the other awakeners could catch up. As he was following the subtle orange light. Glup. The echoing sound of sticky mucus entered his ears. That's. Ojin's face stiffened after he turned his head towards the sounds. Chapter 15, Black Star's Relic. Swoosh. A black-tinted figure shot towards him at high speed. HMPF. Taking in a short breath, he took a step back. Holding out the spear, he got a better look at the figure that had been fired from between the stalactites. A tentacle? A black tentacle with sticky mucus trickling down. At the base of the tentacle, a monster similar to that of a slime could be seen. It had a sticky body similar to clumped up tar and wiggled while scattering out tentacles. What's that? It was a monster with an appearance he had never seen before. What an unpleasant organism. Though it doesn't look all that strong. Even though it looked horrific, it didn't seem that dangerous when he observed its movements. Bzz, bzzzzz. The blue lightning blazed as his stigma shone. Easily avoiding the flood of tentacles, he jabbed out his spear towards the black slime. Bang. Fuck. Mucus spread across in all directions as the black slime exploded. Although he backed up in a hurry, a little bit of mucus ended up on his collar. Sizzle ee ee. Like hydrochloric acid had been poured, a pungent smoke arose as the mucus melted away. This one's trickier dead than alive. In any case, it was a monster that wasn't hard to eliminate with a little bit of caution. Gurg, gurgle. So it isn't just one. Was it because they heard the sound? He could see the black slimes wiggling towards him from all directions. Twirling his spear around, Ojin lowered his stance. If they're enemies that explode on death. Keeping as much distance as possible was the most important factor. Ojin started to reduce the number of black slimes one by one by shooting lightning at them from a close distance. Should I use this opportunity to test that? Ojin's eyes shone as he dodged the black tentacles in a Z-shaped pattern. An attack that could be used at a distance and had a wide area of effect. Blue lightning. 
He wanted to use the skill which he could previously only use with Vega's blessing with his own personal strength. Ha, fu, long and steady breaths. Bending his back, he pulled back the spear grasped in his right hand the farthest he could. A wung, the stigma blazed in blue light. He directed the mana that was overflowing around his body into the stigma. What? As Vega was observing the fight, her eyes opened wide. Bzz, bzz, bzz. The blue lightning ferociously twisted across the surface of his body. Like an oil fire, the stigma's mana burned at a frightening speed. He didn't pay it any mind. I have overflowing mana, after all. I don't need efficiency. I just need to cover my lack of proficiency with overwhelming amounts of mana. Bang! Grounding his feet, he launched the spear with all of his strength, releasing the pent-up lightning at the tip of the spear all at once. Crackly! The blue lightning swept away everything in a wide cone in front of it. Bang! 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 Fragments of slime exploded everywhere. Huff! Huff! Ramming the spear into the ground, he calmed his trembling legs. It worked. It was sloppy and closer to a half-forced method, but he succeeded in using a skill that he could previously only use in a blessed state. Wow. It's hard to believe, even after seeing it. After observing Ojin's fight, Vega let out an exclamation. Even though this lady knew you would become proficient quickly, to think it was to this extent. She herself knew best just how hard it was to handle the stigma of Lyra. The reason she couldn't make an apostle in the first place was because there was no human capable of handling the stigma of Lyra. But in just a couple of days, he had manifested a skill that was only possible to use with a blessing Vega had endured the restrictions to grant. Even if one had experienced it before, it was still a speed that was hard to believe. Well, it was half-forced. Hmm. Well, it did seem that there were many parts that could be polished. Though he had succeeded in manifesting the blue lightning, the level of completeness was terrible. You could say that he had succeeded in carrying something that normally needed 10 energy by forcefully using 100. Putting inefficiency aside, it couldn't even match up to its original strength. However, being able to use the blue lightning is more than enough right now. Even amongst the skills of the stigma of Lyra, blue lightning was a skill around mid-level difficulty. It was a difficult skill for a regressor, let alone for him who was no different from having just awakened. Haha. <laughs> I'm glad you put it that way. This lady will show you her other skills as well at a later date. All right, now that I think of it, you probably know all of it already. No, that's incorrect. Ojin shook his head. There are a couple of sections of memories that became blurry during my regression, the stigma of Lyra's skills is one of them. Blurry? I'm not sure. It's like a film that was cut off midway, I can't recall the memories from that section clearly. Although he didn't want to use this clumsy excuse, she could suddenly ask me to use a skill I'm not aware of. That wasn't a problem that could be solved by talking. Hmm. How strange, there shouldn't be any memory loss from a regression caused by the Pledge of Stars. Vega gazed towards Ojin with doubt. Even while receiving the gaze of doubt, Ojin continued naturally with not an ounce of panic. I believe it to be a kind of restriction. What kind of restriction are you talking about? In the case of Celestials, don't they receive the commandments restriction? I believe it holds a similar principle and took partial involvement in restraining my transcendental power. If a stranger heard of this, they would furrow their brows while asking what kind of nonsense he was talking about, but the story was different in her case, as she had her transcendental powers restricted in actuality. Certainly. It does sound plausible. Softly touching her lips, Vega nodded her head. Well, it's not like I lost anything important, so you don't have to worry about it. Anything important. Well, for example, something like the memories of you, Lady Vega. Smiling brightly, he looked towards her. Eh. Vega's body flinched. Why you are saying those embarrassing words again? The appearance of the blushing goddess was cute. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. See cough. Anyways. After facing away, Vega floated towards the location of the black slime corpses. Her eyes narrowed as she observed the stalactites covered in sticky mucus. H.M. This lady feels a somewhat unpleasant aura. An unpleasant aura? It's difficult for this lady to express it precisely. It's just a feeling. Ojin narrowed his eyes and cautiously headed towards the shredded black slime corpses. If Vega herself said that she felt an uneasy energy, it was worth checking out. H.M.? That's. Rummaging through the shredded black slimes, Ojin's brows furrowed. Black gems the size of a fingernail could be seen amongst the corpses. A mutant's? Starstone? It was most definitely a mutant starstone, the same as he had discovered weeks ago. Not one, but several at that. Huh? A mutant appeared again? They shouldn't be able to be found so commonly. A mutant starstone wasn't expensive for no reason, their value was several times or even up to several dozens of times more than regular starstones since their numbers were so few in comparison. Lady Vega, is there anything you know about this black starstone? 
This lady doesn't know either. Vega shook her head. Have your memories about the Black Star Stone disappeared as well? Yes. I have no ID. Oops. There are things I have assumptions about, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Rather than saying that he knew nothing, saying that he had some grasp on the situation would create more leeway. Since a regressor not knowing anything would make no sense. Anyways, not even Vega knew why there was a sudden increase in the number of mutant monsters. Should I start by heading deeper inside? Ojin shook the black mucus off of the spear's blade and moved deeper into the cave. However, the deeper he moved into the cave, the more he felt as if he was just going around in circles. This can't be helped. Although he didn't want to use it in front of Vega if possible, there was no other method. Ojin activated the stigma of the hunting dogs. Through his sensitive sense of smell, uncountable different kinds of odors flooded in. Ugh! What's wrong? It's nothing. Shaking his head, he focused his mind. The smell of the black slimes from before. He moved towards the trace of the sticky, unpleasant smell. Passing through the complex maze-like cave, a wide-open cavern appeared. Phew. It seemed like he had come to the right place. This place. Vega narrowed her eyes and observed the wide-open cavern. The unpleasant aura from before has gotten thicker here. The star relic should be around here. Ojin looked around while walking into the cavern. Now, I wonder where it is. His heartbeat escalated as if he were a child that had arrived at a treasure map's designation. And then, that's. A massive stone statue could be seen at the end of the cavern. The stone statue had its hands together in a praying motion, something could be seen shining in the center of its forehead. A black drinking glass radiating an ominous dark aura. The black glass, slightly larger than a fist, was embedded on the middle of its forehead. Found it. There was a bit of a difference from the star relics he had commonly heard about, but in any case, it was still a star relic that contained a mysterious power. Wow. This is insane. Just how much is that thing worth? Looking at the star relic he had only heard about with his own eyes, his body trembled. Star relic. A real star relic. Goosebumps. An electrifying thrill stretched out the wrinkles on his balls. His heart felt like it was going to pop out of his mouth. I'll use it if the ability is useful, and if it's iffy, I just need to sell it. Whatever the case, it was good news. He 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 he. God damn it. My laughter won't stop. Is that the star relic? Yes. Ojin walked towards the stone statue with a bright smile. Gurg, gurgle. These unpleasant things have come once again. Furrowing her brows, Vega floated through the air and sat down on Ojin's shoulder. He he. This is something I already knew about. There's no need to worry. Grasping the spear, he walked towards the group of black slimes. When he had tracked the smell, he had already predicted that there would be a group of slimes. Are they like some sort of guardians that protects the star relic? To have these weaklings as guardians. He couldn't help but laugh. I should hurry up and wipe them out. He smirked while walking towards the black slimes pouring out of every direction. Stick, gurg, gurgle. The black slimes that gathered in the cavern numbered around 50. Although it was a frightening number, he didn't think he would be incapable of facing them. Each slime was weaker than an ant horn. I just need to be careful of the explosion. It wasn't all that hard. Gurk, gurkle, gurkly. Hmm? Why aren't these fuckers charging in? Huh? The black slimes that were heading towards Ojin stopped in their tracks. Around 50 black slimes were gathered at the center of the cavern. The slimes stretched out their tentacles and began rubbing and entangling each other. Stick. The slimes' bodies popped with an unpleasant sound and combined into one. Wait. Ojin's expression stiffened. An ominous feeling passed by his head. And then. Gurgly. Gurk. Stick. Gurk. Gurkly. The black slimes that numbered dozens. Combined into one. Hey. 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 Wait a second. The slimes combined into the form of a giant as tall as five meters. The monster consisting of black mucus smacked its chest. Bang. Bang. Kra-a-a-a-a. A frightening roar echoed through the entire cavern. Holy shit. What is that? Why does it look so fucking strong? Fufu. Indeed, so you knew this would happen. Nope. No, I didn't. As you have said, this lady shall observe without worry. What should I do? Ha ha. Trust in me, Lady Vega. I think I'm fucked. Chapter 16, Black Star's Relic. Bang. Bang. A bang echoed throughout the cave every time the black mucus giant took a step. The dozens of black tentacles gushing out of the giant's back wriggled menacingly. Ojin stared at the giant with shaking eyes. What's this all of a sudden? Of all time for this to happen, of course it just had to happen after he had boasted in excitement when he saw the star relic. How do I run now? He tilted his head and looked at Vega. She was comfortably floating in midair with her arms crossed. Her golden eyes sparkled in anticipation, looking forward to what kind of new method he would use to face the monster. What am I supposed to do with that? Biting his lips, he faced the mucus giant once again. Around five meters tall. 
The body composed of mucus swelled up like a bodybuilder that had taken lethal doses of steroids. It looked somewhat like the monster he saw on the Venom poster while walking down the street. You can tell it's damn strong with a glance. I think I'll get launched back to the entrance of this cave with one hit. Fu. Forcefully moving his fear-halted body, he grasped his spear. He was in a situation where he couldn't flee, as he had already spilled the beans. If I can't run, I can only fight to the death, it's not like I have no chance of winning. Although it looks like a monster from Nordic mythology, it probably isn't that strong. The slimes were originally weaklings anyway, there's no way they would be reborn as an invincible monster like Exodia just because some arms and legs are attached to the body. Let's give it a shot. I only need to flee when it feels impossible. K-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
forget about the star relic, he wanted to lie face down on the spot and go to sleep. But still, he succeeded in beating a monster he couldn't possibly imagine being. It's dangerous. Huh? Swoosh. Simultaneously with Vega's shout, he could hear the sound of something ripping through the air. Kook. He quickly twisted his body and braced his arms towards the direction the sound was coming from. Bang! Kook. As a heavy impact like that of a battering ram shook his body, he was knocked close to 10 m into the air. Ba-bang! Kook! Kook! Cough! Cough! Oh Ojin! Are you alright? Vega approached him with a pale expression. Ojin crawled on the floor, clutching both of his arms that radiated with intense pain. The fuck, he slightly turned his neck to confirm the being that had slammed him. A headless monster. He could see the headless mucus giant was standing just fine. Holy shit. It didn't die? Damn it. A complete calculative error. My arms are fortunately not broken. You could say it was thanks to the stigma of Lyra. Even though the impact was enough to one-shot your average two-star awakener, not even his bones were broken. However, he took a look at his body with cold eyes. On top of being weaponless, his legs were shaking and the intense pain still lingered in his arms. This is the worst. There wasn't any other method now. Vega, he called out to the goddess while forgetting to address her with honorifics. Grant me a blessing. Okay. As if she had been waiting all along, Vega raised her hand. Radiant silver light poured out. Bzz. Oot. Vega's expression distorted as the commandment's restriction took effect. As the silver sheen of silver light settled in his body. Vega bestows upon you the star's blessing. Stigma of Lyra's proficiency temporarily increases. Powerful strength started to boil up his body. Crackly. A brilliantly blazing blue lightning. Was it because he had grown a lot compared to when he had first received the blessing? He felt powerful, incomparable to how he had felt before. Although the burden on Vega increases, it couldn't be helped. Without the blessing, there was no other method to take out the mucus giant. Fu, he pulled himself together with a deep breath. Lowering his back with his two hands on the ground, he stretched his legs all the way back. Crack. Crackle. Blue lightning started to gather by his feet focusing the power overflowing over his body into his legs. Bang! He kicked his feet. K.R. Ruck. Guck. He shot like an arrow towards the giant that couldn't even make a proper sound without his head. Swoosh! The bundle of black tentacles rained down from all directions. No sweat. It wasn't even a threat for him who had been blessed. H.M.P.F. Crackly. As he lightly swung his fist, blue lightning swept forward in a fan shape. Blue lightning erupted from every punch. Fiercely swinging his clenched fists, he headed towards the mucus giant. Ha, ha. His breathing started to become rough. Every time the blue lightning erupted from his fists, he could feel the stigma's mana burning out. It doesn't matter, I have overwhelming amounts of mana anyway. No. The simple expression overwhelming amounts of mana wasn't fit. What is this? He couldn't understand it at all, but. The more he used the stigma's mana, the more his amount of mana increased. Kook. Like a sky filled with black clouds pouring down rain. The torrent of mana that filled up his tank faster than he could use it shook his body. He felt like his body was about to explode from the expanding mana, like an overfilled balloon. Wawaya! Crack! Crack! crackle ee ee Roaring out like a beast, he continuously swung his fists without rest. Tens, hundreds of blue lightnings swept across the mucus giant's body. You could no longer find a trace of the giant's corpse that had turned into ash. Intending to disintegrate even that ash, he continued to send torrents of blue lightning. A little more. His head was scorching hot. As if a black cloud was covering his eyes, his sight slightly darkened. A little more. A burning exhalation. An electrifying thrill. If he continued a little more, he felt like he could grasp onto something. Stop. Together with the clear echoing sound of the goddess's voice, the slightly darkened sight cleared up. It has already died. Ha, ha. Taking in rough breaths, he flopped himself onto the ground. What was that? The burning feeling of exaltation. An unknown sensation together with the explosively expanding mana. Just when he focused his mind in order to recall the sensation that had disappeared without a trace. Oh wung. Kook. The stigma engraved on his left chest burned up with bright lights. Is this, P perhaps? Vega's two eyes opened wide in disbelief. Ah. Ugh. Ah. Crack. Crackle. As the blue lightning sparked, the flick engraved stigma increased by one. Now, there were a total of three flicks engraved on his stigma. Ring. Stigma of Lyra has been promoted to 3-star. Thunder and Lightning LV2 has increased to Thunder and Lightning LV3. Blue Lightning LV1 has increased to Blue Lightning LV2. The clear sound of bells faintly echoed in his ears. T to be able to reach 3-star in under a month. Vega stuttered in astonishment. It was a stigma not from some average celestial but from a North Star. 
The speed of growth was unbelievable, even for a heaven-defying star. It was no different from racing on a motorcycle alone while everybody else ran in a marathon. Just what? She looked down towards Ojin, who was lying on the ground with a dumbstruck expression. Hmm. His figure was dead still. My child? Reaching out her hand, she poked Ojin's cheek. However, his firmly shut eyes wouldn't open. W wake up. The goddess's dejected voice echoed throughout the spacious cavern, alone. Chapter 17, Black Star's Relic, 4. A soft sensation covered his lips. Gulp. The sweet liquid riding on his tongue went past his throat. Ugh. While feeling a cozy sensation from the back of his head, Ojin slowly opened his eyes. Are you awake? Lady Vega? What he saw the moment he opened his eyes was a radiant silver-haired goddess possessing golden eyes. She wasn't shrunk down to 30 centimeters but instead had the appearance of an adult woman as she had when he first met her. What's going on? Ojin opened his eyes and looked around in order to comprehend the situation. He came to the conclusion that he was using Vega's thighs as a headrest. She was gently patting on his hair as if she were taking care of a child who had collapsed from exhaustion. Holy shit. Ojin quickly sat up. Lie down a little longer. Huh? However. Oh ho. Didn't this lady say to stay laying down? Vega said with a serious voice. Following the soft touch on his forehead, he laid his head back onto her thighs. Russell. The texture of the dress tickled him. Just what happened? It seems you have used too much strength. You collapsed as soon as the combat ended. Was that why Vega was taking care of him personally? To be able to use a celestial's thighs as a headrest. He was probably the first awakener to experience such a mind-boggling situation. You. Gently placing her hand on Ojin's forehead, she continued. Have quite the extreme personality, unlike how you look. She spoke in a reproachful way. Take more care of your body. Even if you're a regressor, aren't you still a human? Although the biggest reason he had done such a reckless act was because of her, he couldn't say it out loud. Let's obediently accept it. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. Hmm. As if Vega didn't approve of something, she gently looked down towards him. Is there perhaps a problem? No. Shaking her head, she tightly closed her lips like there was something she was unsatisfied about. What is it? Could it be that she was suspecting him because he had told her not to worry in a confident manner only to proceed in barely winning with the help of the blessing? Fuck. What else could I do? He could think of no other method to defeat the mucus giant than with the blessing. Cough. Vega, who was momentarily lost in thought, cleared her throat and avoided his gaze. The thing is, didn't you talk down to this lady back then? Ah. He had talked down to Vega in the heat of the moment after being disoriented by the giant's hit. I apologize. The situation was too chaotic and all. Thankfully, it seemed like she hadn't cared about him getting beaten up by the mucus giant. This lady is not trying to reprimand you. In fact, haven't you spoken to this lady without honorifics a couple of times already? As she had said, in order to act like there was some kind of circumstance behind him, he had used casual speech a couple of times toward Vega. It's okay. Yes? If you wish to do so, you may speak to this lady casually. What's she talking about? I think that's a bit. Is there a problem? No, it's nothing like that. Weren't you in an, I intimate relationship with this lady in your past life anyways? Nope. No, we weren't. Or, taking the gentle hand that had been patting his head, Vega pinched his cheek. Quite a lot of force was behind it. Are you saying that even though you could speak casually to this lady back then, you cannot speak that way to this lady now? A somewhat fuming voice. Why is she like this all of a sudden? Although he felt bewildered, he couldn't refuse at this point. Okay. I'll speak comfortably. Fufu. Go ahead and do so. She chuckled in a giddy fashion as if she was satisfied. Bzz. Oot. Just then, as a sudden spark shot out, Vega furrowed her brows. It seems that, the restriction is starting in earnest. It was only natural as she had not only granted a blessing but also fully materialized her body. You alright? Hmm, it'll take quite a long time to recover this time. How long? At best, two weeks. If it takes a while, about a month. Compared to when she had granted him the blessing before, the time had doubled. It meant that she had overused her power that much more this time. Sorry. This isn't something you should be sorry about. Vega chuckled gently. The monster you faced was at least rated 5 star, and one that's very distinct compared to normal monsters at that. Most certainly. It was a monster that felt somewhat different compared to normal monsters. Even with this lady's help, if it wasn't backed up by your skills, you wouldn't have been able to come out on top. Thanks for putting it that way. He was worried about receiving suspicion after he had gotten beat up after boasting like a know-it-all, but judging from her reaction, instead of suspicion, it seemed like a deeper trust had formed. Then should I start to, hmm? Drop. When he sat back up, the empty glass bottles rolling around the floor caught his attention. They were the three mid-grade potions he had prepared in case of emergencies. 
This lady has personally used them for you so that you could wake up quickly. Vega proudly crossed her arms and straightened her shoulders. HMF. Looking at the appearance of her taking rough breaths from her nose, it seemed like she was expecting a compliment. Oh oh. I I see. Tightly clenching his fist, Ojin forced a smile. Tremble. His clenched fist shook. Three bottles. Three bottles. Why did you use three bottles at once? Bubble. Rage boiled up. He wanted to rip out his hair and throw a fit on the spot. How, how much is all that? Fuck. Thinking about the potions that each were worth thousands of dollars, tears started to drip down on their own. Fufu. So you're moved to the point of tears. Please. Shut up. Ha, ha ha. Yeah. T thinks. Exercising his superhuman endurance, his lips tilted upwards. Deep down, he wanted to grab her by the collar and shake her around, but he couldn't do such an insane act against the celestial that supported him. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. By the way, Ojin's eyes headed to the empty potion bottles. One question suddenly popped up in his head. How did you feed me? As Vega's eyes opened wide, her startled body shook. She turned her head away. D don't pay it any attention, she said in a muttering voice. Huh? Don't pay attention to what? T this lady will now take her leave. Vega turned her body away in an escaping manner. Her body burst into radiant silver rays and moved into the necklace. What was that? Although he looked towards the necklace with a puzzled expression, there was no reply. Super awkward silence. A gloomy atmosphere settled down in the lonely cavern. Ha. Huh. Ojin scratched his head while moving his body. There was something left that was more important than how Vega had fed him. Ha. He he he. Laughter naturally flowed out. Saliva started to form all around his mouth as he looked at the black drinking glass stuck on the middle of the stone statue's forehead. Now, should we take a look at the loot? Jumping lightly onto the statue's head, Ojin grasped onto the black glass with a chuckle. Clunk. The black drinking glass popped out of the forehead with a dull clinking sound. What ability will this have? Ojin touched the black glass with shining eyes. He could feel a somewhat sticky and ominous aura from the black light that was subtly leaking out. Although he felt unpleasant from the uneasy aura. Let's start by taking it out of here for now. He couldn't leave behind the star relic he had worked so hard for. There wasn't a way to know the star relic's ability right away but you could easily commission a professional appraiser and determine the ability and rating. Since I worked so hard to earn it, I hope it's rated above 3 star. Just a 3 star would be worth around 100-200k dollars. If it was a 4 star, you could aim for over 500,000 dollars. Damn. Just thinking about it was electrifying. Rum, rumble. Huh? Just then, a somewhat strange sensation spread across his body. The unknown feeling of exaltation he had felt before. A hot sensation heated up his body like he had drunk a highly alcoholic beverage. What's this? A deep thirst burned his throat. Ojin followed his instincts and grasped the black drinking glass with both hands. And then, a message appeared before his eyes. Black star's power. What's that? Rumbly. Before he could continue his doubt, a black cloud flowing out of his fingertips covered the star relic. Kook. Mana flowed in through the black cloud. Different from normal mana, a sticky and unpleasant mana seeped into his body. The Black Star's power has successfully been absorbed. The Black Heaven's trait is evolving. The trait Black Curtain will now not only hide the Black Heaven's presence, but all presences. This effect can be controlled with the user's will. A part of the requirements for the Black Heaven's third awakening has been accomplished. Rumble. Like the black clouds covering the star relic had finished a good meal, they wriggled and sunk back into his body. Ha. Huh. Ojin looked down onto the black glass in his hands with a hollow expression. What's this? Are you telling me the Black Heaven also had the ability to absorb the power in star relics? Anyways, is this really a star relic? He had never heard of something called the Black Star's power from a star relic before. Is this perhaps the unpleasant aura Vega was talking about before? It was nothing but a simple theory for now, but the thought that this star relic was different from others emerged. Oh, wait. Whether the star relic was different from others or not. Hadn't the Black Heaven gobbled up the power inside of it anyway? I is it possible that this became trash? Although he urgently flipped around the black drinking glass in his hands, the sticky and unpleasant aura he had sensed at first seemed to have vanished. No. What is this? My my star relic. Where did my star relic go? Rage boiled up. Ah, this can't be. No oh. It was a star relic he had not even determined the star ranking or ability of. He threw a fit from the hollow feeling of shredding an unscratched lottery ticket. Phew yuck. The cry echoed throughout the entire cavern. Shoving his fist up his mouth, Ojin cried out with tears. Urk, uck, fuck, fuck, the star relic I worked so hard for, son of a, thinking about it objectively, you could never say he was at a loss, 
Even though it was somewhat unpleasant, he had absorbed the mana inside the star relic and achieved a part of the requirement for the Black Heaven's third awakening. Moreover, the useful trait he was using, Black Curtain, had also undergone an evolution. In reality, he had earned a reward incomparable to that of your average star relic. I know. But what do you want me to do with this damn feeling of unfairness? This was in the territory of emotional rather than rational. You could say it was the feeling of when a child received a three-part combination robot out of a Christmas box from their parents compared to receiving a stack of cash instead. Even though you would have enough cash to buy the robot and have money left over, you would still feel an unknown disappointment. God damn it. With a hollow expression, Ojin touched the black drinking glass that had become trash. Step, step. Huh? The sound of footsteps echoed in the cavern. Ojin turned his head towards the location the sound was coming from. Oh, wait. It looks like someone arrived before us. A group of people wearing black robes that encompassed their entire body walked out of the densely packed stalagmites. Who are those fuckers? There were five of them. A sticky and unpleasant aura was flowing out of the hooded beings. Just like the aura he had felt from the black drinking glass. HM, we couldn't possibly imagine that there would be someone who entered the gate faster than us. A voice that made one's mind feel comfort. Amongst the five people, the one in the middle stepped forward and folded his hood. A light brown-haired youth with half-shut eyes looked at the black drinking glass grasped within Ojin's hand and let out a deep breath. Are you perhaps looking for this? Ojin asked as he raised the black drinking glass in his hands. Ha ha. Yes. But it seems that we were too late. The brown-haired youth scratched his head with an innocent expression. That's an object we really need, what to do? Smile. With a bright smile, the youth slightly opened his half-shut eyes. The retina scene between the narrow eyes shined eerily. Ah, is that so? Ojin twirled around the glass in his hands. Approaching them step by step, he held out the black drinking glass. Then, do you want to buy this off me? Smile. He asked with a bright smile that mirrored the youths. Chapter 18, Black Star Organization, 1. Huh? As if hearing the unimaginable, the youth tilted his head. You'll sell it? Cases of selling a star relic that hadn't even gone through an appraisal were uncommon. Yes. I don't think it has the performance I'm looking for, it doesn't seem to react to my touch either. And, Ojin glanced at the five people in black robes with a friendly smile. They were a suspicious group that gave off a strange pseudo-religious aura. A bloody aura like that of a professional killer leaked out. Well, this is predictable. Ojin lightly shrugged. Isn't my life worth more than this star relic after all? What? The youth tilted his head in confusion. And soon. Ha, ha ha, ha 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 ha. I think there's a misunderstanding. Holding onto his belly, he exploded in laughter. A misunderstanding? Ha ha, yes. That's right. The youth that had tears in his eyes touched the hem of his robe and nodded. Well, the fact that our guild uniform is dreary is true, it's our guild leader's mysterious sense of style. He took off the robe that encompassed his entire body. Under the robe was light leather armor similar to that most awakeners enjoyed wearing. Certainly awakeners turning into robbers inside dungeons is a common occurrence, but, we're not like them, so there's no need to be so cautious. Ah, I shouldn't have misunderstood. Acting embarrassed, Ojin bowed down. Misunderstanding? Smirking on the inside, he laughed. Bullshit. The clear murderous intent he felt when they saw the star relic in his hands. A suspicious getup that covered their entire body. And, above all, they emanated the same aura as the star relic. An unpleasant, malicious aura with sticky viscosity. Since he had absorbed the black star's power through the black heaven moments ago, he could be certain. These bastards have the same black star's power as the star relic. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry for being discourteous, the world these days is so chaotic. Don't worry. We have also heard to be more cautious of awakeners than monsters inside dungeons. Um. Now that's that. Ojin once again held out the black drinking glass and smirked. This. Didn't you say that you need this? Yes. The fact that we need it is the truth. If you name the right price, I'll sell it right now. Hmm. Do you have a separate reason for doing so? As I said before, it seems to have a useless ability. If I got an appraisal and it turned out to be a 1-2 star relic, won't I have to sell it at a cheaper price? He expressed that he wanted to sell it at the minimal price of a 3 star relic in a roundabout way. Ha ha, I guess your words are true when you think about it that way. Very well. We will buy it. Smiling brightly, the youth rummaged through the pocket of the robe he took off. How about trading it with this? What he took out was a star stone slightly larger than the size of a fist. It was so pure that, rather than glowing, it radiated blue light. Wow, holy shit. A starstone with that size and purity would easily reach the hundred thousands. At, worst 200-300k. He could even receive 400k if he went on a day when the market prices were high. That's the price of a premium foreign car. 
With that much, he would be one step, no, several steps closer to reaching his goal. H.M. Well, this seems like enough. Doing his best to contain his shaking excitement, he nodded calmly. The youth smiled brightly. Then the deal is established. He exchanged the black drinking glass with the starstone the youth lent out. Foo, foo, foo. Finally. With the black drinking glass in his grasp, the youth cackled while excitedly shaking his shoulders. Naturally, the black drinking glass he had handed over was nothing but the shell that remained after the black heaven had absorbed all its energy, but luckily it seemed that he hadn't noticed. Well then, I'll take my leave. Yes. Thank you for the deal. After exchanging light nods with the youth, Ojin moved towards the densely packed stalagmites around the cavern entrance. KMF, pfft, he desperately tried to suppress his exploding laughter. Wow, great timing. I didn't think I'd be able to reel in such a pushover. Just when he had been so inwardly disappointed by the fact that the star relic he had earned after going through such hardship became an empty shell, a pushover appeared to buy that empty shell with hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was a windfall that was hard to come by. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Ptufufu. Laughing crudely in his mind, he hopped towards the entrance. Of course. He didn't have any thoughts on idiotically leaving just like that. Black curtain. Erasing his presence with the black curtain, he hid his body in between the stalagmites. Lying flat on the ground, he crawled back to the cavern where he had found the star relic. Those bastards. They look way too suspicious, no matter how I think of it. He needed information on what objective they were looking for the star relic for and just what the black star's power was. By the way, another question popped up in his mind. Why was it not in six days, but now? Furrowing his brows, he recalled the memories that flowed from Li Shinhiak. If it was according to the memories of Li Shinhiak from the first round, the star relic from this dungeon should be discovered in six days, on the 21st. However, those black-robed beings had entered the gate as soon as it had opened, like they had already known that a star relic lay dormant. No, since they said they came here aiming for it, they must have known. There wasn't a method of finding out how they found the gate as soon as it opened. As there was no way they possessed memories of a regressor like him, there was a high chance that an ability or item that located the Black Star's power existed. In any case, if I didn't come, these bastards would have taken the Star Relic. The story didn't add up. According to Li Shinhiek's memories, the Star Relic inside this dungeon should be discovered after six days. There were two possibilities he could come up with. Due to some kind of reason, the future has changed, or the Star Relic found on the 21st was not the black drinking glass but a different one. I'll know soon enough. Hidden within the densely packed stalagmites, he activated the stigma of the hunting dogs. As the senses across his entire body amplified, he could hear the conversation the suspicious black-robed beings were having. Why didn't we kill him, Sir Eugen? Eugen. It seemed to be the name of the youth who he had traded with moments ago. Fufu. Isn't this place a dungeon that has just opened? Yes. Other awakeners will flood in soon, it'll be a hassle if we leave unnecessary evidence. But we can perfectly dispose of dead bodies. There isn't anything bad about staying safe, right? Eugen slightly opened his half-shut eyes. Why yes, it's just as Sir Eugen has said. Ha ha, thank you for understanding. Smiling brightly, he gazed at the black drinking glass with mellow eyes. There isn't much time left until the era of stars will end and when the black stars will rule the skies. He spread out his arms and turned his body around in a full circle as if he were in a play. All of those arrogant celestials will pay for their sins. The Black Star's Grace To the Black Star Organization's glory, the four black-robed beings prostrated themselves on the ground. Eugen laughed in satisfaction and picked up the robe he had dropped. The Black Stars are probably smiling brightly from everyone's devotion. We will follow the Black Star's guidance. Fufu. Ah, right. Have you brought the replacement star relic? Of course. The prostrating black-robed being stood up and took out something from his pocket. A star relic in the shape of a drinking glass, glowing subtle blue light. He lightly leaped onto the statue's head and inserted the star relic into the empty spot on its forehead. Then let's return. Yes, sir. As Eugen turned away, the other robed beings followed his back. Ah, right. Clap. As if he had remembered something, he clapped his hands. He turned to one of the robed beings. You remember the face of the person I traded with, right? He asked. Yes. The black-robed being receiving his attention bowed deeply. Eugen smiled brightly and continued. Follow his trace and kill him. He ordered it like it was nothing. I will follow your orders. Ah, you know that you have to kill him outside the dungeon, right? Of course. The black-robed being who had received the order quickly headed towards the cave's entrance. Ha ha. Then we should go and report to the executor. Eugen and the three hooded beings all headed towards the cave's entrance. Five minutes after the black-robed beings had disappeared. 
Ojin, who had been curled up in between the stalagmites, slowly stood. Black Star Organization, huh? It was his first time hearing about it. I'm certain they're damn suspicious bastards. Are they some kind of illegal guild acting in the dark? Looking at their actions, they also seem to be in some kind of pseudo-religion. There's a need to investigate deeper into this. The Black Stars will rule the skies? The Celestials will pay for their sins? They certainly don't seem to be regular maniacs. Anyways. So this is what happened. Ojin smirked while looking at the star relic stuck onto the stone statue's forehead. One of his questions was answered. The future hasn't changed. What Li Wuhiak and his guild members had found in six days was the star relic the Black Star Organization had replaced. Is that why they said that something was strange? Just before Li Shinhiak's memories were cut off, he recalled the final words he heard. The woman with glasses reporting to Li Wuhiak definitely said some strange, before the vision was cut off. Of course it's strange. Ojin reached out towards the star relic stuck on the statue. Even if they had replaced it with a star relic of similar size, as expected, there was a foreign feeling unlike the original relic. I should take this as well. He took out the blue star relic from the statue and put it in his sling backpack. The black heaven isn't reacting this time. It seemed like it had reacted not to the star relic, but the black star's power dwelling within. Kaya, how sweet. He sold the empty shell of a star relic for an expensive star stone and also got his hands on another star relic that was used as a replacement. Well, a star relic used as a replacement will be at best one two star, but still. Even a one star relic would amount to around $10,000. Well then. After lightly stretching his body, he held the spear he had hidden between the stalagmites. Should I go catch the underling diligently running around in circles? The robed being that had gone out to chase him. It was time to receive unanswered questions from the suspicious fellow. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Huh. The man covered with a black robe narrowed his eyes. Why are there no tracks? Following the orders, he had searched for the tracks of the person he met in the cavern, but he couldn't find any trace of him outside the gate. He entered the gate once again and searched through the complicated maze-like cave. However, what's going on here? Even though there were tracks of him heading inside, there were none heading outside. Damn it. He bit his lips with a nervous expression. The appearance of Eugen and his bright smile popped up in his mind. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, if he reported that he lost his track, there was no way Eugen would leave him alone. God damn it. Just where did he go? Bang. Failing to overcome his rage, he stomped his feet. Flap. The hem of his black robe spread out. And then. Where? I'm right here. Through the hem of the flapping robe, a spear's blade flashed in like lightning. Thrust. Kook. Kook. The eyes of the black-robed man widened. Gazing at Ojin, who had come from inside the cave, his body shook in disbelief. Surprise, motherfucker. Kiki. Ojin twisted the spear that had pierced the man's stomach and smiled brightly. Chapter 19, Black Star Organization, 2. Kook, Kook. H. How? The man's eyes widened and he grasped the spear that pierced his abdominal region. Blood gushed everywhere. Intense pain spread throughout his body. However, more than the pain from his pierced abdomen, he received a greater shock from the fact that Ojin had come from inside the cave. I think you have a little misunderstanding. Splat. Ojin roughly twisted the spear pierced into the man's abdomen. Kook. Kahak. I'm the one asking the questions here. With a fishy smile, the man lowered his head. Nonsense. Wung. The man wildly swung his fists. From the swinging fists, a creepy black aura bloomed. However, before the fiercely swung fists even made contact. Crack. Crackle. A rugagagagak. Blue lightning sparked from the spear's blade that pierced the figure's abdomen. Flop flop. His body flopped like a freshly caught fish, and he soon laid flat on the ground. Well, it's okay if I talk nonsense now, right? Ojin asked, pressing down on the man's chest with his knee. Tell me everything you know about the Black Star Organization. Ha! Huh? The man chuckled like he had heard something ridiculous. He looked at Ojin with arrogance in his eyes. I have no reason to ants, kya a walk. Crunch. Ojin grabbed the man's left index finger and twisted it off. Really? Well, I guess I can't do anything about that. He hadn't expected the man to obediently open his mouth anyways. You don't want to talk? Huff. Huff. Then, from now on. In times like this, the quickest and most efficient method. Don't speak a word. Was primitive violence. Crunch. Crunch. One by one. He twisted them off. Kiawayak. One. Two. Three. The pulled apart fingers rolled around on the floor. And just like that, after every finger on his left hand had been removed. Erg. Uh. With white foam dripping down, he opened his mouth. I, I'll, talk. Huh? I, said I'll t-talk. Dude. Gripping the fingers on the other side, Ojin shook his head. What are you talking about? What? Didn't I tell you not to speak a word? Crunch. Breaking a finger on the other side, he smiled brightly. Ugi I attack. D. 
Didn't you say that you didn't want to talk? Then don't say a word. And no. That's. Crunch. One by one. Just like the other side, Ojin started to twist off the fingers. Ah. I I said I'll talk. Hey, there's no need to. Be Black Star Organization. I'll tell you everything about them. Didn't I say that there's no need? P please. I'll answer to everything, so. I said there's no need to talk, you fyoawak. Bang. Holding onto the man's head, he violently slammed him down onto the floor. Why? Bang. Do you? Bang. Keep trying to talk when I said there's no need. Exploding out a fanatical scream, Ojin continuously slammed the man's head down. Although it was more than enough impact to instantly kill a normal person, the opponent wasn't a normal person but an awakener. Although his rank was unknown, as awakeners received superhuman bodies together with their awakening, he wouldn't die from this amount of impact. Crew crock. Guck. I'll tea talk. P please, I want, tea to talk. The shivering man pathetically opened his mouth. The man who had stared at him with an arrogant attitude cried pathetically like a three-year-old baby that had accidentally stepped on a Lego in the living room. Should I end things here? Ojin looked down on the pathetically shivering man and smirked. Indeed, this has the most direct effect. Unreasonable and irrational violence. People met with fanatic violence outside the scope of common sense and reason were bound to be swept by fear close to that of trauma. There isn't anything scarier than a psycho who refuses to communicate. The effects looked certain, judging by the fact that the man's pants were wet. You want to talk now? Yes, yes. I I want to talk. All right then, give it a shot. What is the Black Star Organization, and what the fuck are the Black Stars? The man slowly nodded his head. T the Black Star Organization is, an organization created by Black Star Celestials. Black Star Celestial? Yes, yes. The hell is a Black Star Celestial? I in the past when all the stars were swallowed by darkness, T the Celestials born in that time are the Black Star Celestial. Fuck, how will I understand if you put it in that way? Hi yik. I I have simply only heard it that way from the Templar. The man curled up like a mole exposed to cold air. Anyways. All right. So you're telling me that you're all awakeners that follow the Black Star Celestial or whatever? Yes, that's correct. All right, then, tell me the scale and where you guys are hiding. MMT by Kunsun. MT by Kunsun, located in Chorwin Gun, is where our branch is located. Is the entire mountain yours, you dumbass? You need to tell me the precise location, you dumb fuck. Ah, I apologize. Screaming from the threatening voice, the man pulled out his hair while shivering. There is a rundown observatory at the peak of MT by Kunsun. I it's in the basement of that place. The scale? A around 50. Shit. That's quite a lot. That's the branch, right? Then where's the headquarters? I I don't know. You don't fucking know? Let's go for the toes this time. I I I really don't know. Only the Templar knows of the headquarters location. I'm telling you, an underling like me won't even be told the locations of the other branches. Hmm. It didn't seem like he was lying. Well, there's no way they would reveal all that information to this small fry. Bastards that babbled about making Celestials pay for their sins would definitely operate with thorough security. Is that Eugen Bastard a Templar? T that's correct. The man quickly nodded his head like a broken metronome. But I seriously don't understand. Which part? Why are you following those suspicious bastards in the first place? He couldn't come up with a reason why they would plead loyalty to an organization that looked no different from a pseudo-religion. The man shut his mouth tight for a while and soon said out in a low voice. He gave it to us. What? Sir Eugen has, granted us stigmas. Ah. A short exclamation flowed out of Ojin's mouth. He recalled the image of people gathering and desperately praying to the celestials in front of the sanctum. So they were using stigmas as bait. Although he didn't know what methods they used to grant stigmas, he could definitely understand why people were following such a suspicious group. The world is probably packed with people that will willingly kill either their parents or children in order to become awakeners. It was that kind of world. Well, I don't think there's any more information left to gain. It was time to finish things up. Shove. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Yanking out the spear in the man's abdomen, Ojin aimed at his head. W wait. Wait a minute. The man urgently screamed out. I I have a single daughter with me. Please, please spare my life. Drip drip. The man dropped his head while pouring out tears. You have a daughter? Yes, that's right. The truth is, the reason I joined the Black Star organization was all for that child. Biting his lips, he tightly closed his eyes. If, if I disappear all of a sudden, that child. There was no way a parentless child would be able to live well in this hell-like world. That was something Ojin himself knew better than anyone else. Bang. The man roughly ground his forehead into the hard stone floor. I beg of you. At least for the child, please spare my life. H.M. Or in the least, let me have time to say my last farewells to my daughter. Please. I'm begging you earnestly, he cried out with a wretched expression. 
Ojin narrowed his eyes and looked down at the prostrating man. Name? Yes? What's your daughter's name? Yaren. It's Choi Yaren. Age? S she's nine. It's still too young of an age to live alone in this world. When's her birthday? Yes? He urged the man that had an expression that seemed to ask why he was asking such questions. Quick. Answer the questions I ask. When's her birthday? It's on December. 14th inch. Favorite food? Why are you asking that? You won't answer? Pizza, and no it's chicken. Height and weight? Ah, uh, 131 centimeters and 2 to 28. She's 28 kilograms. Is that right? Ojin nodded his head as if he had understood. Choi Yaren, age 9, birthday on December 14th, favorite food is chicken, 131 centimeters, 27 kilograms. Well, then, smirk. He grasped his spear as the edge of his lips tilted up. Answer the questions I have asked so far in reverse. A silence settled down like time had frozen. What? The man's mouth and two eyes opened wide. His legs shook like leaves in the wind. Weight and height, favorite food, birthday, age, name. Answer it. T that's, ah, uh, 28 kg, and. W wait, wait a minute. Why? Don't remember? Well, it was understandable that he couldn't remember, because. Lying backwards is hard by nature. Although I can. Thrust. Blood poured down the spear's blade that had slightly penetrated the man's flesh. Ayak. P please spare me. I don't want to die. -y. The man fell into panic as soon as he felt the touch of the spear's blade on his skull. One last question. Where was your branch located again? See Chorwen. The peak of MT by Kunsen. All right. So that wasn't a lie. PSSHK. Cook. Cook. The blade precisely pierced through the middle of the man's forehead and crushed his brain. Fuh. Snap. Once the moment of tension was undone, a drowsy sensation enveloped Ojin. Black Star Organization. Sweeping back his hair, he furrowed his brows. What a pain in the ass. He ended up standing out to the suspicious group. No, it wouldn't matter that much if it finished on the note of simply standing out, but. I thought they'd be great pushovers to take advantage of, but I ended up provoking a beehive. He ended up scamming a group filled with dangerous beings. Ugh. Feeling lightheaded, Ojin placed his hand on his forehead. There's no way they'll let this be, right? Revenge, blackmail. Whatever the reason, they would appear before him once again. But it's not like I can face them alone either. Fifty was too many. I'll need to prepare countermeasures. There wasn't anything he could do right now. Well, you could also call this a good opportunity. Ojin removed the dead man's robe. On his left chest was a stigma with a shape he had never seen before. So this is a black star stigma. Spreading out his hands, he placed it on top of the stigma. Rumble. The black cloud that flowed from his palm enveloped the stigma. Mana flowed into his body with an unpleasant feeling, similar to that of the star relic he had absorbed. Ring. The black heaven is absorbing the stigma of the Al Nebula. The amount of the stigma of the Al Nebula is too insignificant to activate. What kind of abilities will a black star stigma have? Stigma of the Al Nebula. Smirk. Ojin stuck out his tongue and greedily licked his lips. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The radiant Milky Way that split up the night sky. Looking up at the uncountable amount of stars shining in the night sky, a white-haired elder narrowed his eyes. Flutter. Then, a black owl landed on the elder's shoulder. HMHM. So he has arrived? The elder nodded as if sharing a conversation with the owl, then slowly turned his body to face a black-robed youth respectfully kneeling with one knee on the ground. Hal hal hal, the man's peculiar owl-like laughter emerged. Have you come, Eugen? Yes, executor. Gulp. Kneeling in front of the white-haired elder, Eugen swallowed nervously. Even though he had worked under the elder for a couple of years, he felt a pressure that stiffened his body every time they met. It's only natural. The elder standing in front of his eyes was the Black Star Organization's sixth-ranked executor, King of Owls, Chion Doyen. However, today, he possessed a card that would relieve him from some of the intense pressure. All right, so did you bring the object? Of course. Yujin took out the star relic from his robe and carefully placed it down. A black drinking glass slightly larger than the size of a fist. Inside of it dwelled the black star's power. Hal hal hal. Letting out a peculiar laugh, the elder smiled brightly. Well done, Eugen. Fu fu. It wasn't anything too difficult. Shrugging proudly, Eugen shook his head. Owls. The elder slightly raised his hand up. Flutter. Together with the sound of flapping wings, dozens of beings wearing black robes appeared from the dark. The elder sent a hand signal towards Eugen. Nodding his head, Eugen carried the black drinking glass towards the complicated and bizarre magic circle engraved on the ground. At last, after the long wait, this day has come. Eugen placed the black drinking glass in the middle of the magic circle and spread his two arms with a proud expression. Do you see this? That detestable sky. Flap. 
The robe Eugen was wearing fluttered from the strong wind. That radiant night sky will be covered with black stars. Powerful gazes shone under the deeply worn hood. Although there were no words, dozens of black star organization members observed the ritual with their breaths gradually growing more rapid. Now, Eugen shouted, pouring mana into the engraved magic circle. Look here, the appearance of the black stars blessing our path. Awung, as the magic circle engraved onto the ground shone with black light. This is nothing but the beginning, nothing happened. Soon, more objects ingrained with the blessing with Ap, huh? Yujin looked down at the magic circle which had stopped giving off a black light with a confused expression. What? Knock knock. No matter how much he looked around and touched it, it showed no reaction. Why is it like this? The gaze of dozens pierced him. He could see the expression of the elder distorting. Ah, uh, ah, uh, w wait. He was fucked. T this can't be. There's no way. Yujin's half-shut eyes opened to their limit. Underscore 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 underscore. T slash N, C can why you stop s stuttering? Templar and Executor are like the Protoss roles in StarCraft. Executors being a higher rank than Templars. Some nebulae are made from dead stars. Chapter 20, Unleash the Hounds, 1. A Deathly Silence. The Elder looked at Eugen with a very distorted expression. Hal hal hal. Eugen, just what are you doing? A horrifying killing intent bloomed from the frighteningly shining eyes of the Elder. Tida, the thing is. His body shook as he desperately poured mana into the black drinking glass placed in the middle of the circle. However, no matter how much he poured, why, why is there no reaction? Ha! Huh? The white-haired elder, Chion Doyun, sighed deeply while stroking his beard. How much would the other executors have mocked the owls if they saw this scene? And no, T this is, Eugen, flick. He lightly flicked his finger. PSK, ugh, a black feather shot out in the blink of an eye and grazed past his nape. Blood flowed down his collarbone. Eugen pressed down on his blood-dripping nape and looked towards Chion Doyun with eyes full of fear. E executor. Don't let me down any further. Kook. Yes, sir. Chewing on his lips, he dropped his head. Eh, the mood has been ruined. Eugen, you may take your leave. TSK. Chion Doyun clicked his tongue while turning his body away. The other Templars may also return to their post. Kek, ki kek. Ho ho ho. The black-robed beings laughed mockingly while looking at Eugen. Flutter. Soon, all of them disappeared. Ah, ugh. Eugen, who was left alone, clenched his fists. Uaah. His outcry filled with anger rang throughout the dark mountain. Fuck. Fuck. Phew you ach. Tututu. Tututu tututu. Every time he convulsed, black feathers that appeared out of thin air swept the surroundings like a machine gun. Hew. Hew. Eugen faced the other direction with bloodshot eyes. Step. Step. He headed towards the insides of the observatory. S. Sir Eugen. Underground, his fifty subordinates were shaking with fear behind their eyes. That bastard. An image naturally formed inside Eugen's head. The youth with slightly droopy eyes who gave off a gentle impression. Where's the guy that went to kill that bastard? T that's. We, have lost contact. Losing contact meant the failure of a mission. Find him. Yes? I said find that son of a bitch, you useless pieces of shit. Eugen's harsh criticism echoed throughout the basement. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. One week after he returned from the dungeon in Mokdong, Ojin hadn't entered any other dungeons and meekly stayed inside his home during this time. There were two reasons. One was obviously because he needed to hide himself from the Black Star organization searching madly for him. And the other was, Fu, to become used to his body in mana that had grown explosively after reaching the three-star rank. Ch hat. On the rooftop of the rented house. Hot sweat splattered over the shabby space filled with dark grime and mold. Whoosh. Whoosh. Spearmanship flowed at a dazzling speed. Movements in a series of stabs, cuts, and strikes naturally coursed through the air like flowing water. HMPF. After lightly stamping his feet, he jumped nearly 15 meters into the air and grabbed his ankles with both hands to conduct a back somersault. It was an acrobatic movement a normal person wouldn't dare to attempt. No, jumping in place close to 15 meters into the air was something difficult even for most awakeners. Naturally. It was nothing but a simple warm-up for Ojin, whose body had advanced another step higher after reaching three-star. Fu. Thud. Ojin landed onto the ground with an elegant posture and looked down at his body drenched in sweat. Without a doubt, the stigma of Lyra is overpowered. He had been overworking his body for three hours without rest from early morning until then, but although he was sweating, he didn't feel all that tired. Even from Awakener standards, unless it was a stigma specialized in the body like Taurus, a three-star Awakener that could compare to him in simple physical ability most likely didn't exist. I can't be sure about the higher ranks, though. 
Regardless of the stigma's type, an awakener's physical ability would improve as the star rank increased. In cases where one possessed a physical type stigma, their physical ability would increase much more compared to other stigmas. On the contrary, recovery type stigmas like Aquarius would have small improvements on physical ability. To be more specific, even amongst physical type stigmas, strength for a power type like Taurus strength, dexterity for a speed type like Scorpio, physical abilities would increase centered around their specialty. The reason why Lyra is overpowered is because even though it isn't a physical type, it's still equipped with physical abilities around that level. The ability of the stigma of Lyra was lightning. If you had to classify, it would not be a physical type but a supernatural type. Yet despite that fact, the physical abilities it held were powerful enough to slap Taurus's cheeks left and right. Using a game as an analogy, you could say it was similar to a magician possessing a body powerful enough to smash the shit out of a warrior with their staff. If there was a game balance team, people would riot. Ojin giggled as he placed his spear against the wall. Now that he had thoroughly trained his body, it was time to train the skills that came with his stigma. Skill board. Boop. Reacting to the low-pitched voice, a blue window appeared in front of his eyes. Stigma of Lyra. Possessed skills. Thunder and Lightning LV3. Blue Lightning LV2. Thunderfall LV1. He currently possessed three skills. I need to prioritize training Thunder and Lightning. It was the conclusion he came up with after training each skill over the past week. The skill that's the foundation of the stigma of Lyra is Thunder and Lightning. In the end, Blue Lightning and Thunder Fall were just skills derived from Thunder and Lightning. If I level Thunder and Lightning, the other skills will naturally rise with it. Gently closing his eyes, he focused mana into his left chest. Crack. Crackle. Blue Lightning blazed as a powerful spark erupted. The amount of lightning increased distinctly compared to when he was ranked 2 star. Controlling the lightning, he compressed it into the shape of a ball. The lightning shrank into the size of a basketball and flashed violently. Looking at it like this, there certainly is a big difference. There was the influence of his total amount of mana increasing once he was promoted to 3 star, but more than that, the large difference came from the fact that he could use more mana at once. Since my mana was overflowing when I was 2 star anyways. Simply taking only the total amount of mana into account, he wasn't inferior compared to 6 star, he had as much as 7 star awakeners at least. No, I might have more. There was a time when my mana wouldn't decrease even when I tried to burn through it. Did it only refuse to decrease? No, rather, it had increased. He recalled the memory of when his mana explosively increased when he had fired blue lightning tens, hundreds of times in succession during combat with the mucus giant. Though I'm not sure why that kind of phenomenon happened. A few days ago, when he had set a day aside to experiment if the same phenomenon would happen again, his mana decreased as per usual. Let's just keep that in mind for now. Even if he thought about it now, it wasn't like he could figure out the cause or create the same phenomenon from back then. I'll just have to work on what I can right now. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Focusing the lightning flowing over his body to his fists, he performed light martial arts. Whoosh. Whoosh. HMPF. Even if you called it martial arts, it was extremely clumsy, as he had never learned it professionally nor possessed a skill. Still, it's better than nothing. He was doing nothing but swinging his arms and legs in the air for now, but his skill would increase with time. Crack. Crackle. In any case, the point of the training was not for martial arts, but to get used to focusing lightning around his body. Compared to his clumsy martial arts, he could feel his proficiency in handling lightning increase day by day. Ch hat. For the finale, he retrieved the spear he had left by the wall and used lightning. With blue lightning forming at its edge, the spear's blade cut sharply through the air. H.M. After he had continued training for around 30 minutes. Tap. Ojin placed the spear on the ground and furrowed his brows as if he was unsatisfied. Something about it just doesn't feel right. T.S.K. He clicked his tongue while looking down at the spear. This is a good weapon, but... Although Li Shinhiek's weapon was light and sharp, it interfered every time he used lightning because the spear's shaft was made out of wood. And only using the spear is somewhat of a shame. He kept on having a feeling that only using a spear wasn't enough to utilize lightning to its fullest extent. In his last combat, he had also used nothing but his fists to fight the giant after sticking the spear into its back. It's not like I can become some kind of spear master from some Urim. The only reason he was proficient in spearmanship was because he had inherited Li Shinhiek's skill. I'll need to get new equipment soon. He didn't plan on getting it immediately as he was in more urgent need of raising his skills proficiency. Should I head back now? Holding his shirt drenched in sweat over his shoulders, he went down the stairs. Hmm? Going down the stairs, Haun could be seen. She was on her crutches, smoking out the open window. You're smoking again? Bruh, it's not like I smoke that much. I told you to smoke inside the house, don't come outside. 
but it smells. Then don't smoke. That's impossible. You deranged chain smoker. Shaking his head, he headed past her towards the stairs that lead down. As the house was only around twenty steps away, it was a distance where she could amply go back and forth. Where are you going? Home. Wait till I'm finished smoking, man. What kind of horrific words are you saying to a non-smoker? Smoke as well if you have any complaints. An awakener's body will recover from the toxins in cigarettes on its own anyways. Waste of money. Fuck, why do I even bother? Haun mumbled in a low pitch and dropped her head. Hurry up, he stopped by the stairs and waited for her to finish smoking. Sizzle. Haun fumbled around for the ashtray and rubbed the cigarette out. Are you finished training? Yup. Arg, you reek of sweat. Go and wash up, you rascal. Hey, you're the one who held me here. Ah, right. Hi hi. Sorry. This bitch. Huff. Haun, who had clumsily reached out her hands and hugged his arms, leaned her chin on his shoulder. Now, hurry up and support me. Didn't you say that I smell? MHM. It's so goddamn bad. My nose is going to rot. Then why are you holding on to me? Ha. Huh? He let out a short sigh and helped her into the house. After laying Haun down on the bed, he entered the cramped bathroom and filled a large plastic bowl with water. Splash. He cooled his heated body with ice-cold water. Ooh, nice. Letting out a moan like a middle-aged man that had finished a day's hard work, he scrubbed every nook and cranny with cheap soap. Click. Coming out after finishing the refreshing wash, he could see Haun perched by the bed. Have you finished washing up? Yup. Come here so I can confirm if you washed up well. Hey, I'm not a kid. Come here, you rascal, Haun said as she tapped next to her seat. He sat down next to her while smiling. Sniff, sniff. Haun, who had come up close, flared her nose and sniffed the smell. Soon, the edges of her mouth perked up as if she was satisfied. Hee hee. So you've cleaned up properly. You looked so much like a fucking pervert just now. So what? Poke poke. While using the tip of her finger to poke his side, she pouted her lips. Now, turn your back this way. Why? Just listen to me, man. Tilting his head, Ojin turned his body around. Need. Her soft touch made contact with his shoulders. Her hands filled with just the right amount of strength, gently stimulated his back muscles. Huh? You're giving me a massage? Ojin unconsciously burst out into laughter. What, you got a problem? Ha ha. No. It's because I like it. Shut up, you bastard. Different from her violent language, Haun's touch that was slowly circling and stimulating his back muscles was incredibly pleasant. I'm dying. MHM, it feels so good. Does it feel good? Grunch. Powerful pain, like his shoulders were stuck between some kind of press machine, shook him. I'm dying. I'm seriously dying. He he he. You baby, stop overreacting. Haun broke out into laughter. Hey, what do you mean overreacting? Although she was nothing but a half-awakener who couldn't use her stigma, as she was an awakener that reached seven star in the past, the power behind her hand grip wasn't something you could laugh at. Hu hu hu. All right, all right. I'll do it softly. Han giggled while massaging his back with just the right amount of strength as she had done at the start. It's finished. Thanks. Don't unnecessarily overdo yourself. How many hours have you been running around since dawn? I'm not overdoing it. As the stigma of Lyra was so overpowered, he didn't feel tired after continuous hours of training. You're talking back to me again. Haun lightly pinched his sides and carefully leaned her forehead onto his back. An awkward silence suddenly set down. Hey. Cautiously. A voice broke the awkward silence and rang out. Yeah? After you became an awakener, have you made a lot of money? I made tons. I was lucky. The fact that he was the one and only apostle of Vega, received Li Shinhiek's memories, and that the Black Star Organization pushovers had appeared just at the right time. He was making money at a speed incomparable to that of other awakeners. Really? Like chewing and swallowing grains of sand, she continued with a dry voice. Then I guess there aren't many days left of us being together. As if a power switch was turned off. A cold and stiff air spread throughout the cramped house. That's right. Ojin nodded quietly. There isn't much time left. At this pace, he would soon be able to reach his goal of ten million dollars. And, if that happens, everything would end. Along with this everyday life that seemed like it would last eternally. Hi hi. Did you suddenly become serious? Song Haun giggled while smacking his back. Smack. Smack. That fucking hurt. Bzzzzzzt. At that moment, the smartphone he had placed on top of the shelf vibrated. What is it? Did you get a call? Yeah. Give me a sec. Looking at the smartphone, the name team leader Han Junman was displayed on the screen. Click. He opened the front door and took the call outside. Ah, are you available for a call? Yes. I was actually going to contact you soon. Just when he had thought of contacting them in order to sell the star stones and star relics he had ripped off of the Black Star organization, 
they had contacted him instead. He could also gather more information about the organization from them. That's great. I contacted you because there's something I needed to tell you. What is it? An urgent request has come in. A request. The timing wasn't good, as he hadn't set any countermeasures for the Black Star organization yet. In the least, it was the right move to hide until Vega could materialize herself once again. Sorry. I'm not in a situation where I can receive a wreck. The remuneration is two million dollars. Woof. 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 Growling. Crah. Excuse me? I'll head to the association right away. Let's talk about the details later.